136 Talk 2, 152 Disciple, Sri Ramakrishna touched Vivekananda and the latter realized bliss. Is it possible? Answer, Sri Ramakrishna did not touch all for that purpose. He did not create Atma. He did not create realization. Vivekananda was ripe. He was anxious to realize. He must have completed the preliminary course in his past births. Such is possible for right persons only. Disciple, can the same miracle be worked for all? Answer, if they are fit. Fitness is the point. A strong man controls the weaker man. A strong mind controls the weaker mind. That was what happened in the case cited. The effect was only temporary. Why did Vivekananda not sit quiet? Why did he wander about after such a miracle? Because the effect was only temporary. Disciple, how is the mind to dive into the heart? Answer, the mind now sees itself diversified as the universe. If the diversity is not manifest it remains in its own essence that is the heart. Entering the heart means remaining without distractions. The heart is the only reality. The mind is only a transient phase. To remain as one's self is to enter the heart. Because a man identifies himself with the body he sees the world separate from him. This wrong identification arises because he has lost his moorings and has swerved from his original state. He is now advised to give up all these false ideas, to trace back his source and remain as the self. In that state, there are no differences. No questions will arise. All the sastras are meant only to make the man retrace his steps to the original source. He need not gain anything new. He must only give up his false ideas and useless accretions. Instead of doing it he tries to catch hold of something strange and mysterious because he believes that his happiness lies elsewhere. That is the mistake. If one remains as the self there is bliss. Probably he thinks that being quiet does not bring about the state of bliss. That is due to his ignorance. The only practice is to find out to whom these questions arise. Disciple, how to control lust, anger, etc. Answer, whose are these passions? Find out. If you remain as the self, there will be found to be nothing apart from the self. Then there will be no need to control, etc. Disciple, if a person whom we love dies, grief results. Shall we avoid such grief by either loving all alike or by not loving at all? Answer, if one dies, it results in grief for the other who lives. The way to get rid of grief is not to live. Kill the one who grieves. Who will remain then to suffer? The ego must die. That is the only way. The two alternatives amount to the same state. When all have become the one self, who is there to be loved or hated? Disciple, what is the sun marga? What is the moon marga? Which of them is easier? Answer, Ravi marga sun marga is jhana. Moon marga is yoga. They think that after purifying the 72,000 nadis in the body, sashamna is entered and the mind passes up to the sahasrara and there is nectar trickling. These are all mental concepts. The man is already overwhelmed by world concepts. Other concepts are now added in the shape of this yoga. The object of all these is to rid the man of concepts and to make him in here as the pure self, in other words, absolute consciousness, bereft of thoughts. Why not go straight to it? Why add new encumbrances to the already existing ones? 1st October, 19, 136 Talk 2, 153 Mr. Pierce Principal, Cynthia School Gwalior Agavan has stated in Sad Vidya Anubandam Supplement Sloka 36 
the illiterates are certainly better off than the literates whose egos are not destroyed by the quest of the self. This being so, could Bhagavan advise a schoolmaster who feels this to be true how to carry on education, in such a way that the desire for literacy and intellectual knowledge may not obscure the more important search for the self? Are the two incompatible? If they are not, then from what age, and by what means, can young people best be stimulated towards the search for the real truth within? Answer. Pride of learning and desire for appreciation are condemned and not learning itself. Learning leading to search for truth and humility is good. A request from the same seeker. The above questioner has spent two very precious days in physical proximity to Bhagavan Maharshi whom he has not seen since, seventeen years ago, he visited him for a few minutes on the hillside. His duties now compel him to take his body far away again to the north, and it may be years before he can return. He humbly requests Bhagavan to make a strong link with him, and to continue to help him with his grace, in the quest of the self. Maharshi had a gentle smile for this. Talk 2. 154. Mr. Duncan Greenlees quoted a few verses from Srimad Bhagavatam to the following effect. See the self in yourself like the pure ether in all beings in and out. Unashamed fall prostrate before even an outcast, a cow or an ass. Though long as I am not perceived in all, worship all with body and mind. With right knowledge see all is Brahma. This one's clear, all doubts are at an end and you will remain withdrawn in the self. He then raised the following questions. Disciple, is this a true path to the realization of the one's self? Is it not easier for some thus to practice seeing Bhagavan in whatever meets the mind, than to seek the supermental through the mental inquiry who am I? Answer, yes. When you see God in all, do you think of God or do you not? You should certainly keep God in your mind for seeing God all round you. Keeping God in your mind becomes Diana. Diana is the stage before realization. Realization is in the self only. Diana must precede it. Whether you make Diana of God or of self, it is immaterial. Goal is the same. But you cannot escape the self. You want to see God in all, but not in yourself. If all are God, are you not included in that all? Yourself being God, is it a wonder that all are God? There must be a seer and thinker for even the practice. Who is he? Disciple, through poetry, music, japa, bhajan, beautiful landscapes, reading the lives of spiritual heroes, etc., one sometimes experiences a true sense of all unity. Is that feeling of deep blissful quiet wherein the personal self has no place the entering into the heart whereof Bhagavan speaks? Will practice of that lead to a deeper samadhi, and so ultimately, to a full vision of the real? Answer, again, there is happiness at agreeable sights, etc. It is the happiness inherent in the self. That happiness is not alien and after. You are diving into the pure self on occasions which you consider pleasurable. That diving reveals the self-existent bliss. But the association of ideas is responsible for foisting this bliss onto other things or happenings. In fact, it is within you. On these occasions you are plunging into the self, though unconsciously. If you do so consciously, you call it realization. I want you to dive consciously into the self, in other words, into the heart. Talk 2, 155 Disciple if the self be always realized, we should only keep still. Is that so? Answer, if you can keep still without engaging in any other pursuits, it is very good. If that cannot be done, where is the use of being quiet so far as realization is concerned? So long as one is obliged to be active, let him not give up the attempt to realize the self. Talk 2, 156 
A question was asked regarding the position of one whose jhana is weak in the scheme of things. The doubt was if that man did jhani had stopped short of kavala nirvikalpa. Answer, kavala nirvikalpa happens even in the tanyamanasi stage of attenuated mind. Disciple, the middling and superior jhanis are said to be jivan maktas. Kavola nirvikalpa is in tanyamanasa. Where does one whose jhana is weak fit in? Answer, he comes in Safapati realization, whereas the middling and the superior ones come in a Samsakti and Pidarthabhavini respectively. This division as dull, middling, and superior is according to the momentum of Parabya. If it is strong he is weak, if it is middling he is middling too, if Prarabta is weak he is superior. If it is very weak he is in Tariyaga. There is no difference in the Samadhi state or the jhana of the jhanis. Pacification is only from the standpoint of the observer. Disciple, is Tanamanasi the same as Mumakshatva? Answer, no. The six qualities discrimination, dispassion and Mumakshatva, etc. precede Subhetsha. First stage follows Mimakshatva, then comes Vicharana search, then the tenuous mind. Direct perception is in Sattvapati realization. There is no need to discuss similar points. Divan Mukti and Vaid Mukti are differently described by different authorities. Vaid Mukti is sometimes said to occur even when the man is seen with a body. Fact is that Mukti is another name for Ahamai. The seven jhana bhimikas stages of knowledge are 1. Subhat should desire for enlightenment 2. Vicharana hearing and reflection 3. Tanyamanasi tenuous mind 4. Sattvapati self-realization 5. Asamsakti non-attachment 6. Pidarthabhavani absolute non-perception of objects 7. Turiyoga beyond words. Those who have attained the last four bhimikas are respectively called Brahmavit, Brahmavidvara, Brahmavidvarya, and Brahmavidvarishtha. Pak 2, 157. Disciple, a certain young man from Dindigul spoke to Sri Bhagavan, saying that he had learnt by his stay for a few days, that all that he need do was to inquire who am I, he wanted to know if any discipline was to be observed and started with the question. Where should I do the inquiry? Meaning if he should do it in Kiru Sanid, he the presence of the Master. Answer, the inquiry should be from where the eye is. Disciple, people labor for gaining the summum bonum of life. I think that they are not on the right track. Free Bhagavan has made considerable tapas and achieved the goal. Free Bhagavan is also desirous that all should reach the goal and willing to help them to that end. His vicarious tapas must enable others to reach the goal rather easily. They need not undergo all the hardships which Sri Bhagavan has already undergone. Their way has been made easy for them by Sri Bhagavan. Am I not right? Miharshi smiled and said, If that were so, everyone would easily reach the goal, but each one must work for himself. Talk 2, 158 Disciple, a young man from Mysore, gave a written slip to Sri Bhagavan and waited for an answer. He had asked Sri Bhagavan to say where other Mahatmas could be found whom he might approach for guidance. He confessed that he had left his home without informing his elders in order that he might seek God through Mahatmas. True, he knew nothing of God or of search for him. Therefore he desired to see Mahatmas. Sri Bhagavan simply returned the note saying, I must answer any and every question. Unless I do so I am not great. The boy tore away the slip and wrote another which said, You are kind to squirrels and hares. You fondle them when they struggle to run away from you. Yet you are indifferent to human beings. For instance, I have left my home and am waiting here for a fortnight. I have had no food some days. I am struggling. Still, you do not care for me. 
Answer, look here. I am not endowed with television. God has not bestowed that gift on me. What shall I do? How can I answer your questions? People call me Maharshi and treat me like this. But I do not see myself as a Maharshi. On the other hand everyone is a Maharshi to me. It is good that you in this early age are attempting to seek God. Concentrate on Him. Do you work without desiring the fruits thereof? That is all that you should do. Talk 2, 159. Nada bind you and kala correspond to prana, mind and intellect. Isvara is beyond nada sound. Nada, jayoti light, etc. are mentioned in yoga literature. But God is beyond these. The circulation of blood, respiration of air and other functions of the body are bound to produce sound. That sound is involuntary and continuous. That is not a talk to 160. An extract from a hermit in the Himalayas was found in the Sunday Times. It related to recapitulation of past incarnations. In it Paul Brunton has mentioned the Buddhist methods of gaining that faculty. Sri Bhagavan said, There is a class of people who want to know all about their future or their past. They ignore the present. The load from the past forms the present misery. The attempt to recall the past is mere waste of time. Talk 2, 161. There was a reference to reincarnation. Reincarnation of Shanti Devi tallies with the human standards of time. Whereas the latest case reported of a boy of seven is different. The boy is seven years now. He recalls his past births. Inquiries go to show that the previous body was given up ten months ago. The question arises how the matter stood for six years and two months previous to the death of the former body. Did Thessal occupy two bodies at the same time? Sri Bhagavan pointed out that the seven years is according to the boy, ten months is according to the observer. The difference is due to these two different upadhis. The boy's experience extending to seven years has been calculated by the observer to cover only ten months of his own time. Sri Bhagavan again referred to Lila's story in Yoga Vasishta. Talk 2, 162. Dr. Sid, a Muslim professor, is now here. A skeptic friend of his had confronted him with the question, What miracle does your Maharshi work? He had replied that the ordinary people being no better than animals are made men and that we being only his children are endowed with strength by Maharshi. He desired to know if he was right in replying to him. Refreshing peace within is the highest miracle. Maharshi possesses it. What is that to us? The other man asked. I replied the same peace is bestowed on all visitors to be shared by them. Mr. Paul Brunton has mentioned it in his book. Everyone feels it every day in Maharshi's presence. The whole conversation was mentioned to Sri Bhagavan with the following addition. Parasurama has said that he felt some refreshing peace within when he met Samvrita on the way. So he made him out to be a great saint. Is not such peace the sole criterion of a Mahatma's presence? Is there anything else? Sri Bhagavan said. A Madva Saint Tatva Roy R. had composed a Bharani on his master Swarupan and and it subjected to the composition, saying that it was reserved to such as have killed more than a thousand elephants in battle, whereas Swarupan, and was an idle man sitting somewhere unknown to people, and he did not deserve that pain jeric. Tatvaroy, R. asked them all to assemble before his master, so that they might see for themselves if he could slay one thousand elephants at a time. They did so. As soon as they appeared, they were struck dumb and remained in beatific peace for a few days without the least movement. When they regained their senses, they saluted both the master and the disciple, saying that they were more than satisfied. 
Thwarupan and excelled the warriors in that he could subdue the egos, which is a much more formidable task than slaying a thousand elephants. Maharshi said that the moral was clear. He says the sole criterion of a Mahatma's presence. 20th October 1936 Talk 2, 163 Dr. Sid Three Bhagavan says that the heart is the self. Theology has it that malice, envy, jealousy and all passions have their seat in the heart. How are these two statements to be reconciled? Answer, the whole cosmos is contained in one pinhole in the heart. These passions are part of the cosmos. They are avidya ignorance. Disciple, how did avidya arise? Answer, avidya is like maya, she who is not is maya illusion. Similarly that which is not is ignorance. Therefore the question does not arise. Nevertheless the question is asked. Then ask, whose is the avidya? Avidya is ignorance. It implies subject and object. Come the subject and there will be no object. Disciple, what is avidya? Answer, ignorance of self. Who is ignorant of the self? The self must be ignorant of self. Are there two selves? Puck 2, 164. Disciple, does Bhagavan see the world as part and parcel of himself? How does he see the world? Answer, the self alone is in nothing else. However, it is differentiated owing to ignorance. Differentiation is threefold. One, of the same kind. Two, of a different kind and three, as parts in itself. The world is not another self similar to the self. It is not different from the self, nor is it part of the self. Disciple, is not the world reflected on the self? Answer, for reflection there must be an object and an image. But the self does not admit of these differences. Disciple, does not then Bhagavan see the world? Answer, whom do you mean by Bhagavan? Disciple, a jiva advanced more than I. Answer, if you understand your jiva the other jiva is also understood. Disciple, I do not want to discuss. I want to learn. Please instruct me. Answer, because you desire to learn discussion is unavoidable. Leave all this aside. Consider your sleep. Are you then aware of bondage or do you seek means for release? Are you then aware of the body itself? The sense of bondage is associated with the body. Otherwise there is no bondage, no material to bind with and no one to be bound. These appear however in your wakeful state. Consider to whom they appear. Disciple, to the mind. Answer, watch the mind. You must stand aloof from it. You are not the mind. And the self will remain ever. Disciple, does Sri Bhagavan believe in evolution? Answer, evolution must be from one state to another. When no differences are admitted, how can evolution arise? Disciple, why does Sri Krishna say, after several rebirths the seeker gains knowledge and thus knows me? There must be evolution from stage to stage. Answer, how does Bhagavad Gita begin? Neither I was not nor you nor these chiefs etc. Neither it is born, nor does it die etc. So there is no birth, no death, no present as you look at it. Reality was, is, and will be. It is changeless. Later Arjuna asks Sri Krishna how he could have lived before Aditya. Then Krishna, seeing Arjuna was confounding him with the gross body, spoke to him accordingly. The instruction is for the one who sees diversity. In reality there is no bondage nor mukti for himself or for others from the Jani standpoint. Disciple, are all in liberation? Answer, where is all? There is no liberation either. And only if there was bondage. 
there was really no bondage and so it follows, there is no liberation. Disciple, but to evolve through births, there must be practice years of abhyasa. Answer. Abhyasa is only to prevent any disturbance to the inherent peace. There's no question of years. Prevent this thought at this moment. You are only in your natural state whether you make abhyasa or not. Another man asked. Why do not all realize the self in that case? Answer. It is the same question in another guise. Why do you raise this question? Inasmuch as you raise this question of abhyasa, it shows you require abhyasa. Make it. But to remain without questions or doubts is the natural state. God created man and man created God. They both are the originators of forms and names only. In fact, neither God nor man was created. 21st October 19, 136 Talk 2, 165 The aristocratic lady again came after a few days, went straight to Bhagavan, saluted him and said, I came last time with my husband and children. I was thinking of their food and time was pressing. Though I could not stay here as long as I would have wished, but I was later worried over the hurried nature of the visit. I have returned now to sit quiet and imbibe Sri Bhagavan's grace. May he give me strength of mind. The hall was already kept clear of people. He sat on a crude carpet in front of Sri Bhagavan. Sri Bhagavan said smiling. Yes. Silence is perpetual speaking. Ordinary speech hinders that heart-to-heart -heart talk. He agreed and sat quiet. Sri Bhagavan was sitting reclining on the sofa. His eyes were fixed in her direction with a gracious smile on his lips. Both remained silent and motionless for about an hour. Prasad was distributed. The lady said, Now I want to return. The river between Bangalore and this place is in floods. On my way here a bus was overturned in the floods. My car came later and I saw the sad accident. Still, I was not afraid to ford the river. My car came out safe. I would like to return in daytime. This time I shall not say is the last time I shall come as I said on former occasions. I do not know, but it may be so. Yet Maharshi should give me strength of mind. I long for bhakti. I want more of this longing. Even realization does not matter for me. Let me be strong in my longing. Answer, if the longing is there, realization will be forced on you even if you do not want it. Subhatch, she, is the doorway for realization. Disciple, let it be so. But I am content with longing. Even when I am away from this place, I must not relax in my devotion. May Sri Bhagavan give me the necessary strength. Such longing could only be through his grace. I am personally too weak. Again, when I was here on a previous occasion, I asked several questions. But I could not follow Sri Bhagavan's answers. I thought I would not ask any more questions, but only sit quiet in his presence imbibing grace which might be extended to me. Though I do not pursue Maharshi with more questions this time. Only let me have his grace. Answer, your repeated visits to this place indicate the extension of grace. She was surprised and said, I was going to ask Maharshi if he called me. For all of a sudden my husband told me this morning. There are two days free. If you want you may visit Maharshi and return. I was very agreeably surprised and pleased. I took it to be a call from Maharshi. He also expressed a desire to reside near Maharshi and asked for his blessings. Maharshi said, A higher power is leading you. Be led by the same. Disciple, but I am not aware of it. Please make me aware of it. Answer. The higher power knows what to do and how to do it. 
Trust it. Talk 266. The Muslim professor asked. It is said that one should give up desire. But there are the needs of the body which are irrepressible. What is to be done? Answer, an aspirant must be equipped with three requisites. 1. Iksha. 2. Bhakti and 3. Asrata. Iksha means satisfaction of bodily wants without attachment to the body such as hunger and thirst and evacuation. Unless it is done meditation cannot progress. Bhakti and Srata are already known. Disciple, there are two kinds of desires, the baser and the nobler. Is it our duty to transmute the baser one to the nobler? Answer, yes. Disciple, well by Gavan, you said there are three requisites of which Iksha is the satisfaction of natural wants without attachment to the body etc. I take food three or four times a day and attend to bodily wants so much so that I am oppressed by the body. Is there a state when I shall be disembodied so that I might be free from the scourge of bodily wants? Answer, it is the attachments raga, dwesha which are injurious. The action is not bad, in itself. There is no harm in eating three or four times. But only do not say, I want this kind of food, and not that kind and so on. Moreover, you take those meals in twelve hours of wakeful state whereas you are not eating in the hours of sleep. Does sleep lead you to mukti? It is wrong to suppose that simple inactivity leads one to mukti. Disciple, there are said to be Seda mukta liberated in body and Vida mukta liberated without body. Answer. There is no liberation in where muktas. Disciple, do not Hindu sastras speak of mukti? Answer, mukti is synonymous with the self. Given mukti liberation while alive and vita mukti liberation after the body falls are all for the ignorant. The jhani is not conscious of mukti or banda bondage. Bondage, liberation and orders of mukti are all said for an ajani in order that ignorance might be shaken off. There is only mukti and nothing else. Disciple, it is all right from the standpoint of Bhagavan. But what about us? Answer, the difference he and I are the obstacles to jhana. Disciple, but it cannot be denied that Bhagavan is of a high order whereas we are limited. Will Bhagavan make me one with him? Answer, were you aware of limitations in your sleep? Disciple, I cannot bring down the state of my sleep in the present state and speak of it. Answer, you need not. These three states alternate before the unchanging self. You can remember your state of sleep. That is your real state. There were no limitations then. After the rise of the I thought the limitations arose. Disciple, how to attain the self? Answer, self is not to be attained because you are the self. Disciple, yes. There is an unchanging self and a changing one in me. There are two selves. Answer, the changefulness is mere thought. All thoughts arise after the arising of the I thought. See to whom the thoughts arise. Then you transcend them and they subside. This is to say tracing the source of the I thought you realize the perfect I I. I is the name of the self. Disciple, shall I meditate on I am Brahman Aham Brahmasmi? Answer, the text is not meant for thinking I am Brahman. Aham I is known to everyone. Brahman abides as Aham in everyone. Find out the I. The I is already Brahman. You need not think so. Simply find out the I. Disciple is not discarding of the sheaths mentioned in the Sastras. Answer. After the rise of the I thought there is the false identification of the I with the body, the senses, the mind, etc. I is wrongly associated with them and the true I is lost sight of. In order to shift the pure I from the contaminated I this discarding is mentioned. But it does not mean exactly discarding of the non-self, 
but it means the finding of the real self. The real self is the infinite I I, in other words I is perfection. It is eternal. It has no origin and no end. The other I is born and also dies. It is impermanent. The to whom are the changing thoughts. They will be found to arise after the I thought. Hold the I thought. They subside. Trace back the source of the I thought. The self alone will remain. Disciple, it is difficult to follow. I understand the theory. But what is the practice? Answer, the other methods are meant for those who cannot take to the investigation of the self. Even to repeat aham brahmas me or think of it, a doer is necessary. Who is it? It is I. Be that I. It is the direct method. The other methods also will ultimately lead everyone to this method of the investigation of the self. Disciple, I am aware of the I. Yet my troubles are not ended. Answer, this I thought is not pure. It is contaminated with the association of the body and senses. See to whom the trouble is. It is to the I thought. Hold it. Then the other thoughts vanish. Disciple, yes. How to do it? That is the whole trouble. Answer, think I, I, I and hold to that one thought to the exclusion of all others. 23rd, October, 1936, Talk 2, 167. While speaking of the animal companions in the hall, Sri Bhagavan quoted a Tamil stanza by Avi. When the old lady was going along she heard on one occasion someone praising Kambar. She replied with a stanza which means, Each is great in its own way. What is Kambar's greatness when compared with a bird which builds its nest so fine, the worms which give lack, the honey bee which builds the comb, the ants which build cities, and the spider its web? Bhagavan then began to describe their activities. While living on the hill he had seen a hut built of stones and mud and roofed with thatch. There was constant trouble with white ants. The roof was pulled down and the walls demolished to get rid of the mud which harbored the ants. Three Bhagavans saw that the hollows protected by stones were made into towns. These were skirted by walls plastered black, and there were roads to neighboring cities which were also similarly skirted with black plastered walls. The roads were indicated by these walls. The interior of the town contained holes in which ants used to live. The whole wall was thus tenanted by white ants which ravaged the roofing materials above. Three Bhagavan had also watched a spider making its web and described it. It is seen in one place, then in another place, again in a third place. Fibers fixed at all these points. A spider moves along it, descends, ascends and goes round and round and the web is finished. It is geometrical. The net is spread out in the morning and rolled up in the evening. Similarly the wasps build their nests of lac crude and so on. Though then each animal has got some remarkable instinct. Kambar's learning is not to be wondered at because it is God's will as it is in the other cases. Talk 2, 168 Dr. Sid What is salvation? What did Christ mean by it? Answer. Salvation for whom? And from what? Disciple. Salvation for the individual and from the sorrows and sufferings of the world. Answer. Whose are the sorrows etc.? Disciple. Of the mind. Answer. Are you the mind? Disciple, I shall now explain how this question arose. I was meditating. I began to reflect on the grace shown by Christ to some devotees who got salvation. I considered that Sri Bhagavan is similar. Is not salvation the result of similar grace? That is what I mean by my questions. Answer, yes. Right. Disciple, 
The booklet Who Am I speaks of Swarupa Drishti seeing the essence. Then there must be a seer in the scene. How can this be reconciled with the ultimate unity? Answer, why do you ask for salvation, release from sorrow, etc.? He who asks for them sees them also. The fact is this. Drishti sight is consciousness. It forms the subject and object. Can there be Drishti apart from the self? The self is all Drishti, etc. Disciple, how to discern the ego from the perfect I I answer, that which rises and falls is the transient I. That which has neither origin nor end is the permanent I I consciousness. Disciple, will continuous thought on the self make the mind more and more refined so that it will not think of anything but the highest? Answer, there is the peaceful mind which is the supreme. When the same becomes restless, it is afflicted by thoughts. Mind is only the dynamic power sakti of the self. Disciple, are the sheaths material and different from the self? Answer, there is no difference between matter and spirit. Modern science admits that all matter is energy. Energy is power or force sakti. Therefore all are resolved in siva and sakti in other words, the self and the mind. The kosas are mere appearances. There is no reality in them as such. Disciple, how many hours a day should one devote to meditation? Answer, your very nature is meditation. Disciple, it will be so when ripe but not now. Answer, you become conscious of it later. That does not mean that your nature is now different from meditation. Disciple, what about practice? Answer, meditation must always be practiced. Disciple, a Persian mystic says, There is nothing but God. The Quran says, God is immanent in all. Answer, there is no all apart from God for him to pervade. He alone is. Disciple, is it morally right for a man to renounce his household duties when he once realizes that his highest duty is at much intana continuous thought on the self? Answer. This desire to renounce things is the obstacle. The self is simple renunciation. The self has renounced all. Disciple. It is true from Bhagavan's standpoint. But for us my work demands the best part of my time and energy, often I am too tired to devote myself to Atma Chintana. Answer, the feeling I work is the hindrance. Inquire who works. Remember who am I, the work will not bind you. It will go on automatically. Make no effort either to work or to renounce work. Your effort is the bondage. What is bound to happen will happen. If you are destined to cease working, work cannot be at even if you hunt for it. If you are destined to work, you cannot leave it, you will be forced to engage in it. To leave it to the higher power. You cannot renounce or hold as you choose. Talk 2, 169 Disciple, how is all immanent God said to reside in Daharakasa ether of the heart? Answer, do we not reside in one place? Do you not say that you are in your body? Similarly, God is said to reside in Hritpindarika, the heart lotus. The heart lotus is not a place. Some name is mentioned as the place of God because we think we are in the body. This kind of instruction is meant for those who can appreciate only relative knowledge. Being immanent everywhere there is no particular place for God. Because we think we are in the body we also believe that we are born. However, we do not think of the body of God or of method of realization in our deep slumber. Yet in our waking state we hold on to the body and think we are in it. The supreme being is that from which the body is born, in which it lives and into which it resolves. We however think that we reside within the body. Hence such instruction is given. The instruction means. Look within. Talk to. 170. Mr. Subbaray, 
Maya, a lecturer in English in Nellor, asked. Raman is the one by whom all this is pervaded dina sarvamadam thitham. But then how does Sri Krishna specify the Vibhutis in Chapter X of Bhagavad Gita? Answer. The specifications are in reply to a definite question by Arjuna who required to know the Lord's Vibhutis for convenience of worship Upasana Sokariyam. The fact is that God is all. There is nothing apart from Him. Disciple, the individual is said to give up decayed bodies Jurnani Sararani and to take up new ones Navani. Would the statement apply to infant deaths also? Answer. You do not know, in the first place, what is Jirnani and what is Navani. Secondly, Jirna and Nava are relative terms. What is old to a king may be new to a beggar. The truth is that the individuality signifies the state of embodiment till the time of liberation. Talk 2. 171. Dr. Sid. How is grace to be obtained? Answer similar to obtaining the self. Disciple, practically, how is it to be for us? Answer, by self-surrender. Disciple, grace was said to be the self. Did I then surrender to my own self? Answer, yes. To the one from whom grace is sought. God, Kiru and self are only different forms of the same. Disciple, Please explain so that I may understand. Answer, so long as you think you are the individual you believe in God. On worshipping God, God appears to you as Kuru. On serving Kuru he manifests as the self. This is the rationale. Hawk 2, 172 Disciple there are widespread disasters spreading havoc in the world for example, famine and pestilence. What is the cause of this state of affairs? Answer, to whom does all this appear? Disciple, that one do. I see misery around. Answer, you were not aware of the world and its sufferings in your sleep, you are conscious of them in your wakeful state. Continue in that state in which you were not afflicted by these. That is to say, when you are not aware of the world, its sufferings do not affect you. When you remain as the self, as in sleep, the world and its sufferings will not affect you. Therefore look within. See the self. There will be an end of the world and its miseries. Disciple, but that is selfishness. Answer, the world is not external. Because you identify yourself wrongly with the body you see the world outside, and its pain becomes apparent to you but they are not real. Seek the reality and get rid of this unreal feeling. Disciple, there are great men, public workers, who cannot solve the problem of the misery of the world. Answer, they are ego-centered and therefore their inability. If they remained in the self, they would be different. Disciple, why do not Mahatmas help? Answer, how do you know that they do not help? Public speeches, Physical activity and material help are all outweighed by the silence of Mahatmas. They accomplish more than others. Disciple, what is to be done by us for ameliorating the condition of the world? Answer, if you remain free from pain, there will be no pain anywhere. The trouble now is due to your seeing the world externally and also thinking that there is pain there. But both the world and the pain are within you. If you look within there will be no pain. Disciple, God is perfect. Why did he create the world imperfect? The work shares the nature of the author. But here it is not so. Answer, who is it that raises the question? Disciple, I the individual. Answer, are you apart from God that you ask this question? So long as you consider yourself, the body you see the world as external. The imperfections appear to you. God is perfection. His work also is perfection. You see it as imperfection because of your wrong identification. Disciple, 
Why did the self manifest as this miserable world? Answer, in order that you might seek it. Your eyes cannot see themselves. Place a mirror before them and they see themselves. Similarly with the creation. Be yourself first, and then see the whole world as the self. Disciple, so it amounts to this, that I should always look within. Answer, yes. Disciple, should I not see the world at all? Answer, you are not instructed to shut your eyes from the world. You are only to see yourself first and then see the whole world as the self. If you consider yourself as the body the world appears to be external. If you are the self the world appears as Brahman. Talk 2, 173. Dr. Sid asked. I have been reading the five hymns. I find that the hymns are addressed to Aranachala by you. You are an Advaitin. How do you then address God as a separate being? Answer, the devotee God and the hymns are all the self. Disciple, but you are addressing God. You are specifying this Aranachala hill as God. Answer, you can identify the self with the body. Did not the devotee identify the self with Aranachala? Disciple, if Aranachala be the self, why should it be specially picked out among so many other hills? God is everywhere. Why do you specify him as Aranachala? Answer, what has attracted you from Allahabad to this place? What has attracted all these people around? Disciple, Sri Bhagavan. Answer, how was I attracted here? By Aranachala. The power cannot be denied. Again Aranachala is within and not without. The self is Aranachala. Disciple, several terms are used in the holy books, Atman Paramatman Para, etc. What is the gradation in them? Answer, they mean the same to the user of the words. But they are understood differently by persons according to their development. Disciple, but why do they use so many words to mean the same thing? Answer, it is according to circumstances. They all mean the self. Para means not relative or beyond the relative that is to say the absolute. Disciple, should I meditate on the right chest in order to meditate on the heart? Answer, the heart is not physical. Meditation should not be on the right or the left. Meditation should be on the self. Everyone knows I am, who is the I? It will be neither within nor without, neither on the right, nor on the left. I am that is all. The heart is the center from which everything springs. Because you see the world, the body and so on, it is said that there is a center for these which is called the heart. When you are in the heart, the heart is known to be neither the center nor the circumference. There is nothing else. Whose center could it be? Disciple, may I take it that the self and the non-self are like substance and its shadow? Answer, substance and shadow are for the one who sees only the shadow and mistakes it for the substance and sees its shadow also. But there is neither substance nor shadow for the one who is aware only of the reality. Disciple, Buddha, when asked if there is the ego, was silent. When asked if there is no ego, he was silent. Asked if there is God, he was silent. Asked if there is no God, he was silent. Silence was his answer for all these. Mahayanand Hinayana schools have both misinterpreted his silence because they say that he was an atheist. If he was an atheist, why should he have spoken of nirvana of births and deaths of karma, reincarnations and dharma? His interpreters are wrong. Is it not so? Answer, you are right. 27th, October, 1936, Talk 2, 174. The Muslim professor asked how Vaishnavism can be reconciled to Advaitism. Answer, the Vaishnavites call themselves Visishtadvatins. This is also Advaita.
Just as the individual body comprises the soul, the ego and the gross body, so also God comprises Paramatma, the world and the individuals. Disciple, does not bhakti imply duality? Answer, Swaswarupanisan and Ambakturitiyabhidhyat reflection on one's own self is called bhakti. Bhakti and self and queer, you're one and the same. The self of the Advaitins is the god of the Bhaktas. Disciple, is there a spiritual higher, archi of all the original propounders of religions watching the spiritual welfare of the humans? Answer, let them be or let them not be. It is only a surmise at the best. Atma is pratyaksha self-evident. Know it and be done with speculation. One may admit such a higher, archi, another may not. But no one can gainsay the Atma. Disciple, what does Sri Bhagavan think of Pravriti and Navriti Margas? Answer, yes. Both are mentioned. What of that? Disciple, which is the better of the two? Answer, if you see the self, pure and simple, it is nivriti, if you see the self with the world, it is pravriti. In other words, inward turned mind and tarmaki manas is nivriti, outward going mind bahirmaki manas is pravriti. Anyway there is nothing apart from the self. Both are the same. Similarly also with the spiritual hierarchy, they cannot exist apart from the self. They are only in the self and remain as the self. Realization of the self is the one goal of all. 5th November, 19, 136 Talk 2, 175 In the course of conversation, someone referred to the fact that when Mr. Brunton and the lady were walking home in the night, they saw a bright glow on half the hill moving slowly and gently from north to south. Tribhagavan said, This hill is said to be wisdom in visible shape. Disciple, how is it visible to the physical eye? Answer, Samandar had sung, the one who fascinated my heart or the captivator of my heart I sing of him in my mind. The heart is captivated, consequently the mind must have sunk into the heart, and yet there is the remembrance which enables the saint to sing of God later. Then the experience of a young disciple was mentioned. The young man, educated and in good circumstances, in good health and sober mind, was once facing Sri Bhagavan's picture in his home and meditating on the figure. The figure suddenly appeared animated with life, which threw the young man into a spasm of fear. He called out for his mother. His mother came and asked him what the matter was. He was surrounded by his relatives who were perplexed by his appearance. He was aware of their presence, but was still overpowered by a mysterious force which he tried to resist. He became unconscious for a short time. Fear seized him as he regained consciousness. People became anxious and tried to bring him round with medicines. When later he came to Turuvenamalai, he had some foreboding of similar experience. The proximity of Sri Bhagavan prevented any untoward happening. But whenever he wandered away from the hall, he found the force almost irresistible and himself in the grip of fear. Sri Bhagavan said, Is it so? No one told me this before. A devotee asked if it was not Saktipata descent of divine power. Answer, Yes it is. A madman clings to samskaras, whereas a jani does not. That is the only difference between the two. Jhana is madness of a kind. Disciple, but Saktipada is said to occur in Karma Samya, in other words, when merit and demerit are equal. Answer, yes. Malaparapaka, Karma Samya, and Saktipada mean the same. A man is running the course of his samskaras, when taught he is the self, the teaching affects his mind, and imagination runs riot. He feels helpless before the onrushing power. His experiences are only according to his imagination of the state I am the self, whatever he may conceive it to be. 
Taktapada alone confers the true and right experience. When the man is ripe for receiving the instruction and his mind is about to sink into the heart, the instruction imparted works in a flash, and he realizes the self all right. Otherwise, there is always the struggle. Manonasa jhana and chitika grata annihilation of the mind, knowledge and one-pointedness means the same. Talk 2, 176. U.P. lady arrived with her brother, a woman companion and a burly bodyguard. When she came into the hall, she saluted Maharshi with great respect and feeling and sat down on a wool blanket in front of Sri Bhagavan. Sri Bhagavan was then reading Trilinga in Telugu on the reincarnation of a boy. The boy is now 13 years old and reading in the government high school in a village near Lucknow. When he was three years he used to dig here and there, when asked, he would say that he was trying to recover something which he had hidden in the earth. When he was four years old, a marriage function was celebrated in his home. When leaving, the guests humorously remarked that they would return for this boy's marriage. But he turned round and said, I am already married. I have two wives. When asked to point them out, he requested to be taken to a certain village, and there he pointed to two women as his wives. It is now learnt that a period of ten months elapsed between the death of their husband and the birth of this boy. When this was mentioned to the lady, she asked if it was possible to know the after-death state of an individual. Three Bhagavan said, some are born immediately after, others after some lapse of time, a few are not reborn on this earth but eventually get salvation in some higher region, and a very few get absolved here and now. Gee. I do not mean that. Is it possible to know the condition of an individual after his death? Answer, it is possible. But why try to know it? All facts are only as true as the seeker. G. The birth of a person, his being and death are real to us. Answer, because you have wrongly identified your own self with the body, you think of the other one in terms of the body. Neither you are nor the other is the body. G. But from my own level of understanding, I consider myself and my son to be real. Answer. The birth of the I thought is one's own birth, its death is the person's death. After the I thought has arisen the wrong identity with the body arises. Thinking yourself the body, you give false values to others and identify them with bodies. Just as your body has been born grows and will perish, so also you think the other was born grew up and died. Did you think of your son before his birth? Thought came after his birth and persists even after his death. Inasmuch as you are thinking of him, he is your son. Where has he gone? He has gone to the source from which he sprang. He is one with you. So long as you are, he is there too. If you cease to identify yourself with the body, but see the real self, this confusion will vanish. You are eternal. The others also will similarly be found to be eternal. Until this truth is realized there will always be this grief due to false values arising from wrong knowledge and wrong identity. Gee. Let me have true knowledge by Sri Bhagavan's grace. Answer. Get rid of the I thought. So long as I is alive, there is grief. When I ceases to exist, there is no grief. Consider the state of sleep. G. Yes. But when I take to thee I thought other thoughts arise and disturb me. Answer. See whose thoughts they are. They will vanish. They have their root in the single I thought. Hold to it and they will disappear. Again the master pointed to the story of Panya and Papa, in Yoga Vasishta, where Panya consoles Papa on the death of their parents and turns him to realizing the self. For their creation is to be considered in its two aspects, Isfara Srishti God's creation and Jaiva Srishti individual's creation. 
Of these two, the universe is the former, and its relation to the individual is the latter. It is the latter which gives rise to pain and pleasure, irrespective of the former. A story was mentioned from Panchadasi. There were two young men in a village in South India. They went on a pilgrimage to North India. One of them died. The survivor, who was earning something, decided to return only after some months. In the meantime, he came across a wandering pilgrim whom he asked to convey the information regarding himself and his dead companion to the village in South India. The wandering pilgrim did so, but by mistake changed the names. The result was that the dead man's parents rejoiced in his safety and the living one's parents were in grief. Thus you see pain or pleasure has no reference to facts but to mental conceptions. Deva Srishti is responsible for it. Heal the jiva and there is no pain or pleasure, but the mental bliss persists forever. Healing the jiva is to abide in the self. Ye. I hear all this. It is beyond my grasp. I pray Sri Bhagavan to help me to understand it all. I had been to a waterfall in Mysore. The cascade was a fascinating sight. The water streamed out in the shapes of fingers trying to grasp the rocks, but were rushed on by the current to the depths below. I imagined this to be the state of the individuals clinging to their present surroundings. But I cannot help clinging. I cannot imagine that we are no better than seasonal flowers, fruits and leaves on trees. I love flowers but still this idea has no hold on me. After a few minutes, she pointed out that she had intended to ask Maharshi about death and matters relating to it, but did not however do it. Yet Maharshi was reading the related matter in the newspaper, and the same topic came up for enlightenment. She left after seeing the cow Lakshmi. 9th November 1936 Talk 2, 177 Mr. Cohen What is will? I mean, where does it fit in in the five coses? Answer. The I thought arises first and then all other thoughts. They comprise the mind. The mind is the object and the I is the subject. Can there be will without the I? It is comprised in the I. The I thought is the Vijnamaya Kosa intellectual sheath. Will is included in it. Free Bhagavan said further. Anamaya Kosa is the gross body sheath. The senses with the prana and the karmandriyas form the pranamaya kosa sense sheath. The senses with the mind form the manamaya kosa mind sheath. They are the jnanandriyas. The mind is formed of thoughts only item this is the object and aham, I is the subject, the two together form the vijnamaya kosa intellect sheath. 10th November 1936 Talk 2, 178 Miss W. U. Madevi, a Polish lady, convert to Hinduism, had traveled in Kashmir and brought views from Kashmir at which we were looking. Free Bhagavan humorously remarked, We have seen those places without the trouble of travel. Disciple, I wish to go to Kailas. Answer, one can see these places only if destined not otherwise. After seeing all, there will still remain more, if not in this hemisphere, maybe in the other. Knowledge implies ignorance of what lies beyond what is known. Knowledge is always limited. After some time Sri Bhagavan continued. Apar was decrepit and old and yet began to travel to Kailas. Another old man appeared on the way and tried to dissuade him from the attempt, saying that it was so difficult to reach there. Apar was however obdurate and said that he would risk his life in the attempt. Danger asked him to dip himself in a tank close by. Apar did so and found Kailas then and there. Where did all this happen? In Turuvayar nine miles from Tanjore. Where is Kailas then? Is it within the mind or outside it? If Turuvayar be truly Kailas, it must appear to others as well. But Apar alone found it so. 
Similarly, it is said of other places of pilgrimage in the south that they are the abodes of Saiva, and devotees found them so. This was true from their standpoint. Everything is within. There is nothing without. Talk 2, 179. Disciple, how long does it take a man to be reborn after death? Is it immediately after death or some time after? Answer, you do not know what you were before birth, yet, you want to know what you will be after death. Do you know what you were now? Birth and rebirth pertain to the body. You are identifying the self with the body. It is a wrong identification. You believe that the body has been born and will die, and confound the phenomena relating to the one with the other. Know your real being and these questions will not arise. Birth and rebirth are mentioned only to make you investigate the question and find out that there are neither births nor rebirths. They relate to the body and not to the self. Know the self and be not perturbed by doubts. Talk 2, 180. Disciple, can you help me to get rid of Maya? Answer, what is Maya? Disciple, attachment to the world. Answer, was the world in your deep sleep? Was there attachment to it? Disciple, there was not. Answer, were you there or not? Disciple, maybe. Answer, then do you deny having existed in sleep? Disciple, I do not. Answer, you are therefore now the same one as there was in sleep. Disciple, yes. Answer, what is it then that raises the question of Maya just now? Disciple, the mind was not in sleep. The world and the attachment to it are of the mind. Answer, that is it. The world and the attachment to it are of the mind, not of the self. Disciple, I was ignorant in sleep. Answer, who says that he was ignorant? Is he not ignorant now? Is he a Johnny? Ignorance is now mentioned by the contaminated self here. Disciple, was the self pure then in sleep? Answer, it did not raise any doubts. It did not feel imperfect or impure. Disciple, such self is common to all, even in a dead body. Answer, but the man in sleep or in dead body does not raise questions. Consider who raises questions. It is you. Were you not in sleep? Why was there no imperfection? The pure self is simple being. It does not associate itself with objects and become conscious as in the wakeful state. What you now call consciousness in the present state is associated consciousness requiring brain, mind, body, etc. to depend upon. But in sleep consciousness persisted without these. Disciple, but I do not know the consciousness in sleep. Answer, who is not aware of it? You admit I am. You admit I was in sleep. The state of being is yourself. Disciple, do you mean to say that sleep is self-realization? Answer, it is the self. Why do you talk of realization? Is there a moment when the self is not realized? If there be such a moment, the other moment might be said to be one of realization. There is no moment when the self is not nor when the self is not realized. Why pick out sleep for it? Even now you are self-realized. Disciple, but I do not understand. Answer, because you are identifying the self with the body. Give up the wrong identity and the self is revealed. Disciple, but this does not answer my question to help me to get rid of Maya, in other words, attachment. Answer, this attachment is not found in sleep. It is perceived and felt now. It is not your real nature. On whom is this accretion? If the real nature is known, these exist not. If you realize the self, the possessions are not perceived. That is getting rid of Maya. Mayor is not objective that it could be got rid of in any other way. 15th November 19, 
136 sparks from the anvil. I. Pak 2, 181. A certain man, who claims to have been Sri Maharshi's quantum disciple, has filed a suit in the court praying for a declaration that he is the legitimate Sarvadikari of the Asramam. Sri Maharshi was examined on commission. There was a crowd but the proceedings went on smoothly in the room on the northeast. The following are a few titbits therefrom. Sri Bhagavan's answers were quite spontaneous and smooth. Question. To which Asramam does Sri Bhagavan belong? Answer. Aishi Asramam beyond the four stages. Question. What is it? Answer. It is beyond the four commonly known Asramas. Question. Is it Sastraik? Answer. Yes. It is mentioned in the Sastras. Question. Are there others of the same type besides yourself? Answer. There may be. Question. Have there been any? Answer. Sukha, Rishabha, Jada Bharata and others. Question. You left home at an early age because you had no attachment for home and property. But here, there is property in the Asramam. How is it? Answer. I do not seek it. Property is thrust on me. I neither love nor hate it. Question. Are they given to you? Answer. They are given to the Swami whoever he may be. The body is considered the Swami in the world. The body is this. It reduces itself to myself. Question. In that case the attachment to property is now renewed. Is it so? Answer. I do not hate it, that is all I said. Question. In practical life it amounts to what I say. Answer. Just as we live and move in practical matters. Question. Do you give you pay dish? Have you ever done it? Answer. Visitors ask questions. I answer them as well as I know. It is for them to treat my words as they please. Question. Is it you paid ish? Answer. How shall I say how others take it? Question. Have you disciples? Answer. I do not give you paid ish in the ceremonial manner. For instance, keeping a kamba, making puja to it and whispering to the person. The person may call himself my disciple or devotee. I do not consider anyone to be my disciple. I have never sought Upadish from anyone, nor do I give ceremonial Upadish. If the people call themselves my disciples I do not approve or disapprove. In my view all are alike. They consider themselves fit for being called disciples. What can I say to them? I do not call myself a disciple or a guru. Question. How did you approve the building of Skanda Sramam on the hill which was temple land, without previously obtaining permission from the authorities? Answer. Guided by the same power which made me come here and reside on the hill. Question. When you threw away, your cash etc., within an hour after your arrival in this place, you did so because you did not desire possessions. You never touch money. There were no possessions for several years after your arrival here. How is it that donations are now accepted by the Asramam? Answer. This practice grew up at a later stage because a few associates began to use my name to collect funds. I did not approve of their action nor check them. Though it is going on. One man leaves, another steps in, but the process goes on. I do not desire that contributions should be accepted. But people do not heed that advice. I do not desire to give ineffective advice. I do not therefore check them. Since money comes and property grows spontaneously. Question, why do you not sign your name? Answer, the author of self-realization has furnished his answer for this question. Moreover, by what name am I to be known? I myself do not know. People have given me several names from time to time since my arrival here. If I should sign by one name, 
all would not understand it. Though I used to say to the people seeking autographs that, even if they should show my signature, people in general would not believe it to be true. Question, you do not touch money nor other offerings, I trust. Answer, people sometimes place fruits in my hands. I touch them. Question, if you receive one kind of offering, why should you not receive money also? Answer, I cannot eat money. What shall I do with it? Why should I take that with which I do not know what to do? Question, why do visitors stop at the Asramam? Answer, they must know why. Question, you have no objection to anyone coming and staying here I suppose. Answer, no. Question, you have similarly no objection to any length of their stay. Answer, no. If I do not find it agreeable I will go away. That is all. A lawyer devotee asked Sri Bhagavan if the previous day's examination by commission caused much strain. Answer, I did not use my mind and so there was no strain. Let them examine me for a thousand days. I don't mind. 16th, November 1936 Talk 2, 182 Disciple, does the Tantric Sadhana bring about self-realization? Answer, yes. Disciple, which worship in Tantra is the best? Answer, it depends on temperament. Disciple, what part does Kundalini play in bringing about self-realization? Answer, Kundalini rises from any lakshya that you have. Kundalini is pranasakti life current. Disciple, different deities are said to reside in different chakras. Does one see them in course of sadhana? Answer, they can be seen if desired. Disciple, does the path to self-realization go through samadhi? Answer, they are synonymous. Disciple, it is said that the guru can make his disciple realize the self by transmitting some of his own power to him. Is it true? Answer, yes. Guru does not bring about self-realization. He simply removes the obstacles to it. The self is always realized. Disciple, is there absolute necessity of a guru for self-realization? Answer, so long as you seek self-realization the guru is necessary. Guru is the self. Take Guru to be the real self and yourself as the individual self. The disappearance of this sense of duality is removal of ignorance. So long as duality persists in you the Guru is necessary. Because you identify yourself with the body you think the Guru too to be some body. You are not the body nor is the Guru. You are the self and so is the Guru. This knowledge is gained by what you call self-realization. Disciple, how can one know whether a particular individual is competent to be a guru? Answer, by the peace of mind found in his presence and by the sense of respect you feel for him. Disciple, if the guru happens to turn out incompetent, what will be the fate of the disciple who has implicit faith in him? Answer, each one according to his merits. Disciple, what are your opinions about social reform? Answer, self-reform automatically brings about social reform. Confine yourself to self-reform. Social reform will take care of itself. Disciple, what is your opinion about Gandhiji's Harijan movement? Answer, ask him. Disciple, is it necessary to take bath if we touch dead bodies? Answer, the body is a corpse. So long as one is in contact with it one must bathe in the waters of the self. Disciple, if the Advaita is final, why did Madhvacharya teach Dvaita? Answer, is yourself Dvaita or Advaita? All systems agree on self-surrender. Attain it first, then there will be time to judge whose view is right or otherwise. Disciple, 
Why do you not preach to the people to set them on the right path? Answer, you have already decided by yourself that I do not preach. Do you know who I am and what preaching is? Disciple, is the shaving of widows among Brahmins not cruel? Answer, this may be asked of Dharma Sastras or Reformers. Reform yourself first, and let us then see about the rest. 17th November 1936 Talk 283 Disciple, how can one become Jitta Sangadasha free from the stain of association? Answer, by Set Sangha association with the wise. That Sangab Nisangadfam Nisangab Nirmohadfam Nirmohad Nishulitadfam Nishulitav Jivan Makti. That Sangha means Sangha association with Sat. That is only the self. Since the self is not now understood to be sad, the company of the sage who has thus understood it is sought. That is sad sangha. Introversion results. Then sad is revealed. For whom is association? For whom is dosha? Disciple, to the self. Answer, no. The self is pure and unaffected. The impurities affect only the ego. Disciple, can the soul remain without the body? Answer, it will be so a short time hence, in deep slumber. The self is bodiless. Even now it is so. Disciple, can a sannyasi remain in the midst of samsara? Answer, so long as one thinks that he is a sannyasi, he is not one, so long as one does not think of samsara, he is not a samsari, on the other hand he is a sannyasi. 18th November 1936, Talk 2, 184 Disciple, it is said in Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Realize the self with pure intellect and also by service to Guru and by inquiry. How are they to be reconciled? Answer, Iswara Gurat Meti, Iswara Guru and Self are identical. So long as the sense of duality persists in you, you seek a Guru considering that he stands apart. He however teaches you the truth and you gain the insight. Disciple, kindly explain Ahamiko name Kaskit Nahamanyasya Kasyakit Naham Pasyami Yasyaham Tamna Pasyami Yomama I am alone, none is mine of none else am I, I see none whose I am, none who is mine. Answer. This sloka occurs in different scriptures holy books for example Bhagavata, Mahabharata etc. It also forms the motto of chapter Roman 11 in self-realization. I am, I is only one. Egos are different. They are in the one self. The self is not affected by the egos. I is one only. I is the truth. All that follows is meant to refute the sense of duality. Talk 2, 185 Disciple if the self be itself aware, why am I not aware of the same even now? Answer, there is no duality. Your present knowledge is due to the ego and only relating. Relative knowledge requires a subject and an object. Whereas the awareness of the self is absolute and requires no object. Remembrance also is similarly relative, requiring an object to be remembered and a subject to remember. When there is no duality, who is to remember whom? Disciple, what happens to the created ego when the body dies? Answer, ego is I thought in its subtle form it remains a thought, whereas in its gross aspect it embraces the mind, the senses and the body. They disappear in deep slumber along with the ego. Still the self is there, similarly it will be in death. Ego is not an entity independent of the self in order that it must be created or destroyed by itself. It functions as an instrument of the self and periodically ceases to function. That is to say, it appears and disappears, this might be considered to be birth and death. 
relative knowledge pertains to the mind and not to the self. It is therefore illusory and not permanent. Take a scientist for instance. He formulates a theory that the earth is round and goes on to prove it and establish it on an incontrovertible basis. When he falls asleep the whole idea vanishes, his mind is left a blank. What does it matter if the world remains round or flat when he is asleep? Though you see the futility of all such relative knowledge, one should go beyond such relative knowledge and abide in the self. Real knowledge is such experience and not apprehension by the mind. Disciple, why does not Sri Bhagavan go about and preach the truth to the people at large? Answer, how do you know that I am not doing it? Does preaching consist in mounting a platform and haranguing to the people around? Preaching is simple communication of knowledge. It may be done in silence too. What do you think of a man listening to a harangue for an hour and going away without being impressed by it so as to change his life? Compare him with another who sits in a holy presence and leaves after some time with his outlook on life totally changed. Which is better? To preach loudly, without effect, or to sit silently sending forth intuitive forces to play on others? Again how does speech arise? There is abstract knowledge unmanifest. From it there rises the ego which gives rise to thoughts and words successively. So then, abstract knowledge down arrow ego down arrow thoughts down arrow words words are therefore the great grandson of the original source. If words can produce an effect, how much more powerful should the preaching through silence be? Judge for yourself. Talk 2, 186. Disciple, why can we not remain in Sushupti as long as we like and be also voluntarily in it just as we are in the waking state? Answer, Sushupti continues in this state also. We are ever in Sushupti. That should be consciously gone into and realized in this very state. There is no real going into or coming from it. Becoming aware of that is Samadhi. An ignorant man cannot remain long in Sushapti because he is forced by nature to emerge from it. His ego is not dead and it will rise up again. But the wise man attempts to crush it in its source. It rises up again and again for him too impelled by nature, in other words, prarabdha. That is both in Jani and Ajani, ego is sprouting forth, but with this difference, namely the Ajani's ego, when it rises up is quite ignorant of its source, or he is not aware of his sushapti in the dream and jagrat states, whereas a jhani when his ego rises up enjoys his transcendental experience with this ego keeping his lakshya aim always on its source. This ego is not dangerous, it is like the skeleton of a burnt rope, in this form it is ineffective. By constantly keeping our aim on our source, our ego is dissolved in its source, like a doll of salt in the ocean. Disciple, Sri Ramakrishna says that Nirvikalpa Samadhi cannot last longer than twenty-one days. It persisted in the person dies. Is it so? Answer, when the prarabdha is exhausted the ego is completely dissolved without leaving any trace behind. This is final liberation. Unless prarabdha is completely exhausted the ego will be rising up in its pure form even in Jivan Maktas. I still doubt the statement of the maximum duration of 21 days. It is said that people cannot live if they fast 30 or 40 days. But there are those who have fasted longer, say a hundred days. It means that there is still prarabdha for them. Disciple, how is realization made possible? Answer. There is the absolute self from which a spark proceeds as from fire. The spark is called the ego. In the case of an ignorant man it identifies itself with an object simultaneously with its rise. It cannot remain independent of such association with objects. This association is a jhana or ignorance whose destruction is the objective of our efforts. 
if its objectifying tendency is killed, it remains pure and also merges into the source. The wrong identification with the body is Dhyatma Buddhi I am the body idea. This must go before good results follow. Disciple, how to eradicate it? Answer, we exist in Sashupti without being associated with the body and mind. But in the other two states we are associated with them. If one with the body, how can we exist without the body in Sashupti? We can separate ourselves from that which is external to us, and not from that which is one with us. Hence the ego is not one with the body. This must be realized in the waking state. Avasthetraya, the three states of waking, dream and deep sleep should be studied only for gaining this outlook. The ego in its purity is experienced in intervals between two states or two thoughts. Ego is like that caterpillar which leaves its hold only after catching another. Its true nature can be found when it is out of contact with objects or thoughts. Realize this interval with the conviction gained by the study of Avasthatreya, the three states of consciousness. Disciple, how do we go to sleep and how do we wake up? Answer, just at nightfall the hen clucks and the chicks go and hide themselves under her wings. The hen then goes to roost in the nest with the chicks in her protection. At dawn the chicks come out, and so does the hen. The mother hen stands for the ego which collects all the thoughts and goes to sleep. Sunrise the rays emerge forth and are collected again at sunset. Similarly, when the ego displays itself, it does so with all its paraphernalia. When it sinks, everything disappears with it. Disciple, what does Sashapti look like? Answer, in a cloudy dark night no individual identification of objects is possible and there is only dense darkness, although the seer has his eyes wide open, similarly in Sashapti the seer is aware of simple nescience. Three Bhagavan is said to have remarked to an inquisitive person, What is the meaning of this talk of truth and falsehood and world which is itself false? 27th, November, 1936, Talk, 287. A Punjabi gentleman, a doctor by profession, came here with his wife to visit Sri Bhagavan. He was in the hall when Sri Bhagavan came in after lunch, then he asked, How should I meditate? I do not have peace of mind. Answer, peace is our real nature. It need not be attained. Our thoughts must be obliterated. Disciple, I have been trying to obliterate them but I am not successful. Answer, the Gita method is the only one for it. Whenever mind strays away bring it back to bear on meditation. Disciple, I cannot bring my mind to meditate. Another devotee. An elephant when free puts its trunk here and there and feels restless. If a length of chain is given to it, the trunk holds it and is no longer restless. Similarly, mind without an aim is restless, with an aim it remains at peace. Disciple, no, no, it is all theory. I've read many books, but no use. It is practically impossible to make the mind concentrate. Answer. Concentration is impossible so long as there are predispositions. They obstruct bhakti also. The interpreter advised the questioner to study who am I. The doctor was ready with his protestations. I have read it also. I cannot still make my mind concentrate. Answer, by practice and dispassion, abhyasa verajyabhyam. Disciple. Verajya is necessary. Answer, Abhyasa and Verajya are necessary. Verajya is the absence of diffused thoughts, Abhyasa is concentration on one thought only. The one is the positive and the other, the negative aspect of meditation. Disciple, I am not able to do so by myself. I am in search of a force to help me. Answer, Yes, what is called grace. Individually we are incapable, 
because the mind is weak. Grace is necessary. Tadu Seva is meant only for it. There is however nothing new to get. Just as a weak man comes under the control of a stronger one, the weak mind of a man comes under control easily in the presence of the strong-minded sadhus. That which is, is only grace there is nothing else. The questioner said, I request your blessings for the good of myself. Bhagavan said, Yes, yes. He left with his wife. 29th November, 1936 Talk, 2, 188 Explaining Maya of Adanta and Swatantra of Pratyabhana independence of recognition, Sri Bhagavan said, The Vedantins say that Maya is the Sakti of illusion premised in Seva. Maya has no independent existence. Having brought out the illusion of the world as real, she continues to play upon the ignorance of the victims. When the reality of her not being is found, she disappears. Recognition says that Sakti power is coeval with Seva. The one does not exist without the other. Seva is unmanifest, whereas Sakti is manifest on account of her independent will Swatantra. Her manifestation is the display of the cosmos on pure consciousness, like images in a mirror. Images cannot remain in the absence of a mirror. Though so also the world cannot have an independent existence. Vatantra comes eventually, an attribute of the Supreme. Sri Sankara says that the Absolute is without attributes and that Maya is not and has no real being. What is the difference between the two? Both agree that the display is not real. The images of the mirror cannot in any way be real. The world does not exist in reality Vastuta. Both schools mean the same thing. Their ultimate aim is to realize the absolute consciousness. The unreality of the cosmos is implied in recognition pratyapena, whereas it is explicit in Vedanta. If the world be taken as chit consciousness, it is always real. Vedanta says that there is no nana diversity, meaning that it is all the same reality. There is agreement on all points except in words and the method of expression. 30th November, 1936 Talk 2, 189 While discussing karma Sri Bhagavan said, Karma has its fruit falla. They are like cause and effect. The interrelation of a cause and its effect is due to a sakti whom we call God. God is falla a dispenser of fruit. A visitor had been speaking of the self having forgotten its true nature. Sri Bhagavan after some time said, People speak of memory and oblivion of the fullness of the self. Oblivion and memory are only thought forms. They will alternate so long as there are thoughts. But reality lies beyond these. Memory or oblivion must be dependent on something. That something must be foreign too, otherwise there cannot be oblivion. It is called I by everyone. When one looks for it, it is not found because it is not real. Hence I is synonymous with illusion or ignorance maya, avidya or ajana. To know that there never was ignorance is the goal of all the spiritual teachings. Ignorance must be of one who is aware. Awareness is jhana. Jhana is eternal and natural. Ajana is unnatural and unreal. Disciple, having heard this truth, why does not one remain content? Answer, because samskaras have not been destroyed. Unless the samskaras cease to exist, there will always be doubt and confusion sandhya, viparita. All efforts are directed to destroying doubt and confusion. To do so their roots must be cut. Thirds are the samskaras. These are rendered ineffective by practice as prescribed by the Guru. Guru leaves it to the seeker to do this much so that he might himself find out that there is no ignorance. This truth mentioned is in the stage of the hearing of the truth Esravana. 
that is not dardé firm. For making it unshaken, one has to practice reflection manana and one-pointedness nididi asana. These two processes scorch the seeds of asanas so that they are rendered ineffective. Some extraordinary persons get dardhe jhana unshaken knowledge even on hearing the truth only once sakuch, ravana matrina. Because they are kathapasaka advanced seekers, whereas the akathapasaka raw seekers take longer to gain dardhe jhana unshaken knowledge. People ask, How did ignorance evidya arise at all? We have to say to them, Ignorance never arose. It has no real being. That which is is only vidya knowledge. Disciple, why then do I not realize it? Answer, because of the samskaras. However, find out who does not realize and what he does not realize. Then it will be clear that there is no avidya ignorance. Talk 2, 190. Mr. Sagarmal, a Marwari gentleman, a cotton merchant from Bombay, seems learned in Srimad Bhagavad Gita. He asked, Srimad Bhagavad Gita says, Mata Paritaram Nanyat Kinchit and later on Sutter Managana Eva, there is nothing different from me and later on like beads strung on a thread. If there is nothing but Sri Krishna, how can the world be said to be like beads on a string? Answer. It means that the sutra string and the mani jewel beads are not apart from me. There are no manigan a row of beads apart from the string sutra, and no string apart from me. The sloka emphasizes unity and not multiplicity which is only on the surface. Disciple, unity can only be after merging into Bhagavan. True, but till then there must be diversity. That is samsara. Answer, where are we now? Are we apart from Bhagavan? The Samsara and we are all in Bhagavan. Disciple, but that is the experience of the Janis. Differentiation persists until Jhana dawns. So there is Samsara for me. Answer, Samskara predisposition is Samsara cycle of births and deaths. Disciple, right. All this is Vasudeva, this truth has been forgotten by us. Though we cannot identify ourselves with God. Answer, where is forgetfulness? Disciple, like Svapna. Answer, who's Svapna? Disciple, Javas. Answer, who is Jiva? Disciple, it is Paramatmas. Answer, let Paramatma ask then. Disciple, I shall make my doubt clear by means of an illustration. Answer, whoever wants the doubt to be illustrated and made clear. Direct experience, pratyaksha, does not require examples for elucidation. Disciple, there is pratyaksha and also forgetfulness. Answer, what is forgotten and by whom? Disciple, listen. One dreams, the dream world disappears on waking. Answer, wake up similarly from the present dream. Disciple, prakriti nature is too powerful. Answer, see the pure Russia Lord also. What can prakriti do then? Disciple, there is a grant, I not between them. Answer, whose is that not? Is it of the Lord or of nature? or of both? Disciple, due to Brahman. Answer, then Brahman must ask or must be asked. To whom is Svapna? With a not. You are always saying I ask. Who is that I? Disciple, I do not perceive. Answer, I is eternal. It would vanish if it were anything particular. It is perfection though it is not found as an object. Disciple, but I am imperfect. Answer, why bring in imperfection? Why are you not perfect? Did you feel imperfection in your sleep? Why do you not remain so even now? Bring sleep into the waking state Jagrat Sashapti and you will be all right. Yanisa Sarva Bhutanam Pasyaito Mane 
that which is night for the ignorant is day for the wise. Disciple, yes, if he is a Muni sage. Answer, who is a Muni? Is he not a man? Disciple, do you not feel a slap if given to you? Is there no differentiation? Is it Jana? Answer, a man under chloroform or under the influence of drink does not feel it. Is he a Jani? Is Jana inconsistent with that feeling? Disciple, there is seer seen in sight. They are not characteristic of Jana. Answer, in sleep and trance, in absent-mindedness, there is no differentiation. Do you call it Jana? What has happened in these states? Is that which then was, absent now? That which is exists forever. The difference is due to the mind. The mind is sometimes present at other times absent. There is no change in the reality. Reality is always bliss, Ananda. Disciple, bliss is the outcome of practice. What is that practice? Answer, sadhana is the inquiry to find out to whom all these doubts arise. Disciple, it is for the ego ahamkara. Answer, wherefrom does ahamkara arise? Disciple, guidance is necessary to show me the way. Answer, go within and find the route. You cannot find it from without, nor should you seek it externally. Disciple, I am unable to find the ego by search. I stop there. Answer, how can you get it? It is not apart from you. Leave alone not finding it. Where are you now? Do you mean to say I am not? Disciple, what or how am I? Answer, do not trouble yourself about it. Let it be as it is. Why do you care? Did you care for the whole or part Samashti Vyashti in your sleep? The same person is present now too. You are the same in sleep and in waking. Disciple, sleep and waking are different states having different effects. Answer, how does it matter to you? The self is the same all through. Disciple, the mind is not steady in meditation. Answer, whenever it wanders, turn it inward again and again. Disciple, when dukkha misery overpowers me inquiry is impossible. Answer, because the mind is too weak. Make it strong. Disciple, by what means? Answer, satsanga isvara aradhana pranayama, association with the wise, worship of God, breath control. Disciple, what happens? Answer, misery is removed, our aim is removal of misery. You do not acquire happiness. Your very nature is happiness. Bliss is not newly earned. All that is done is to remove unhappiness. These methods do it. Disciple, association with the wise may strengthen the mind. There must also be practice. What practice should be made? Answer, yes. Practice is necessary too. Practice means removal of predispositions. Practice is not for any fresh gain, it is to kill the predispositions. Disciple, a Biasa practice should give me that power. Answer, practice is power. Thoughts are reduced to a single thought the mind is said to have grown strong. When practice remains unshaken, it becomes sahaja natural. Disciple, what is such practice? Answer, inquiring into the self. That is all. Atmani vavasam nayat. Fix the mind on the self. Disciple, what is the aim to be kept in view? Practice requires an aim. Answer, Atman is the aim. What else can there be? All other aims are for those who are incapable of Atmalaksya having the self for the aim. They lead you ultimately to Atmavichara inquiry into the self. One-pointedness is the fruit of all kinds of practice. One may get it quickly, 
another after a long time. Everything depends on the practice. Disciple, peace is extolled more than anything else. How shall we gain it? Answer, it is your very nature. Forgetfulness never overtakes the self. The self is now confounded with non-self and that makes you speak of forgetfulness of the self, peace, etc. Oblivion will never rear up its head if this confusion is put an end to. Disciple, how is that done? Answer, inquiry into the self. One-pointedness means cessation of mental activities. Forgetfulness must be for the self, well, of what? Of the self? Are there then two selves? Practice removes the samskaras. Disciple, but samskaras are infinite and eternal, from beginningless time. Answer, this itself is a samskara. Give up that idea and all samskaras will disappear at once. That is visranti repose, santi peace. Peace is ever present. But you hold it down and rise over it and thus disturb it. Then you say I want peace. Disciple, will peace be gradual? Answer, yes. Make the mind gradually still sanais and a uparamit says the Bhagavad Gita. After some time, the visitor asked if one Mr. G had been here on or about the twentieth instant. He himself had heard of Maharshi from him. Mr. G was full of joy after his visit here. Answer, how can I know the names of all the visitors? He might have been here. All are full of joy. There is no name, no form. Name is however, needed for Vyavahara empirical life. 5th December 19, 136 Sparks from the Anvil, 2. Talk 2, 191. Question. You spoke of Adias Rama beyond the Asramas, beyond the orders of life the other day. Is there any authority for it? Is it mentioned anywhere? Maharshi. Yes, in the Upanishads, the Sutta Samhita Skanda Purana, Bhagavata Bharata and other works. 5. Question. Are there any restrictions or discipline for that state? Answer. There are characteristics of it mentioned. Question. There are gurus for each asrama. Is there a guru for Adi Asrama? Answer. Yes. Question. But you do not admit a guru. Answer. There is a guru for everyone. I admit a guru for me also. Question, who is your guru? Answer, the self. Question, for whom? Answer, for myself. The guru may be internal or external. He may reveal himself internally or communicate externally. Question, can the adias ram his own property? Answer, there is no restriction for them. They may do what they please. Tuka is said to have married and begotten children also. Question. The Aetius Rami is like a householder in that case. Answer. I have already said that he is above the four recognized Asramas. Question. If they can marry, own property, etc., they are only Grihasthas. Answer. That may be your view. Question. Can they own property and convey the same to others? Answer. They may or may not. All depends on their prayer abda. Question. Is there any karma for them? Answer. Their conduct is not regulated according to any rules or codes. Question. When visitors want to stay here say two or three days, do they take your permission? Answer. The permission from the management is permission from me. Visitors come here for me, the management is for me. Wherever there is mutual agreement, I do not interfere. When visitors come here and I admit them, will others dare go against my wishes? My consent is implied in the actions which take place with mutual goodwill. Sri Bhagavan was shown a stanza in his own handwriting in praise of himself as Subramanya. 
Three Bhagavan said that the handwriting was his own whereas the ideas were Paramal Swamis. Question, but do you not agree with the statement made in it? Answer, in the same way as an idol is praised as Subramanya. 13th, December 19, 136 Talk 2, 192 in reply to a question if ten matras are the operating factors in dreams, Sri Bhagavan said, No. Ten matras are sakshma subtler than that. Although the dream creations are subtle as compared with the gross world of the wakeful state, yet the dream creations are gross compared to ten matras. Ten matras after Panchakarana give rise to the form of the Antakarna's inner organ, mind there too by the different sets of operating causes. Influenced by Sapha the predominance of Ether Akasa, it gives rise to Jhana knowledge whose seat is the brain Vayu air gives rise to Mana's mind Tej's light gives rise to Bodhi intellect Jala water gives rise to Chitta memory etc. Tata the earth gives rise to Ahan Kirahigo. They are Samashti collective for the reason that they can operate collectively, or individually with any or all of the senses or organs. By Rajaguna they are changed to Jnanandriyas in the Vyashti individual, by Tamaguna to Karmandriyas in the Vyashti the individual. The relation between the external world and the individual now becomes easy because the ten matras are common to them. The ten matras proceed from Prakriti. The statements on creation differ considerably. There is mentioned Yugapatsishti simultaneous creation and Kramasishti gradual creation. The significance is not emphasis on creation, but on the original source. Talk 2, 193. Mr. E. Iyer. There is no way found to go inward by means of meditation. Answer, where else are we now? Our very being is that. Disciple. Being so, we are ignorant of it. Answer, ignorant of what and whose is the ignorance? If ignorant of the self, are there two selves? Disciple, there are no two selves. The feeling of limitation cannot be denied. Due to limitations. Answer, limitation is only in the mind. Did you feel it in deep sleep? You exist in sleep. You do not deny your existence then. The same self is now and here in the wakeful state. You are now saying that there are limitations. What has now happened is that there are these differences between the two states. The differences are due to the mind. There was no mind in sleep whereas it is now active. The self exists in the absence of the mind also. Disciple. Although it is understood, it is not realized. Answer, it will be by and by with meditation. Disciple, meditation is with mind, and how can it kill the mind in order to reveal the self? Answer, meditation is sticking to one thought. That single thought keeps away other thoughts, distraction of mind is a sign of its weakness. By constant meditation it gains strength, in other words to say, its weakness of fugitive thought gives place to the enduring background free from thoughts. This expanse devoid of thought is the self. Mind in purity is the self. Tri Bhagavan continued in reply to the former questioner. Everyone says I am the body. It is the experience of the sage as also of the ignorant. The ignorant man believes that the self is confined to the body only, whereas the wise man believes that the body cannot remain apart from the self. The self is infinite for him and includes the body also. Mr. Bose said that he felt peace in his presence which lasts some time after. He added, Why is it not enduring? Answer, that peace is the real nature. Contrary ideas are only superimpositions. This is true bhakti, true yoga, true jhana. You may say that this peace is acquired by practice. The wrong notions are given up by practice. This is all. Your true nature always persists. 
These flashes are only signs of the ensuing revelation of the self. In reply to the first questioner Bhagavan said, The heart is the self. It is not within or without. The mind is its sakti. After the emergence of the mind, the universe appears and the body is seen to be contained in it. Whereas all these are contained in the self and they cannot exist apart from the self. 14th, December 1936, Talk 2, 194. Mr. Park, I. How is meditation to be practiced? Answer, meditation is truly speaking at Manishtha to be fixed as the self. But when thoughts cross the mind, and an effort is made to eliminate them the effort is usually termed meditation. At Manishtha is your real nature. Remain as you are. That is the aim. Disciple, but thoughts come up. Is our effort meant to eliminate thoughts only? Answer, yes. Meditation being on a single thought, the other thoughts are kept away. Meditation is only negative in effect inasmuch as thoughts are kept away. Disciple, it is said at Masams the Manakarta fixing the mind in the self. But the self is unthinkable. Answer, why do you wish to meditate at all? Because you wish to do so you are told at Masams the Manakarta fixing the mind in the self. Why do you not remain as you are without meditating? What is that man of mind? When all thoughts are eliminated it becomes Atma Samstha fixed in self. Disciple, if a form is given, I can meditate on it and other thoughts are eliminated. The self is formless. Answer, meditation on forms or concrete objects is said to be Diana, whereas the inquiry into the self is Vichara, inquiry or Nididya Sana. Explaining it here are Papavadabhyam superimposition and its elimination, Sri Bhagavan pointed out that the first turns you inward to the self, and then according to the second, you know that the world is not apart from the self. 16th December, 1936 Talk 2, 195 Mr. Natvrul Perk a Gujarati gentleman who had attended the International Religious Conference as a delegate from Baroda, came here on a visit. He is a young man well-groomed, alert and quite conscious of his well-earned merit. He presented a note containing some questions to Sri Bhagavan. Disciple, pray help me realize Atma, Paramatma, Satchidananda. Answer, Atma, Paramatma, Satchidananda mean one and the same thing in other words the self. The self is eternally realized. Otherwise there will be no pleasure in it. If it is not eternal it must have a beginning, what begins will also end, so that it is only transient. There is no use seeking for a temporary state of affairs. Fact is that it is the state of effortless, ever alert peace. Effortlessness while remaining aware is the state of bliss, and that is realization. Disciple, I do not want intellectual answers. I want them to be practical. Answer, yes. Direct knowledge does not require intellectual discourses. Since the self is directly experienced by everyone, they are not at all necessary. Everyone says I am. Is there anything more to realize? Disciple, it is not clear to me. Answer, you exist. You say I am. That means existence. Disciple, but I am not sure of it, in other words my existence. Answer, oh. Who then is speaking now? Disciple, I surely. But whether I exist or not, I am not sure. Moreover, admitting my existence leads me nowhere. Answer, there must be one even to deny the existence. If you do not exist, there is no questioner, and no question can arise. Disciple, let us take it that I exist. Answer, how do you know that you exist? Disciple, because I think I feel I see etc. Answer, so you mean that your existence is inferred from these. 
Furthermore there is no feeling thinking etc. in sleep, and yet there is the being. Disciple, but no. I cannot say that I was in deep sleep. Answer, do you deny your existence in sleep? Disciple, I may be or may not be in sleep. God knows. Answer, when you wake up from sleep, you remember what you did before falling asleep. Disciple, I can say that I was before and after sleep, but I cannot say if I was in sleep. Answer, do you now say that you were asleep? Disciple, yes. Answer, how do you know unless you remember the state of sleep? Disciple, it does not follow that I existed in sleep. Admission of such existence leads nowhere. Answer, do you mean to say that a man dies every time that sleep overtakes him and that he resuscitates while waking? Disciple, maybe. God alone knows. Answer, then let God come and find the solution for these riddles. If one were to die in sleep, one will be afraid of sleep, just as one fears death. On the other hand one courts sleep. Why should sleep be courted unless there is pleasure in it? Disciple, there is no positive pleasure in sleep. Sleep is courted only to be rid of physical fatigue. Answer, well, that is right. To be free from fatigue. There is one who is free from fatigue. Disciple, yes. Answer, so you are in sleep and you are now too. You are happy in sleep without feeling, thinking, etc. The same one continuing now, why are you not happy? Disciple, how can it be said that there is happiness? Answer, everyone says sakamahamasapsam, I slept happily or was blissfully asleep. Disciple, I do not think that they are right. There is no sakka bliss is only absence of sorrow. Answer, your very being is bliss. Therefore everyone says I was blissfully asleep. That means that one remains in the primal uncontaminated state in sleep. As for sorrow, there is no sorrow. Where is it in order that you might speak of its absence in sleep? The present wrong identification of the self with the body has given rise to all mistakes. Disciple, what I want is realization. I do not feel my inherent happy nature. Answer, because the self is now identified with the non-self. The non-self too is not apart from the self. However, there is the wrong notion that the body is apart and the self is confounded with the body. This wrong identity must be ended for happiness to manifest. Disciple, I am unable to help myself. The engineer suggested surrender to the master. Disciple, agreed. Answer, your nature is happiness. You say that is not apparent. See what obstructs you from your true being. It is pointed out to you that the obstruction is the wrong identity. Eliminate the error. The patient must himself take the medicine prescribed by the doctor in order that he may be cured of his illness. Disciple, the patient is too weak to help himself and places himself unconditionally in the hands of the doctor. Answer, the doctor must be given a free hand and the patient must only remain quiet without saying anything. Similarly keep quiet. That is effortlessness. Disciple, that is the most effective medicine too. The other questions which he wrote down were. Disciple, Convince me of the existence of God. Answer, realization of the self amounts to such conviction. Disciple, how is prerabdha past karma related to purishkara one's own effort here? Answer, prerabdha is karma action. There must be a karta doer for it. See who the karta is. Purishkara is effort. See who exerts. There is identity established. The one who seeks to know their relation is himself the link. Disciple, what is karma and rebirth? Answer, see the karta doer 
and then the karma action becomes obvious. If you are born now, rebirth may follow. If you are born now, disciple, help me to have jaya to darsana vision of light. Answer, darsana sight implies drash to seer. Find him and darsana sight is included in him. Talk 2, 196. Bhuvan, a shepherd, says that he knows Sri Bhagavan since thirty years ago, the days of Arapakshi cave. He used at times to supply milk to the visitors in those days. Some six years ago he had lost a sheep, for which he was searching for three days. The sheep was pregnant, and he had lost all hopes of recovering her, because he thought that she had been set upon by wild animals. He was one day passing by the Asramam when Sri Bhagavan saw him and inquired how he was. The man replied that he was looking out for a lost sheep. Sri Bhagavan kept quiet, as is usual with him. Then he told the shepherd to help in lifting some stones, which he did with great pleasure. After the work was finished, Sri Bhagavan told him, Go this way, pointing the footpath towards the town. You will find the stray sheep on the way. So he did and found the lost sheep with two little lambs. He now says, What a Bhagavan is this? Look at the force of his words. He's great. He never forgets even a poor man like me. He remembers my son Manakam also with kindness. Such are the great ones. I am happy when I do any little work for him, such as looking to the cows when they are in heat. 18th December 1936 Talk 2, 197 Mr. Cohen asked, Meditation is with mind in the Jagrat waking state. There is mind in dream also. Why is there no meditation in dream? Nor is it possible? Answer, ask it in the dream. After a short silence, Sri Bhagavan continued, you are told to meditate now and find who you are. Instead of doing it you ask why is there no meditation in dream or in sleep? If you find out for whom there is Jagrat waking, it will be clear that dream and sleep are also for the same one. You are the witness of Jagrat waking Svatna dream and Sushapti sleep, rather they pass before you. Because you are out of meditation now, these questions arise. Stick to meditation and see if these questions arise. 23rd December 1936 Talk 2 198 A certain visitor formulated a question, saying that meditation is more direct than investigation, because the former holds on to the truth, whereas the latter sifts the truth from untruth. Answer for the beginner meditation on a form is more easy and agreeable. Practice of it leads to Atmavachara which consists in sifting the reality from unreality. What is the use of holding on to truth when you are filled with antagonistic factors? Atmavachara directly leads to realization by removing the obstacles which make you think that the self is not already realized. 24th December 1936, Talk, 2, 199. Mr. Iyer asked Sri Bhagavan about the source of sound. Answer, the general opinion is that para sound comes from the mulet hara, the solar plexus at the bottom of the spine. All sounds beginning from Vekar thought form are contained in para, which proceeds from kundalini, and kundalini is not different from the heart. In fact, the whole shedded hara six-fold center is contained in the heart. The sashamna with its source kundalini is included in the heart. The visitor asked about antarana taluk sendrayoni. Answer, indrayoni together with the sashamna nadi is contained lena in para. 25th, December 1936, Talk 3, 100. A brahmachari youth who has graduated in science has been waiting here for grace for the last four or five months in order that some job might drop on him like a ripe apple from the tree. He has been making no other efforts to secure a job. 
His brother yesterday came here to take him away to his parents. But the youth declined to go. An appeal was made to Sri Bhagavan. Sri Bhagavan said, I do not tell anyone to come nor ask him to go. Everyone pleases himself here. He says he finds peace in the hall, and he also wants a job. Evidently the job must be found in the hall itself so that his peace may not be disturbed. He says not in the hall. It is in the repose of the self. It can be gained anywhere. Some days later, the youth threw away his sacred thread and appeared before Sri Bhagavan with his limbs shaking, which the young man later described as his bliss ananda. Sri Bhagavan told him not to make a habit of sitting in front of him in the hall and ordered him out. Furthermore he continued, Even a fledgling is protected by the parent birds only till such time it grows its wings. It is not protected forever. Similarly with devotees. I have shown the way. You must now be able to follow it up and find peace wherever you are. The young man thinks that Sri Bhagavan gave him Upaitsa in the following words. The self in other words ego must be subdued by oneself. The man however has refused the offer of a job to him in one of the local schools and thinks that he has been given a mighty job by the hill or by Sri Bhagavan. What that job is the world will know later, he says. He had further anticipated all this day's occurrences some months ago and had foretold them to his mother and to his friends. He is further happy at the happenings. Sri Bhagavan, however, compared him to another man who is in no way of the right type. And yet the boy thinks that he is Bhagavan in embryo. Later he turned mad and died. Book 3, 101 a gentleman enthusiastically recounted several of his experiences on following Sri Bhagavan's instructions and incidentally mentioned that he and Sri Bhagavan were born on the same day of the week and bore the same name. Sri Bhagavan completed it, adding, The same self is in both. Talk 3, 102 a young man from Trichy asked Sri Bhagavan on the mention in Upaitsa Manjari of Adianta Varajim total dispassion as the qualification of a ripe disciple. He continued, What is Varajya? Detachment from worldly pursuits and desire for salvation. Is it not so? Answer, who has not got it? Each one seeks happiness, but is misled into thinking pain associated pleasures as happiness. Such happiness is transient. His mistake in activity gives him short lived pleasure. Pain and pleasure alternate with one another in the world. To discriminate between the pain producing and pleasure producing matters and to confine oneself to the happiness producing pursuit only is Varajya. What is it that will not be followed by pain? He seeks it and engages in it. Otherwise, the man has one foot in the world and another foot in the spiritual pursuit without progressing satisfactorily in either field. A question was again raised regarding the function of the guru. Answer. Because the man is not able to help himself finding himself too weak, he seeks more strength in the shape of a guru. Fuck 3, 103. Mr. Eyre sought more light on not a sound. Answer, he who meditates on it feels it. There are ten kinds of nadas. After the final thundering nada, the man gets laya. That is his natural and eternal state. Nada jayoti or inquiry thus take one to the same point. The former are indirect and the last is direct. Disciple the mind becomes peaceful for a short while and again emerges forth. What is to be done? Answer, the peace often gained must be remembered at other times. That peace is your natural and permanent state. By continuous practice it will become natural. That is called the current. That is your true nature. Nada, fadisms, etc., imply the existence of tripudi, the triads of cognizer, cognition and the cognized. 
The current resulting from investigation for the self is sutta tripedi or pure triad, that is to say, undifferentiated triad. 26, December, 1936, Talk 3, 104. A Swiss lady described a photosome she had to Sri Bhagavan. While she was sitting with her eyes wide open, she saw Sri Bhagavan's face becoming cherub-like and draped in glorious flowers. He was drawn in love towards that childlike face. Answer. The vision is in your mind. Your love is the cause. Paul Brenton saw me as a giant figure, you saw me like a child. Both are visions. The lady said. Paul Brenton asked me if I had any spiritual experience here, and I denied it. Now this happens. Answer. Do not be deceived by visions. Disciple, if one is miles away in Europe and invokes your aid. Answer, where is Europe? It is in you. Disciple, I have come here. I would like Maharshi to come there. Thing it, she laughed gently. Silence for some minutes. Answer, you see the physical body and so you find limitations. Time and space operate on this plane. So long as you think of the gross body there will be differences found as different bodies. On the other hand, knowledge of the real Maharshi will set all doubts at rest. Are you in India now? Or is India in you? Even now this notion that you are in India must go. India is in you. In order to verify it, look to your sleep. Did you feel that you were in Europe or in India while asleep? You were nevertheless existing then the same as now. Space is in you. The physical body is in space but not you. Paul Brunton had his eyes closed when he saw the vision, whereas you had your eyes open, you say. Disciple, yes. But I have never had vision whereas he is a psychic. After a few minutes, she asked, if it is an advantage or a disadvantage to see visions like this. Answer, it is an advantage. Sri Bhagavan continued. Probably you had been thinking of a child, and that appeared in the vision. Disciple, yes, only a Siva, of his childlike face. Answer, that's it. Disciple, but Siva is the destroyer. Meaning, not a child. Answer, yes, of sorrows. After a few minutes Bhagavan continued. You will shortly go to sleep. When you wake up in the morning, you will say I slept well and happily. What happened in sleep is your real nature. That continues now too, otherwise it will not be your real nature. Get the state of sleep even now, it is Seva. Have we got a form? Find that out before you think of Saiva's form. You do not exist in sleep. Were you aware of any form then? Were you with form in your sleep? You existed all the same. The I which was in sleep is also now present. You were not the body according to your sleep experience. You are the same now, that is without the body. Being without the body you were happy too in sleep. You are the same now too. That which is enduring must alone be the real nature. There was no body but only experience of happiness and sleep. That endures now too. The self is bodiless. If you are thus without body how can Seva be with body? If you are with body Siva also is with body. If you are not, he also is not. Disciple, why is he then Siva? Answer, Siva means embodiment of happiness, of auspiciousness. She was very pleased. After a time she left. Talk 3, 105. Visitors were talking among themselves and one of them said, We though familiar with our traditional teachings, are unable to follow these teachings meaning Sri Bhagavan's. How can the foreigners unfamiliar with our ways follow Sri Bhagavan's teachings so easily? He seemed to sympathize with their attempts to understand us in spite of their handicaps, and also to pity them for want of proper equipment. 
Sri Bhagavan remarked finally. Visions are better than no visions. They get interested in that way. They do not take to foreign ideas when once they do it, they stick on. So much for their merits. Sri Bhagavan later referred to Siva Prakasam Pillai's vision. Visions are not external. They appear only internally. External they must assert themselves without there being a seer. In that case what is the warranty for their existence? The seer only. Talk 3, 106. Disciple, there is something concrete necessary to meditate upon. How shall we meditate upon I? Answer, we have become rooted in forms and so we require a concrete form for meditating upon. Only that which we contemplate will in the end remain over. When you contemplate the other thoughts disappear. So long as you need to contemplate there are other thoughts where are you? You contemplate because you exist. But the contemplator must contemplate. Contemplation can only be where he is. Contemplation wards off all other thoughts. You should merge yourself in the source. At times we merge in the source unconsciously as in sleep, death, swoon, etc. What is contemplation? It is merging into the source consciously. Then the fear of death, of swoon, etc. will disappear because you are able to merge into the source consciously. Why fear death? Death cannot mean non-being. Why do you love sleep but not death? Do you not think now? Are you not existing now? Did you not exist in your sleep? Even a child says that it slept well and happily. It admits its existence in sleep unconsciously though. Though consciousness is our true nature. We cannot remain unconscious. We however say that we were unconscious in our sleep because we refer to qualified consciousness. The world, the body, etc. are so embedded in us that this relative consciousness is taken to be the self. Does anyone say in his sleep that he is unconscious? He says so now. This is the state of relative consciousness. Therefore he speaks of relative consciousness and not of abstract consciousness. The consciousness is beyond relative consciousness or unconsciousness. Again reverting to Taruvakagam, Sri Bhagavan said, All the four foremost saints have given out their experiences in the very first stanza. 1. Undifferentiated worship. 2. Never failing remembrance. 3. Unrisen thought. 4. The ego is not, the self is. All mean the same. Disciple, but this truth is not realized. Answer, it will be realized in due course. Till then there is devotion bhakti. Even for a trice you do not leave my mind. Does he leave you any moment? It is you who allow your mind to wander away. He remains always steady. When your mind is fixed you say. He does not leave my mind even for a trice. How ridiculous! 27th, December, 1936, Talk 3, 107. Mr. Shimana from Isor asked Sri Bhagavan. Kindly explain Aham Svirana the light of I. I. Answer, I is not known in sleep. On waking I is perceived associated with the body, the world and non-self in general. Thus associated I is Aham Vridi. When Aham represents the self only, it is Aham Sphirana. This is natural to the Jani and is itself called Jana by Janis or Bhakti by Bhaktas. Though ever present, including in sleep, it is not perceived. It cannot be known in sleep all at once. It must first be realized in the waking state, for it is our true nature underlying all the three states. This must be made only in the Jagrat state and the self realized here and now. It will afterwards be understood and realized to be continuous self, uninterrupted by Jagrat Svapnan Sashapti. Thus it is Akhanda Karavriti unbroken experience. 
Ridi is used for lack of a better expression. It should not be understood to be literally vritti. In that case, vritti will resemble an ocean-like river which is absurd. Vritti is of short duration, it is qualified, directed consciousness or absolute consciousness broken up by cognition of thoughts, senses, etc. Vritti is the function of the mind, whereas the continuous consciousness transcends the mind. This is the natural, primal state of the jhani or the liberated being. That is unbroken experience. It asserts itself when relative consciousness subsides. I'm vritti, I thought is broken, I am svirana, the light of I, I, is unbroken continuous. After the thoughts subside, the light shines forth. 31st December, 1936 Talk 3, 108 A question was asked regarding untouchability. Freeback event said, The non-self is untouchable. The social untouchability is man-made, whereas the other untouchability is natural and divine. Disciple, should the untouchables be allowed into our temples? Answer, there are others to decide it. The question was asked regarding the avatars of Vishnu. Answer, let us know our own avatara, the knowledge of the other avataras will follow. Again there was a question on Isfera. Answer, existence of Isfera follows from our conception of Isfera. Let us first know whose concept he is. Concept will be only according to the one who conceives. Find out who you are and the other problem will solve itself. 1st January, L9, 137 Talk 3, 109 Disciple, what is the difference between I am Brahmas me I am Brahman and Brahmavaham, only Brahman I am? Answer, the former is Pratyaksha Vridi direct experience, whereas the latter is Paraksha, Jhana indirect knowledge. First begins with the realization of Aham I, whereas the later starts with the hearsay Brahman which cannot be apart from the self, if the same has been realized. Talk 3, 110 Mr. Greenlees After leaving this asramam in October, I was aware of Bhagavan's peace enfolding me for about ten days. All the time while busy in work there was an undercurrent of that peace of unity, it was almost like the dual consciousness while half asleep in a dull lecture. Then it faded out entirely, and the old stupidities came in instead. Work leaves no time for separate meditation. Is the constant reminder I am, trying to feel it while actually at work enough? Answer, it will become constant when the mind becomes strengthened. Repeated practice strengthens the mind, and such mind is capable of holding on to the current. In that case, engagement in work or no engagement, the current remains unaffected and uninterrupted. Disciple, no separate meditation is necessary. Answer, meditation is your true nature now. You call it meditation, because there are other thoughts distracting you. When these thoughts are dispelled, you remain alone, in other words, in the state of meditation free from thoughts, and that is your real nature, which you are now attempting to gain by keeping away other thoughts. Such keeping away of other thoughts is now called meditation. When the practice becomes firm, the real nature shows itself as the true meditation. Other thoughts arise more forcibly when you attempt meditation. There was immediately a chorus of questions by a few others. Vimaharshi continued, Yes, all kinds of thoughts arise in meditation. It is but right. What lies hidden in you is brought out. Unless they rise up how can they be destroyed? They therefore rise up spontaneously in order to be extinguished in due course, thus to strengthen the mind. A visitor, all are said to be Brahman. Answer. Yes they are. But so long as you think that they are part, they are to be avoided. If on the other hand, they are found to be self there is no need to say all. For all that exists is only Brahman. 
there's nothing besides Brahman. Disciple, Ribhu Gita, speaks of so many objects as unreal, adding at the end that they are all Brahman and thus real. Answer, yes. When you see them as so many they are sat in other words, unreal. Whereas when you see them as Brahman they are real, deriving their reality from their substratum Brahman. Disciple, why then does Upaid Sasara speak of the body, etc., as Jada, in other words, and sentient? Answer. Inasmuch as you say that they are body, etc., apart from the self. But when the self is found, this body, etc., are also found to be in it. Afterwards, no one will ask the question, and no one will say that they are insentient. Disciple. Viveka is said to be discrimination between the self and the non-self. What is the non-self? Answer. There is no non-self in fact. The non-self also exists in the self. It is the self which speaks of the non-self because it has forgotten itself. Having lost hold of itself, it conceives something as non-self, which is after all nothing but itself. Then the discussion between the protagonists' various theories became warm. 2nd January 1937 Talk 3, 111 The I which rises will also subside. That is the individual I or the I concept. That which does not rise will not subside. It is and will be forever. That is the universal I, the perfect I, or realization of the self. At 5 p.m. the Swiss lady complains to Sri Bhagavan that she gets a headache if meditation be prolonged for some time. Answer. If the meditator and meditation be understood to be the same there will be no headache or similar complaints. Disciple, but they are different. How shall we consider them to be the same? Answer. That is due to your outlook. There is only one and there are no differences. On meditation the relative consciousness will vanish. That is not annihilation, for absolute consciousness arises. The Bible itself says, the kingdom of heaven is within you. If you consider yourself to be the body there is some difficulty in understanding the statement. On the other hand if you know who you really are, the kingdom of heaven and all are included in your true self. Their concepts arising after the ego has arisen. Direct your look within and make it absolute. With that absolute awareness realized, look without and you will realize the universe to be not apart from the realized absolute. Because your outlook is externally directed you speak of a without. In that state, you are advised to look within. This within is relative to the without you are seeking. In fact, the self is neither without nor within. Speaking of heaven, one thinks of it as above or below, within or without, since one is accustomed to relative knowledge. One seeks only objective knowledge and hence these ideas. Really speaking, there is neither up nor down, neither in nor out. If they were real they must be present in dreamless sleep also. For what is real must be continuous and permanent. Did you feel in or out in sleep? Of course not. Disciple, I do not remember. Answer, if there was anything there that could be remembered. But you admit your existence then. The same self is now speaking. The self who was undifferentiated in sleep is differentiated in the present state, and sees the diversity. The real existence is the only one devoid of objective knowledge. That is absolute consciousness. That is the state of happiness, as admitted by all of us. That state must be brought about even in this waking state. It is called Jagrat Sashapti. That is Mukti. Disciple. The ego is the one which reincarnates. Answer, yes. But what is reincarnation? The ego remains the same. New bodies appear and hold it. The ego does not change. It does not leave one body seek and find another. To see what happens even to your gross body. 
Suppose you go to London. How do you do it? You take a conveyance, go to the docks, board the steamer, and reach London in a few days. What has happened? The conveyances had moved, but not your body. Though you say that you traveled from one part of the globe to the other part, the movements of the conveyances have been superimposed on your body. Similarly, also with your ego, the reincarnations are superimpositions. For example, what happens in a dream? Do you go to the dream world, or does it occur in you? Truly, the latter. Just the same with incarnations. The ego remains changeless all along. Again, there is no time and space in your sleep. There are concepts which arise after the I thought has arisen. For the rise of the I thought, the concepts are absent. Therefore, you are beyond time and space. The I thought is only limited I. The real I is unlimited, universal, beyond time and space. They are absent in sleep. Just on rising up from sleep and before seeing the objective world, there is a state of awareness which is your pure self. That must be known, disciple. But I do not realize it. Answer: It is not an object to be realized. You are that. Who is there to realize and what? Talk three, hundred twelve. Mr. Kolkar of Pune. It is said, know thyself or see who the I in you is. What is the way to do it? Is it by simply repeating the mantra mechanically all along, or have you to do it, remembering every moment why you are repeating the mantra? Answer: You are always repeating the mantra automatically. If you are not aware of the ajapa, unspoken chant which is eternally going on, you should take to japa. Japa is made with an effort. The effort is meant to ward off other thoughts. Then the japa becomes mental and internal. Finally, its a japa and eternal nature will be realized, where it will be found to be going on even without your effort. The effortless state is the state of realization. Mr. Kolkar again requested instructions from a practical point of view, in other words, suitable to himself. Answer: It is not external and therefore need not be sought elsewhere. It is internal and also eternal. It is always realized. But Yao Zi, you are not aware. It requires constant attention to itself. No other effort is necessary. Your effort is only meant not to allow yourself to be distracted by other thoughts. The person was satisfied. Talk three, hundred thirteen. Mr. Greenlees. Bhagavan said yesterday that while one is engaged in search for God within, outer work would go on automatically. In the life of Sri Chaitanya, it is explained that while he sought Krishna, the Self, during his lectures to students, he forgot where his body was and went on talking of Krishna. This rouses doubt whether work can safely be left to itself. Should one keep part attention on the physical work? Answer: The Self is all. Now I ask you: Are you apart from the self? Can the work go on apart from the self, or is the body apart from the self? None of them could be apart from the self. The self is universal. Though all the actions will go on whether you engage in them voluntarily or not, the work will go on automatically. Attending to the self includes attending to the work. Disciple. The work may suffer if I do not attend to it. Answer: Because you identify yourself with the body, you consider that the work is done by you. But the body and its activities, including the work, are not apart from the self. What does it matter whether you attend to the work or not? Suppose you walk from one place to another place. You do not attend every single step that you take. After a time, however, you find yourself at your destination. You notice how the work, in other words, walking, goes on without your attention to it. Similarly, it is with other kinds of work. Disciple, then it is like sleepwalking. Answer: Quite so. 
When a child is fast asleep, his mother feeds him in sleep. The child eats the food quite as well as when well awake. But the next morning he says to the mother, Mother, I did not take food last night. The mother and others know that he did. But he says that he did not. He was not aware and yet the action had gone on. Somnambulism is indeed a good analogy for this kind of work. Take another example. A passenger in a cart has fallen asleep. The bulls move or stand still or are unyoked on the journey. He does not know these occurrences, but finds himself in a different place after he wakes up. He has been blissfully ignorant of the occurrences on the way, but his journey has been finished. Similarly with the self of the person. He is asleep in the body. His waking state is the movement of the bulls, his samadhi is their standing still because samadhi equals jagrat sushepti in other words to say, he is aware of but not attached to actions. So the bulls are in harness, but do not move. His sleep is the unyoking of the bulls, for there is complete suspension of activities corresponding to the release of the bulls from the yoke. Still another example. Scenes are projected on the screen in a cinema show. But the moving pictures do not affect or alter the screen. The seer pays attention to the pictures and ignores the screen. They cannot remain apart from the screen. Still its existence is ignored. Though also the self is the screen on which the pictures, namely activities, are going on. The man is aware of the latter ignoring the former. All the same he is not apart from the self. Whether aware or unaware the actions will continue. Disciple, there is an operator in the cinema. Answer, the cinema show is made out of insentient materials. The screen, the pictures, lamp, etc. are insentient and require an operator, a sentient agent. In the case of the self, it is consciousness itself and therefore self-contained. There cannot be an operator apart. Disciple protested that he did not confuse the body with the operator as the above answer would imply. Answer. The functions of the body were kept in mind involving the need for the operator. Because there is the body a jata object, an operator, a sentient agent is necessary. Because people think that they are jivas, Sri Krishna has said that God resides in the heart as the operator of the jivas. In fact there are no jivas and no operator. The self comprises all. It is the screen, the pictures, the seer, the actor, the operator, the light and all else. You're confounding it with the body and imagining yourself as the actor amounts to the seer being represented as an actor in a cinema picture. Imagine the actor in the picture asking if he could enact a scene without the screen. Such is the case of the man who thinks of his acting apart from the self. Disciple, it is like asking the spectator to act in the cinema picture. Thumnambulism seems to be desirable. Answer, there is the belief that the crow rolls only one iris into either eye to see any object. It has only one iris but two eye sockets. Its sight is manipulated according to its desire. Or again the elephant has one trunk with which it breathes and does work such as drinking water etc. Again serpents are said to use the same apparatus for either seeing or hearing. Similarly the actions and states are according to one's point of view. Sleep waking or waking sleep or dreaming sleep or dreaming wakefulness are about the same. Disciple we have to deal with a physical body in a physical waking world. If we sleep while work is done or work when sleep overtakes us, the work will go wrong. Answer, sleep is not ignorance, it is your pure state. Wakefulness is not knowledge, it is ignorance. There is full awareness in sleep, there is total ignorance in waking. Your real nature covers both and extends beyond. The self is beyond knowledge and ignorance. Sleep, dream and waking are only modes passing before the self. 
they proceed whether you are aware or not. That is the state of the jhani in whom pass the states of waking, samadhi, deep sleep and dream, like the bulls moving, standing or being unyoked when the passenger is asleep as aforesaid. These questions are from the point of view of the ajani, otherwise these questions do not arise. Disciple, of course they cannot arise for the self. Who would be there to ask? But unfortunately I have not yet realized the self. Answer, that is just the obstacle in your way. You must get rid of the idea that you are an ajani yet to realize the self. You are the self. Was there ever a time when you were apart from the self? Disciple, so it is an experiment in somnambulism or in daydreaming. Begavan laughed. 3rd January 1937 Drops of Nectar Talk 3 114 In yesterday's answers, Sri Bhagavan said that the self is pure consciousness in deep slumber, and he also indicated the self of the transition from sleep to the waking state as the ideal for realization. He was requested to explain the same. Sri Bhagavan graciously answered, The self is pure consciousness in sleep, it evolves as Aham, I without the item this in the transition stage, and manifests as Aham, I in item this in the waking state. The individual's experience is by means of Aham I only. Though he must aim at realization in the way indicated in other words, by means of the transitional I. Otherwise the sleep experience does not matter to him. If the transitional I be realized the substratum is found, and that leads to the goal. Again, sleep is said to be a jhana ignorance. That is only in relation to the wrong jhana knowledge prevalent in the wakeful state. The waking state is really a jhana ignorance and the sleep state is prajana full knowledge. Prajana is Brahman, says the Asruti. Brahman is eternal. The sleep experiencer is called prajna. He is prajanam in all the three states. His particular significance in the sleep state is that he is full of knowledge prajanagana. What is gana? There are jhana and vijana. Both together operate in all perceptions. Jhana and the jagrat is viparita jhana wrong knowledge in other words, a jhana ignorance. It always coexists with the individual. When this becomes vispash, to jhana clear knowledge it is brahman. When wrong knowledge is totally absent, as in sleep, he remains pure prajana only. That is prajanagana. Adarya Upanishad says prajana, vijana, ajana, samjana are all names of Brahman. Being made up of knowledge alone, how is he to be experienced? Experience is always with vijana. Therefore the pure eye of the transitional stage must be held for the experience of the prajanagana. The eye of the waking state is impure and is not useful for such experience. Hence the use of the transitional eye or the pure eye. How is this pure eye to be realized? Viveka Chudamana says, Vijana Kos Vilasatyajas Ram he is always shining forth in the intellectual sheath, Vijana Kosa. Tripura Rahasya and other works point out that the interval between two consecutive Sankalpa's ideas or thoughts represent the pure Aham I. Therefore holding on to the pure I, one should have the Prajanagana for aim, and there is the Vridi present in the attempt. All these have their proper and respective places and at the same time lead to realization. Again the pure self has been described in Viveka Chudamani to be beyond a sat, in other words, different from a sat. Here a sat is the contaminated waking eye. Sad vilakshana means sat, in other words, the self of sleep. He's also described as different from sat and sat. Both mean the same. He's also a sesha sakshi all-seeing witness. If pure, how is he to be experienced by means of the impure eye? A man says I slept happily. Happiness was his experience. If not, how could he speak of what he had not experienced? 
How did he experience happiness in sleep if the self was pure? Who is it that speaks of that experience now? The speaker is the Vijjanatma ignorant self and he speaks of Prajanatma pure self. How can that hold? Was this Vijjanatma present in sleep? His present statement of the experience of happiness in sleep makes one infer his existence in sleep. How then did he remain? Truly not as in the waking state. He was there very subtle. Exceedingly subtle Vijjanatma experiences the happy Prajanatma by means of Maya mode. It is like the rays of the moon seen below the branches, twigs and leaves of a tree. The subtle Vijjanatma seems apparently a stranger to the obvious Vijjanatma of the present moment. Why should we infer his existence in sleep? Should we not deny the experience of happiness and be done with this inference? No. The fact of the experience of happiness cannot be denied, for everyone courts sleep and prepares a nice bed for the enjoyment of sound sleep. This brings us to the conclusion that the cognizer, cognition and the cognized are present in all the three states, though there are differences in their subtleties. In the transitional state, the aham, I is set up pure because it and this is suppressed. Aham, I predominates. Why is not that pure I realize now or even remembered by us? Because of want of acquaintance parachea with it. It can be recognized only if it is consciously attained. Therefore make the effort and gain consciously. Talk 3. 115. One of the attendants asked. Sri Bhagavan has said. Reality and myth are both the same. How is it so? Answer, the tantrics and others of the kind condemn Sri Sankara's philosophy as Mayavada without understanding him aright. What does he say? He says. 1. Brahman is real. 2. The universe is a myth. 3. Brahman is the universe. He does not stop at the second statement but continues to supplement it with the third. What does it signify? The universe is conceived to be apart from Brahman and that perception is wrong. The antagonists point to his illustration of Rajusarpa rope snake. This is unconditioned superimposition. After the truth of the rope is known, the illusion of snake is removed once for all. And you should take the condition superimposition also into consideration, for example, Marumarichika or Emrigatrishna water of mirage. The mirage does not disappear even after knowing it to be a mirage. The vision is there but the man does not run to it for water. Tri Sankara must be understood in the light of both the illustrations. The world is a myth. Even after knowing it, it continues to appear. It must be known to be Brahman and not a part. If the world appears, yet to whom does it appear, he asks. What is your reply? You must say the self. If not, will the world appear in the absence of the cognizing self? Therefore, the self is the reality. That is his conclusion. The phenomena are real as the self and are myths apart from the self. Now what do the tantrics etc. say? They say that the phenomena are real because they are part of the reality in which they appear. Are not these two statements the same? That is what I meant by reality and falsehood being one and the same. The antagonists continue. With a conditioned as well as the unconditioned illusions considered, the phenomenon of water and mirage is purely illusory because that water cannot be used for any purpose. Whereas the phenomenon of the world is different, for it is purposeful. How then does the latter stand on a par with the former? A phenomenon cannot be a reality simply because it serves a purpose or purposes. Take a dream for example. The dream creations are purposeful, they serve the dream purpose. The dream water quenches dream thirst. The dream creation is however contradicted in the waking state. 
the waking creation is contradicted in the other two states. What is not continuous cannot be real. If real, the thing must ever be real, and not real for a short time and unreal at other times. Though it is with magical creations, they appear real and are yet illusory. Similarly, the universe cannot be real of itself, that is to say, apart from the underlying reality. Talk 3, 116. There is fire on the screen in a cinema show. Does it burn the screen? There is a cascade of water. Does it wet the screen? There are tools. Do they damage the screen? That is why it is said at Chedioyam, Adehioyam, Akladioyam, etc. Fire, water, etc. are phenomena on the screen of Brahman in other words, the self, and they do not affect it. 6th, January, 1937, Talk 3, 117. Mr. Park, I. Many visitors here tell me that they get visions or thought currents from you. I am here for the last month and a half and still I have not the slightest experience of any kind. Is it because I am unworthy of your grace? If so, I feel it disgraceful that I being Vesishtaculate, Panna of the lineage of Vesish, to should not have your grace, while far off foreigners should have it. Will you kindly suggest some Prayaskita method of expiation for removing this disgrace? Answer. Visions and thought currents are had according to the state of mind. It depends on the individuals and not upon the universal presence. Moreover, they are immaterial. What matters is peace of mind. Disciple, peace of mind is the result of trance. How is trance got? Answer, trance is only absence of thoughts. That state prevails in sleep. Do you have enduring peace of mind on that account? Disciple, it is said in the journal maintained in the Asramam that trance is necessary. Answer, trance is not something apart to be got anew. Your natural state is that of trance. Disciple, but I do not feel it. Answer, the fact of your contrary belief is the obstruction. Disciple, since I have not realized the self I say that I do not understand my permanent state of trance. Answer, this is only a repetition. That is the obstruction. This arises because you think that the non-self is you. That is the mistake. Do not take the non-self to be the self. Then the self will be evident to you. Disciple, I understand it theoretically but not practically. Answer, there are no two selves, for the self to speak of the non-realization of the self. Disciple, it is still theoretical to me. How shall I get the trance? Answer, trance is only temporary in its effects. There is happiness so long as it lasts. After rising from it, the old Vasanas return. Unless the Vasanas are destroyed in Sahaja Samadhi effortless Samadhi, there is no good of trance. Disciple, but trance must precede Sahaja Samadhi. Answer. Trance is the natural state. Although there are activities and phenomena, yet they do not affect the trance. If they are realized to be not apart from the self, the self is realized. Where is the use of trance? unless it brings about enduring peace of mind. Know that even now you are in trance whatever happens. That is all. Disciple, but how shall I do it? A scholar remarked. Yadovacho nevartante aprepia manasa saha where words fail to reach, along with the mind. The questioner retorted. It is also said manaseva apteviam to be realized with the mind only. Answer, yes. The pure mind, in other words, the mind free from thoughts is the self. Pure mind is beyond the impure mind. Disciple, seen with the subtlest of subtle intellect by subtle seers. Answer, what was said of mind applies to this also. Disciple, if trance be my natural state, 
Why is it said that trance is necessary to be got before realization? Answer, that means that one should be aware of his eternal state of trance. Inattentiveness to it is ignorance. Pramato vi, amartaya, inattention is death itself. Disciple, how can I be attentive without getting trance beforehand? Answer, very well. If you are so anxious for trance any narcotic will bring it about. Drug habit will be the result and not liberation. There are vasanas in the latent state even in trance. The vasanas must be destroyed. Another devotee. Can there be self-realization before the vasanas are entirely destroyed? Answer, there are two kinds of asanas. 1. Bandhaheta, causing bondage for the ignorant, and 2. Bogaheta, giving enjoyment for the wise. The latter do not obstruct realization. Disciple, are the self-realized persons reborn? For example, Vamedva, Jatabharata, etc. Answer, the realized ones cannot be reborn. Rebirth is due to the sanas which are binding. But they are destroyed in the state of self-realization. Disciple, are we to take it that they had gone to the stage of Kovola Nirvikalpa but not to Sahaja Nirvikalpa? Answer, yes. Disciple, if only the sanas for enjoyment do not obstruct the state of realization, and if one can look upon the events of the world without his state of bliss being disturbed, it means that attachment alone is bondage. Am I right? Answer, yes quite. Attachment is bondage. Attachment disappears with the elimination of the ego. Disciple, realization is said to be helped by Guru's grace. Answer, Guru is none other than the self. Disciple, Krishna had Sandapini for his Guru and so Rama had Vasishta. Answer, Guru is said to be external for the seeker. The intern of the mind is brought about by the Guru. Since the seeker is outward bent he is advised to learn from a Guru whom he will in due course find to be the self. Disciple, may I have Guru's grace? Answer, grace is always there. Disciple, but I did not feel the same. Answer, surrender will make one understand the grace. Disciple, I have surrendered heart and soul. I am the best judge of my heart. Still, I do not feel the grace. Answer, if you had surrendered the questions would not arise. Disciple, I have surrendered. Till the questions arise. Answer. Grace is constant. Your judgment is the variable. Where else should the fault lie? Disciple, I must be enabled to surrender myself. Answer. They, Yemenavar has said. Glory to thee for enabling me to discuss so much and follow thy words so far. 7th, January 1937 Talk 3 118. Hindi gentleman asked how the fear of death could be got over. Answer, find out if you were born before you think of death. Only he who was born could die. You are as good as dead even in sleep. What fear is there of death? Disciple, how are we in sleep? Answer, ask the question in sleep. You recall the experience of sleep only when you are awake. You recall that state by saying I slept happily. Disciple, what is the instrument by which we experience that state? Answer, we call it Mayakarana, as opposed to the Antakarana to which we are accustomed in our other states. The same instruments are called differently in the different states, even as the Anandatman of sleep is termed the Vijanatman of the wakeful state. Disciple, please furnish me with an illustration for the Mayakarana experiencing the Ananda. Answer, how can you say I slept happily? The experience is there to prove your happiness. There cannot be the remembrance in the wakeful state in the absence of the experience in the sleep state. Disciple, agreed. But please give me an illustration. Answer, 
How can it be described? If you dive into water for recovering an article you speak of its recovery only after rising out of the water. You do not say anything while remaining sunk in water. Disciple, I do not have fear and sleep whereas I have it now. Answer, because dwiti advi bayam bhavati, fear is always of a second one. Of what are you afraid? Disciple, by reason of the perception of the body, the senses, the world, isfera, doership, enjoyment, etc. Answer, why do you see them if they cause fear? Disciple, because they are inescapable. Answer, but it is you who sees them. For whom is the fear? Is it for them? Disciple, no, it is for me. Answer, because you see them you fear them. Do not see them and there will be no fear. Disciple, what then should I do in the waking state? Answer, be the self there will be no second thing to cause you fear. Disciple, yes. Now I understand. If I see myself, then the sight is warded off the non-self and there is happiness. Yet there is the fear of death. Answer, only the one who is born should die. See if you have been born at all in order that death should threaten you. Talk 3, 119 Mr. Sridhar, a Hindu from Goa asked, What is Kusalam skill in yoga? Karmasu Kusalam yoga is skill in action. How is that gained? Answer, do actions without caring for the result. Do not think that you are the doer. Dedicate the work to God. That is the skill and also the way to gain it. Disciple, Samut Fam Yoga Uchit Equanimity is Yoga. What is that equanimity? Answer, it is unity in diversity. The universe is now seen to be diverse. See the common factor Samut in all the objects. When that is done equality in the pairs of opposites dwend, one naturally follows. It is the latter which is however spoken of as equanimity ordinarily. Disciple, how is the common factor to be perceived in the diversity? Answer, the seer is only one. They do not appear without the seer. There is no change in the seer, however much the others may change. Yoga karmasu kuzalam equals skill and work is yoga, samatfam yoga, achit equals equanimity is yoga, mam kam saranam vrajat equals only surrender to me, akam vadvatim equals only one without a second, representing karma, yoga, bhakti and jhana convey the same meaning. They are only the single truth presented in different aspects. Mr. Ekanatha Rao is grace necessary for it? Answer, yes. Disciple, how to gain divine grace? Answer, by surrender. Disciple, still I do not feel grace. Answer, sincerity is wanting. Surrender should not be verbal nor conditional. Passages from St. Justinian were read out to illustrate these statements. Prayer is not verbal. It is from the heart. To merge into the heart is prayer. That is also grace. The Alwar says, I was all along seeking thee. But on realizing the self, I find you are the self. The self is my all, and so you are my all. Disciple, impurities of limitation, Ignorance and desire anava, mayaka and kamiya place obstacles in the way of meditation. How to conquer them? Answer, not to be swayed by them. Disciple, grace is necessary. Answer, yes, grace is both the beginning and the end. Introversion is due to grace. Perseverance is grace and realization is grace. That is the reason for the statement. Mame kam saranam vraja, only surrender to me. If one has entirely surrendered oneself, is there any part left to ask for grace? He is swallowed up by grace. Disciple, 
The obstacles are powerful and obstruct meditation. Answer. If a higher power is recognized and surrendered to, how will they obstruct you? If you say they are powerful, the source of their power must be held so that they do not obstruct you. Talk 3, 120. In the course of an informal conversation Sri Bhagavan pointed out that self-realization is possible only for the fit. The Vasanas must be eliminated before jhana dawns. One must be like Danaka for jhana to dawn. One must be ready to sacrifice everything for the truth. Complete renunciation is the index of fitness. Talk 3, 121 Disciple Miseries appear in Jagrat. Why should they appear? Answer. If you see yourself they will not appear. Disciple. If I turn to look who I am I do not find anything. Answer. How did you remain in your sleep? There was no I thought there and you were happy. Whereas there are thoughts flowering in the wake of the root thought, I in the Jagrat, and these hide the inherent happiness. Get rid of these thoughts, which are the obstacles to happiness. Your natural state is one of happiness as was evident in your sleep. Disciple, I do not know anything of my sleep experience. Answer, but you know that it was happiness. Otherwise you would not be saying I slept happily. When there is no thought, no I, and nothing in fact except yourself, you are happy. That is the whole truth. This is exactly what is conveyed by the Mahavakya Tattva Masi you are that. Find yourself, and then that is known. Disciple, how is that Brahman? Answer, why do you want to know of Brahman apart from yourself? The scripture says you are that. The self is intimate to you, and you cannot indeed be without the self. Realize it. That is the realization of Brahman also. Disciple, but I am unable to do it. I am too weak to realize myself. Answer, in that case surrender yourself unreservedly and the higher power will reveal itself. Disciple, what is unconditional surrender? Answer, if one surrenders oneself there will be no one to ask questions or to be thought of. Either the thoughts are eliminated by holding on to the root thought I or one surrenders oneself unconditionally to the higher power. These are the only two ways for realization. Talk 3, 122 A cultured lady, daughter of a well-known solicitor of Madras asked, What should one do in order to remain free from thoughts as advised by you? Is it only the inquiry, who am I? Answer only to remain still. Do it and see. Disciple, it is impossible. Answer, exactly. For the same reason the inquiry, who am I, is advised. Disciple, raising the question, no response comes from within. Answer, what kind of response do you expect? Are you not there? What more? Disciple, Thoughts rise up more and more. Answer, then and there raise the same question, Who am I? Disciple, should I do so as each thought arises? Well, is the world our thought only? Answer, leave this question to the world. Let it ask, How did I come into being? Disciple, do you mean that it is not related to me? Answer, nothing is perceived in deep sleep, all these are seen only after waking, only after thoughts arise the world comes into being, what can it be but thought? Another visitor asked, what should we do to make the mind still? Answer, first let the mind be caught hold of and brought here, then we shall consider ways and means of stilling it. Disciple, I meant to say that it is always changing even when we do our japa. Answer, japa is meant only for stilling the mind. Disciple, what japa is good for it? Answer, anything suitable such as Gayatri. Disciple, will Gayatri do? Answer, can anything excel it? Only those who cannot do it look for others. 
contains the whole range of truth in it. Chanting Japa will lead to Dhyana meditation and it is the means for realizing the self. Disciple will half an hour a day do for it. Answer, it must be done always or as long as you can. Talk 3, 123 while explaining stanza 6 in Arunachala Ashtaka, Sri Bhagavan observed as follows. The final word in the previous stanza asks, Is there one? The initial words in the present stanza answer, Yes there is the one. It proceeds, though it is the only one, yet by its wonderful power it gets reflected on the tiny dot i the ego otherwise known as ignorance or the aggregate of latent tendencies, this reflected light is relative knowledge. This according to one's prarab to past karma now fructifying, manifests the inner latent tendencies as the outer gross world, and withdraws the gross external world as the subtle internal tendencies, such power is called mind in the subtle plane and brain in the physical plane. This mind or brain acts as the magnifier to that eternal one being and shows it forth as the expanded universe. In the waking and dream states the mind is outward bent, and in sleep it is inward bent, with the mind as the medium, the one supreme being seems diversified in the waking and dream states and remains withdrawn in the sleep state, or swoon, etc. Therefore you are only that and cannot be otherwise. Whatever the changes, the same one being remains as yourself, there is nothing besides yourself. The previous stanza says, Once exposed to sunlight, a sensitive plate cannot take on images. Similarly, the mind the sensitive plate, after exposure in your light, cannot reflect the world anymore. Moreover, the sun is of you only. Should his rays be so powerful as to prevent images being formed, how much more so should your light be? It is thus said that there is nothing apart from the one being yourself. In the present stanza, the tiny dot equals the ego, the tiny dot made up of darkness equals the ego consisting of latent tendencies, the seer with the subject or the ego rising, it expands itself as the scene, the object or the antakaranas, the inner organs. The light must be dim in order to enable the ego to rise up. In broad daylight, a rope does not look like a snake. The rope itself cannot be seen in thick darkness, so there is no chance of mistaking it for a snake. Only in dim light, in the dusk, in light darkened by shadows or in darkness lighted by dim light does the mistake occur of a rope seeming a snake. Similarly it is for the pure radiant being to rise up as the ego, it is possible only in its light diffused through darkness. This darkness is otherwise known as the original ignorance original sin. The light passing through, it is called reflected light. The reflected light on its own merits is commonly known as the pure mind or isfera or God. Isvara is well known to be unified with Maya, in other words the reflected light is Isvara. The other name, pure mind, implies impure mind also. It is the Rajasic or active mind or the ego, this too can be projected from the former sattvic mind through another reflection only, thus the ego is the product of the second darkness avidya, then comes the tamasic or the dull mind in the shape of antakaranas, the inner organs, this appears as the world. From the standpoint of the gross body, it may be said to shine forth externally as the world by means of the brain. But the gross body is of the mind only. The mind may be said to consist of four inner organs, or the principle composed of thoughts, or the sixth sense, or combining intellect with the ego, and chitta with the mind, in other words memory faculty with the thinking faculty, it may be taken to consist of two parts the ego and the mind. In the latter case the vijanatma, the intellectual self or the ego or the seer forms the subject, and the mental sheet or the scene, the object. The waking, dream and sleep states have their origin in the original darkness mula avidya. 
with the mind outgoing and deriving experiences from its modes in the waking and dream states and in drawn in sleep, experiencing with modes of Maya, a unique power regulates all activities of the individuals and of the universe. All these are only phenomena passing through the reflected light on the substratum of the self-radiant being. Just as a rope snake cannot be seen in broad daylight, nor rope itself in thick darkness, so also the world appears neither in the samedi state of self-shining pure being or in deep sleep swoon, etc. Only in reflected light light mixed with darkness or knowledge soiled by ignorance can the world, not independent of its source, seem to rise up, flourish and be resolved. Its diversity too cannot be exclusive of the reality, the original source. Here a play is going on in which the one single being becomes manifold as objectified, and then withdrawn. There must be a sakti power to do it, and wonderful too. It cannot also be independent of her origin. In the self-shining pure being this sakti cannot be seen. Nevertheless, her actions are only too well known. How sublime! From her sublime original activity, in other words, power vibrating saffa filled reflection results from it the rajasic ego, then tamasic thought forms which are commonly known as knowledge, or the light corresponding to the magnifying lens. Just as the artificial light is projected through a lens onto the screen, so also the reflected light passes through thought the magnifier before expanding as the world beyond it. Furthermore thought, itself the world in seed form, seems to be the wide external world. Such is the extraordinary power. In this way as Farah, individual and the world are only of the reflected light, having the self-shining single being for the substratum. Now, what is this I thought the ego? Is it the subject or the object in the scheme of things? Inasmuch as it witnesses all other objects in the waking and dream states, or at any rate we think that it does so, it must be considered to be the subject. Unrealizing the pure self, however, it will be an object only. Whose is this I thought the ego? This investigation forms the vichara. A thought and this thought are both emanations from the same light. They are related to Rajaguna and Tamaguna respectively. In order to have the reflected light pure sava, free from rajas and tamas, it must shine forth as I I, unbroken by this thought. This pure state momentarily intervenes between sleep and waking. It prolonged, it is cosmic consciousness, or even isfara. This is the only passage to the realization of the self-shining supreme being. Again there are two kinds of experiences in deep sleep as recollected after waking, that is, I slept happily, unaware of anything. Happiness and ignorance are the experiences. Thus we see the power modified as one, Avarana darkness and two, Vikshepa diversity. The mind is the result of Vikshepa. 10th January, 1937 Some Reminiscences Talk 3 124. 1. While in Skandasramam Sri Bhagavan saw a white toad, small and long at a distance of about ten feet from him. Sri Bhagavan stared at it and it stared at him. Suddenly, it took a long jump and lodged itself precisely on one of the eyes of Sri Bhagavan who quickly closed it and so it was not injured. 2. There were two peacocks which used to strut with their feathers spread out like a spangled fan. A cobra too used to take part in the pastime and raised its hood and moved about in their midst. 3. Sri Bhagavan says that the peacock, as soon as it sights a green lizard, goes straight to it and meekly places its neck down before the lizard which bites it off and kills the peacock. 4. Rangaswami Iyengar was once out on the hill. A leopard was nearby. He threw a stone. He turned towards him. He hurried away for his life. Sri Bhagavan met him on the way and asked what the matter was. Inger simply said leopard as he was running. 
Three bag of N went where the beast was and it moved away soon after. All this happened at the time of the plague. Leopards used to roam freely by the side of the temple, sometimes in twos and threes. I've, Sri Bhagavan said, a frog is often compared to a yogi. It remains quiet for a long time, the only sign of life being the rhythmic movement of the under skin below the neck. Again frogs can remain for extraordinary long periods with their animation suspended. They are said to swallow their tongues. Following the tongue is a yogic practice. The animation is suspended. The yogi does not die, but the tongue must be drawn out by someone else before life activity is resumed. It is a wonder how the frog brings out the already swallowed tongue and resumes activity. 11th January, 1937 6, while reading Raghuviran, Ramayana written in easy Malayalam prose, there was a passage relating how Hanuman reached Lanka mentally before he crossed over physically to that island. Tri Bhagavan emphasized the point that the mental approach accomplishes the purpose earlier than physical action. 7. Sri Bhagavan related the following funny anecdote. Ajithakshan, a great Malay, Ali's saint and author, had a few fish concealed in him when he entered the temple. The enemy reported it to the worshippers in the temple. The man was searched and taken to the king. The king asked him, Why did you take the fish into the temple? He replied, It is not my fault. I had it concealed in my clothes. The others exposed the fish in the temple. The fault lies in exposure. Excreta within the body are not considered filthy, but when excreted, they are considered filthy. Though also with this. 12th, January, 1937, Talk 3, 125. Mr. Rama Sastri from Gunter District composed eight slokas on Sri Bhagavan and read them out with feeling. The Sastri then prayed for guidance. I am a sem sorry unfit for John Amarga. The affairs of the world are distracting me. Please instruct me what I should do. Answer, think of Bhagavan. How will the affairs of the world distract him? You and they are in him. Disciple, may I do Namasmarana? What Nama shall I take? Answer, you are Ramasastri. Make that name significant. Be one with Rama. 13th, January 1937 Talk 3, 126 In answer to a question by a long resident attendant Sri Bhagavan said, Everybody complains of the restlessness of the mind. Let the mind be found and then they will know. True, when a man sits down to meditate thoughts rush up by dozens. The mind is only a bundle of thoughts. The attempt to push through the barrage of thoughts is unsuccessful. If one can by any means abide in the self it is good. For those who are unable to do so, chanting or meditation japa or dhyana is prescribed. It is like giving a piece of chain to an elephant to hold in its trunk. The trunk of the elephant is usually restless. It puts it out in all directions when taken out in the streets of the town. If given a chain to carry the restlessness is checked. Similarly with the restless mind. If made to engage in japa or dhyana, other thoughts are warded off and the mind concentrates on a single thought. It thus becomes peaceful. It does not mean that peace is gained without a prolonged struggle. The other thoughts must be fought out. Here is another illustration. Suppose a cow plays robe and strays into neighbor's fields to graze. She is not easily weaned from her stealthy habit. Think how she can be kept in the stall. Forcibly tethered in the stall, she simply bides her time to play the rogue. If she is tempted with fine grass in the stall she takes one mouthful on the first day and again waits for the opportunity to run away. The next day she takes two mouthfuls, so she takes more and more on each succeeding day, 
until finally she is weaned from her wicked tendencies. When entirely free from bad habits, she might be safely left free, and she would not stray into neighbor's pasture land. Even when beaten in the stall, she does not afterwards leave the place. Similarly with the mind. It is accustomed to stray outward by the force of the latent vasanas manifesting as thoughts. So long as there are vasanas contained within they must come out and exhaust themselves. The thoughts comprise the mind. Searching what the mind is, the thoughts will recoil and the seeker will know that they arise from the self. It is the aggregate of these thoughts that we call mind, if one realizes that the thoughts arise from the self and abide in their source, the mind will disappear. After the mind ceases to exist and bliss of peace has been realized, one will find it then as difficult to bring out a thought, as he now finds it difficult to keep out all thoughts. Here the mind is the cow playing the rogue, the thoughts are the neighbor's pasture, one's own primal being free from thoughts is the stall. The bliss of peace is too good to be disturbed. A man fast asleep hates to be awakened and ordered to mind his business. The bliss of sleep is too enthralling to be sacrificed to the work born of thoughts. The thought-free state is one's primal state and full of bliss. Is it not miserable to leave such a state for the thought-ridden and unhappy one? If one wants to abide in the thought-free state, a struggle is inevitable. One must fight one's way through before regaining one's original primal state. If one succeeds in the fight and reaches the goal, the enemy, namely the thoughts, will all subside in the self and disappear entirely. Thoughts are the enemy. They mount to the creation of the universe. In their absence there is neither the world nor God, the Creator. The bliss of the self is the single being only. When Prahlada was in Samadhi, Vishnu thought within himself. This Asura being in Samadhi, all the Asuras are in peace. There is no fight, no trial of strength, no search for power, nor the means for gaining power. In the absence of such means for power, yoga, yajna, etc., in other words, the gods are not thriving, there is no new creation, nor even is any existence justified. So I will wake him up, then the Asuras will rise up, their original nature will manifest itself, the gods will challenge them, the Asuras and others will then seek strength and adopt the means for its acquisition. Yajinas etc. will flourish, the gods will thrive, there will be more and more of creation, more of fight and I shall have enough to do. So Vishnu awakened Prahlada, blessing him with eternal life and Jivan Mukti. Daiva Asura fight was resumed, and the old order of things was restored so that the universe continues in its eternal nature. Disciple, how could God himself wake up the Asura element and bring about constant warfare? Is not pure goodness the nature of God? Answer, goodness is only relative. It always implies bad also, they always coexist. The one is the obverse of the other. Talk 3, 127 The audience in the hall were very attentively listening. One of them, a sincere devotee of Sri Bhagavan, was so impressed by it that he soon lost himself. He later described his experience as follows. I was long wondering where the current starts, within the body or elsewhere. Suddenly my body grew tenuous until it disappeared. The inquiry who am I went on very clearly and forcibly. Sound of I, I, I alone persisted. There was one vast expanse and nothing more. There was a hazy perception of the occurrences in the hall. I knew that people stood up to salute at the end of the Vedic chant. I wanted to stand, the thoughts soon deserted me. I was again lost in the one expanse. The experience continued until I heard the voice of Sri Bhagavan. That made me collect myself. Then I stood up and saluted. A strange feeling continued for more than half an hour. I cannot forget it. It is still haunting me. 
Sri Bhagavan listened to his words and was silent for some minutes. A few observations fell from his lips. One may seem to go out of the body, but the body itself is not more than our thought. There can be no body in the absence of thought, no outgoing or incoming in absence of body. However, owing to habit, the feeling of going out arises. A particle of hail falling on the surface of the sea melts away and becomes water, wave, froth, etc. in the sea. Similarly, the subtle intellect, rising up as the tiny dot ego from the heart and bulging out, finally enters into and becomes one with the heart. Though milk remains as wide as the sea, can you drink it with a mouth as wide as the sea? You can suck it only through the tiny capillaries of the paps. Namalvar the Vaishnavite saint has said, Only myself is you. What does it mean? Before I realized myself, I was wandering looking out for you, having now realized myself, I see that you are myself. How will this fit in with qualified monism? It must be explained thus. Pervading myself you remain as the anterior and immanent being. Thus I am a part of your body, and you are the owner of the body. Sariri having given up one's own body as not being oneself, why should one become another's God's body? If one's body is not the self other bodies also are non-self. The protagonists of qualified monism think that individuality is necessary to experience the bliss. Individuality, in other words, Ines should not be lost. Aha! The self is not the body but yourself becomes the body of God. Is it not absurd? Or if you make Prapati surrender yourself to God, you have made yourself over to him, and you are his and no longer yours. If he is in need of a body let him look out for himself. You need not say he is the owner of a body. 17th, January, 1937 Talk 3, 128 A European gentleman began in measured tones and spoke clearly and slowly. Why should individuals remain caught up in the affairs of this world and reap troubles as a result? Should they not be free? If they are in the spiritual world, they will have greater freedom. Answer. The world is only spiritual. Since you are identifying yourself with the physical body you speak of this world as being physical and the other world as spiritual. Whereas that which is, is only spiritual. Disciple. Do the disembodied souls, in other words, the spirits, have a deeper insight and enjoy greater freedom? Answer, because you identify yourself with this body, you speak of the disembodied souls as being spirits. From these limitations you talk of their limitations and seek to know their capacities. Even the disembodied souls have subtle bodies, otherwise, you would not say disembodied souls. Disembodiment means divested of this gross body. Inasmuch as you endow them with individuality, they are centered in their subtle bodies. Their limitations will be according to their own state. Just as you feel the burden of your limitations, they also feel the burden of their limitations. What I meant by spirit and spiritual world is the absolute spirit and not relative. If you realize yourself as the spirit, you will see that this world is only spiritual and not physical. Disciple, are their bodies temporary as our bodies are? Do they reincarnate? Answer, these questions arise because you think yourself the body. This body has birth and death and when this body falls another body arises which is called reincarnation. But are you the body? If you find that you are not this body but the spirit, you will be free from gross or subtle bodies, and then, there will be no limitations. Where is the world physical or spiritual in the absence of any limitations? How will the question of reincarnation arise? Again, consider it from another point of view. You create a dream body for yourself in the dream and act with that dream body. The same is falsified in the waking state. At present, you think that you are this body and not the dream body. 
in your dream this body is falsified by the dream body. So that you see neither of these bodies is real. Because each of them is true for a time and false at other times. That which is real must be real forever. You say I. This I consciousness is present all through the three states. There is no change in it. That is alone real. The three states are false. They are only for the mind. It is the mind which obstructs your vision of your true nature. Your true nature is that of infinite spirit. That was the case in your sleep. You note the limitations in the other two states. What is the difference due to? There was no mind in sleep, but it exists in the dream and the waking states. The feeling of limitation is the work of the mind. What is mind? Find it. If you search for it, it will vanish by itself. For it has no real existence. It is comprised of thoughts. It disappears with the cessation of thoughts. Disciple, do I remain then? Answer, what is your experience in sleep? There were no thoughts, no mind, and yet you remain then. Disciple, when I try to meditate, I am unable to do so because my mind wanders. What should I do? Answer, your question furnishes the answer. First with regard to the first part of the question, you say you concentrate, but do not succeed. You means the self on what do you concentrate? Where do you fail? Are there two selves for the one self to concentrate on the other? Which is the self now complaining of failure? There cannot be two selves. There is only one self. That need not concentrate. You ask, but then why is there no happiness? What is it that prevents you from remaining as the spirit which you are in sleep? You yourself admit that it is the wandering mind. Find out the mind. If its wandering stops, it will be found to be the self, your I consciousness which is spirit eternal. It is beyond knowledge and ignorance. Disciple, I am hard worked and find little time to practice concentration. Are there any aids for it? Is control of breath a good aid? Answer, prana and mind arise from the same source. The source can be reached by holding the breath or tracing the mind. You cannot do the latter, the former will no doubt be helpful. Regulation of breath is gained by watching its movements. The mind is watch thought cease. Peace results, and it is your true nature. King Nanaka said, I have now found the robber, namely the mind who has been robbing me of my Ines. I will instantly kill this thief. The perturbation owing to thoughts appears to rob the self of its peace. The perturbation is the mind. When that ceases the mind is said to take flight. The self remains as the undisturbed substratum. Another person interposed. The mind must kill the mind. Answer, yes, if there be the mind. Search for it discloses its non-existence. How can anything that does not exist be killed? Disciple, is not mental japa better than oral japa? Answer, oral japa consists of sounds. The sounds arise from thoughts. For one must think before one expresses the thoughts in words. Thoughts form the mind. Therefore mental japa is better than oral japa. Disciple, should we not contemplate the japa and repeat it orally also? Answer, when the japa becomes mental where is the need for the sounds thereof? Japa becoming mental becomes contemplation. Diana contemplation and mental japa are the same. When thoughts cease to be promiscuous and one thought persists to the exclusion of all others, it is said to be contemplation. The object of japa or diana is the exclusion of several thoughts and confining oneself to one single thought. Then that thought too vanishes into its source, absolute consciousness, in other words, the self. The mind engages in japa and then sinks into its own source. Disciple, 
The mind is said to be from the brain. Answer. Where is the brain? It is in the body. I say that the body itself is a projection of the mind. You speak of the brain when you think of the body. It is the mind which creates the body, the brain in it, and also ascertains that the brain is its seat. Disciple, Sri Bhagavan has said in one of the works that the japa must be traced to its source. Is it not the mind that is meant? Answer, all these are only the workings of the mind. Japa helps to fix the mind to a single thought. All other thoughts are first subordinated until they disappear. When it becomes mental it is called Diana. Diana is your true nature. It is however called Diana because it is made with effort. Effort is necessary so long as thoughts are promiscuous. Because you are with other thoughts, you call the continuity of a single thought, meditation or Diana. If that Diana becomes effortless, it will be found to be your real nature. Talk 3, 129 in the morning Sri Bhagavan read out a short passage from Saint Estella in the Tamil Rima Krishna Vijayam. Its purport is, Your enemies are lust passion etc. If you feel injured turn within and find out the cause of the injury. It is not external to you. The external causes are mere superimpositions. If you cannot injure yourself, will the all-merciful God injure you in any manner? Sri Bhagavan further said that Saint Estella was a good saint whose teachings were quite sound. Talk 3. 130. Sri Bhagavan being asthmatic his horse and throat. Oranges were brought as offerings. Pieces were distributed as usual. Sri Bhagavan was clearing his throat and was obliged to spit out the orange in his mouth. He said that he had to spit it out. A gentleman said, Probably, it does not suit Sri Bhagavan's health. Answer, would you say so if you had brought the fruits instead of the other person? 18th, January, 1937, Talk 3, 131. Miss Rorna Jennings, an American lady of the International Peace League, asked Sri Bhagavan about the spread of peace in the world. Sri Bhagavan replied, that if one gains the peace of the self, it will spread itself without any effort on the part of the individual. When one is not oneself peaceful, how can that one spread peace in the world? The lady asked if it was not true that the East has a scientific approach to the realization of the self. Answer, you are already the self. No elaborate science is necessary to establish it. Disciple, I understand the general truth of it. But there must be a practical method for it which I call science. Answer, the cessation of such thoughts is the realization of the self. Illustration, the necklace supposed lost. One does not see the world or one's own body being away from the self. Always being the self, one sees everything else. God and the world are all in the heart. See the seer and everything will be found to be the self. Change your outlook. Look within. Find the self. Who is the substratum of the subject and the object? Find it and all problems are solved. The lady was then told of the pamphlet, Who Am I? She agreed to read it before asking further questions of Sri Bhagavan. Talk 3. 132. Disciple. What are the three voids Muppesh and Tamil? Answer. 1. Tat equals Isfera Turiya. 2. T. Bum equals Javaturiya. 3. Asi equals Asi Turiya. Turiya is the substratum of the waking, dream and sleep states. Disciple. The first two are all right. What is the third? Answer. All pervasiveness is said to be the waking, all shiningness is said to be the dream perfection and anta, is said to be the sleep that which underlies these is a citaria. Disciple, it is so strange. Answer, is that all? There is no limit to polemics. 
Listen, they say the Mahavakya Tatvamasi is common, another containing five words Tatvamasi He Nijam, is the most secret one taught by Dakshinamrti in silence, corresponding to the five words they formulate five states. Again look at Vichara Sagara, the author distinguishes Adhara from Adish, Thiana. According to him the rope is always Adhara both when it looks like a snake and otherwise. The rope is at ish, thana, because it looks different from what it really is, that is common samanya at ish, thana. Again its appearance as the snake itself is vice, ja, at ish, thana. Then the question is raised, the at ish, thana of jiva is one, that of isvara is another. How can these two at ish, thanas become one? He replies there are the same adhara for both the at ish, Thanas. Furthermore, he mentions several kayatis. 1. A sat kayati, rope being present, there appears the snake which is not present there. 2. Sat kayati, rope itself looking like snake. 3. Atma kayati, rope remaining unidentified, the remembrance of snake, formerly seen elsewhere, creates the illusion. 4. Akiati, totally unreal. 5. Anayatha Kayati, mental image of snake projected and seen as if it were in front of oneself. 6. Anyava Kanya Kayati, inexplicable. Here he raises the question. Should the world be any one of these, whether illusory or unreal, it must be the result of previous experience. It must have been real at that time, real once, must be real always. He answers it, the experience need not necessarily be real, not having seen a real snake, but only seeing a picture of it and gaining an impression, one can mistake a rope to be a snake. Thus the world need not be real. Why waste time in such polemics? Only turn your mind inward and spend the time usefully. In the union of the individual with the Supreme, the Supreme is hearsay and the individual directly experienced. You can make use only of direct experience therefore look who you are. Why is this far mentioned then? Because you see the world and want to know how it came into being. They say that it was created by God. If you know that he created you and all else, your mind is a little satisfied and becomes less restless than otherwise. But it is not realization. It can be only if you realize yourself, this is perfection or realization etc. To resume polemics, the author of Vridi Prabhakara claims to have studied 350,000 books before writing this book. What is the use? Can they bring in realization of the self? The chara, sagara, is full of logic and technical terms. Can these ponderous volumes serve any real purpose? However, some people read them and then seek sages only to see if they can meet their questions. To read them, to discover new doubts and to solve them is a source of pleasure to them. Knowing it to be sheer waste, the sages do not encourage such people. Encourage them once and there will be no end. Only the inquiry into the self can be of use. Those familiar with logic, Vridi Prabhakara, Vichara Sagara or Sutra Bhashya, or similar large works, cannot relish small works like truth revealed dealing only with the self and that pointedly too, because they have accumulated visyanas. Only those whose minds are less muddy, or are pure, can relish small and purposeful works. Talk 3, 133. Pratyapena equals prati plus apena. Apena is direct perception, prati is to be reminded of what was already known. This is an elephant, direct perception. This is that elephant, is pratyapena. In technical works, Pratyabhana is used for realizing the ever-present reality and recognizing it. Thanya void or blank, Adesanya beyond Sanya and Mahasanya immense void, all mean the same in other words, the real being only. 20th, January, 
1937 Talk 334. Three bag events said that he felt no sensation in his legs, though they were massaged. If they serve the purpose of walking, what does it matter? Sensation is lost. He asked. Then in the course of conversation he related that a ray of light has been found which, when projected, does not reveal the operator but enables him to witness the scene. So it is with Siddhas. They are only pure light and can see others, whereas they cannot be seen by others. For example, Prabhulanga, while touring in the north, came across Goraknath. The latter displayed his yogic powers, for example, when his arm was cut by a sword, the sword was blunted without inflicting injury on him. This is making the body proof against injury, Kaya City. Prabhulanga offered himself to be cut. When the sword was thrust, it passed through and through his body as if it was air and there was no injury on the body. Gorak was astonished and offered himself as the disciple of Prabhulinga. Again, there was a dialogue between Siva and Parvati and Kailas. Siva said that Alama was one who would not be affected by her blandishments. Parvati wanted to try it, and so sent her to Mazic quality to incarnate as a king's daughter on the earth in order that she might entice a lama. He grew up as a highly accomplished girl. He used to sing in the temple. A lama used to go there and play on the drum. She lost herself in the play of the drum. She fell in love with him. They met in her bedroom. When she embraced him he became intangible. She grew lovesick. But a celestial damsel was sent to remind her of her purpose on the earth. She resolved to overthrow Alama but did not succeed. Finally she went up to Kailas. Then Parvati sent her Sattvic quality who was born as a Brahmin Sanyasini. When she surrendered to Alama, she realized his true greatness. Sri Bhagavan spoke very appreciatively of Nayana, in other words Kavikanthaganapathi Muni, for about an hour, how he wrote Uma Sahasram and Hara Sahasram, how he taught his students, how he engaged in dispute with Bhattasri Narayana Sastri, how meek and humble he was though so learned and capable, etc. Sri Bhagavan related how Nakarar, a Sangapulavar poet, Face the wrath of Seva on questioning some composition of Seva in Tamil, how he was taken captive by a spirit and afterwards released. Nakarar was doing tapas on the bank of a Tirtha. A leaf fell down from a tree, half the leaf touched the water and the other half was on the ground. Suddenly the water half became a fish and the land half became a bird. Each of them was united to the other by the leaf and struggled to go into its own element. Nakarar was watching it in wonder, and suddenly a spirit came down from above and carried him away to a cave where were already nine, hundred ninety-nine captives all of whom were topo brash, to those who had fallen away from their austerities. Disciple, was Nakarar a topo brashta? Answer, yes. While engaged in contemplation, why did he fall away from contemplation and take to watching the mysterious shepening in front of him? He continued to say how Nakarar composed to Ramiruhatrapadai and obtained the release of all the thousand prisoners. 21st January, 1937 Talk 3, 135 Disciple, how will the sexual impulse cease to be? Answer, when differentiation ceases. Disciple, how can it be affected? Answer, the other sex and its relation are only mental concepts. The Upanishad says that all are dear because the self is beloved of all. One's happiness is within, the love is of the self only. It is only within, do not think it to be without, then differentiation ceases to operate. 22nd, January, 1937, Talk 3, 136. A certain Vaisya who seems to have studied the Upanishads and Srimad Bhagavad Gita asked some questions. Disciple, how to realize the self? Answer, 
the self is always directly perceived. There is no moment when it is not so. How then is it to be ascertained? Find out the self. You are that. Disciple, but it is said the heart knots are cut away and all doubts end when the supreme is found. The word drishti is used. Answer, to be the self is the same as seeing the self. There are no two selves for the one to see the other. Later he continued the same question of investigation of the self. Disciple, how to realize the self? Answer, it is already realized. One should know this simple fact. That is all. Disciple, but I do not know it. How shall I know it? Answer, do you deny your existence? Disciple, no, how can that be done? Answer, then the truth is admitted. Disciple, yet, I do not see. How shall I realize the self? Answer, find out who says I. Disciple, yes. I say I. Answer, who is this I? Is it the body or someone besides the body? Disciple, it is not the body. It is someone besides it. Answer, find it out. Disciple, I am unable to do it. How shall I find it? Answer, you are now aware of the body. You were not aware of the body in deep sleep. Till you remained in sleep. After waking up you hold the body and say I cannot realize the self. Did you say so in your sleep? Because you were undivided ak, under then, you did not say so. Now that you are contracted within the limits of the body you say I have not realized. Why do you limit yourself and then feel miserable? Be of your true nature and happy. You did not say I in sleep. You say so now. Why? Because you hold to the body. Find out where from this I comes. Then the self is realized. Body being insentient cannot say I. The self being infinite cannot say I either. Who then says I? Disciple, I do not yet understand. How to find the I? Answer, find out where from this I arises. Then this I will disappear and the infinite self will remain. This I is only the knot between the sentient and the insentient. The body is not I, the self is not I. Who then is the I? Where from does it arise? Disciple, where from does it arise? Answer, find out. Disciple, I do not know. Please enlighten me. Answer, it is not from without. It is from within. Where does it come from? If elsewhere you can be led there. Being within, you must find it out yourself. Disciple, from the head. Answer, does the concept of head arise after the eye or does I arise from the head? If I be in the head why do you bend it when sleep overpowers you? I is ever constant. Though also must its seat be. If the head bends at one time and is erect at another time, how can it be the seat of I? Your head is laid flat in sleep. When awake it is raised up. Can it be the I? Disciple, which is it then? Answer, I comes from within. When asleep there is no I. Just before waking there is I thought. Disciple, the heart knot is said to be between the eyebrows. Answer, some say between the eyebrows, others at the coccyx and so on. All these are from the standpoint of the body. The body comes after the I thought. Disciple, but I cannot divest myself of the body. Answer, so you admit that you are not the body. Disciple, if there is pain in this body I feel it but not if another body is injured. I cannot get over this body. Answer, this identity is the cause of such feeling. That is how day grant, I heart not. Disciple, how is this not to go? Answer, for whom is the not? Why do you want it to go? 
Is it ask or do you ask? Disciple, it cannot ask. I am asking. Answer, who is that I? That is found the knot will not remain. Disciple, the knot is concomitant with the body. The body is due to birth. How is rebirth to cease? Answer, who is born? Is the self born? Or is it the body? Disciple, it is the body. Answer, then let the body ask how its rebirth may cease. Disciple, it will not ask. Though I am asking. Answer, whose is the body? You were without it in your deep sleep. After the I thought arose, the body arose. First birth is that of I thought. The body has its birth subsequent to I thought. So its birth is secondary. Get rid of the primary cause, and the secondary one will disappear by itself. Disciple, how is that I thought to be checked from rising? Answer, by self-quest. Disciple, I tried to understand but without success. Can I find the self by means of Japa? If so, please tell me how. Answer, what Japa? Why should you make artificial Japa? You can find out the eternal and natural Japa always going on within you. Disciple, some Upatish will probably help me. Answer, if I say, do Rama Rama to one who has not struggled through books like you, he will do it and stick to it. If I say so to one like you who have read much and are investigating matters, you will not do it for long, because you will think, why should I do it? Above all, who am I that should be repeating the mantra? Let me find who I am before I proceed further, and so you will stop Japa and begin investigation. Disciple, it is said. The senses are outgoing parent shikani, inward turned, is sai avritachaksha. What is avritachaksha, inward turned sight? Answer, it does not mean replacement of the eyeball in the opposite direction. What is chaksha? Disciple, the eye. Answer, does the eye see or is it someone behind the eye that sees? If the eye could see then does a corpse see? The one who is behind the eye sees through the eye. He is meant by the word chaksha. Disciple, divya chaksha is necessary to see the glory of God. This physical eye is the ordinary chaksha. Answer, oh, I see. You want to see million sun splendor and the rest of it. Disciple, can we not see the glory as million sun splendor? Answer, can you see the single sun? Why do you ask for millions of suns? Disciple, it must be possible to do so by divine sight. Where the sun shines not, etc. That is my supreme abode. Therefore, there is a state where this sun is powerless. That state is that of God. Answer, all right. Find Krishna and the problem is solved. Disciple, Krishna is not alive. Answer, is that what you have learned from the Gita? Does he not say that he is eternal? What are you thinking his body? Disciple, he taught others while alive. Those around him must have realized. I seek a similar living guru. Answer, is Gita then useless after he withdrew his body? Did he speak of his body as Krishna? Nat, we, Waham, Jatunasam. Never I was not. Disciple, but I want a living guru who can say the truth first hand. Answer, the fate of the guru will be similar to the fate of Krishna. The questioner retired. Later Sri Bhagavan said, Divine sight means self-luminosity. The world divya shows it. The full word means the self. Who is to bestow a divine eye? And who is to see? Again people read in the books, hearing, reflection and one-pointedness are necessary. They think that they must pass through savikalpa samadhi and nirvikalpa samadhi before attaining realization. Hence all these questions. 
Why should they wander in that maze? What do they gain at the end? It is only cessation of the trouble of seeking. They find that the self is eternal and self-evident. Why should they not get that repose even this moment a simple man, not learned, is satisfied with japa or worship? A Johnny is of course satisfied. The whole trouble is for the bookworms. Well well. They will also get on. Talk 3, 137. Mr. Eyer, how is the mind to be purified? Answer, the Sastra say by karma, bhakti and so on. My attendant asked the same question once before. He was told by karma dedicated to God. It is not enough that one thinks of God while doing the karma, but one must continually and unceasingly think of Him. Then alone will the mind become pure. The attendant applies it to himself and says, It is not enough that I serve Sri Bhagavan physically but I must unceasingly remember him. To another person who asked the same question, Bhagavan said, Quest of the self meaning, I am the body idea must vanish. Atma Vichara equals disappearance of Dhyatma Bhuti 23rd, January, 19, 137 Talk 3, 138 Miss Jennings, an American lady, asked a few questions. Disciple is not affirmation of God more effective than the quest, who am I? Affirmation is positive, whereas the other is negation. Moreover, it indicates separateness. Answer, so long as you seek to know how to realize, this advice is given to find yourself. Your seeking the method denotes your separateness. Disciple, is it not better to say I am the supreme being than ask who am I? Answer, who affirms? There must be one to do it. Find that one. Disciple, is not meditation better than investigation? Answer, meditation implies mental imagery, whereas investigation is for the reality. The former is objective, whereas the latter is subjective. Disciple, there must be a scientific approach to this subject. Answer, to eschew unreality and seek the reality is scientific. Disciple, I mean there must be a gradual elimination, first of the mind, then of the intellect, then of the ego. Answer, the self alone is real. All others are unreal. The mind and intellect do not remain apart from you. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Stillness is the sole requisite for the realization of the self as God. Disciple, will the West ever understand this teaching? Answer, there is no question of time and space. Understanding depends on rightness of mind. What does it matter if one lives in the East or in the West? Three Bhagavan referred the lady to a few stanzas in truth revealed into Thayi Manavar. She retired. Later Sri Bhagavan said the whole Vedanta is contained in the two biblical statements. I am that I am and be still and know that I am God. Mr. Ayer, a railway officer, said to Sri Bhagavan that the compiler of cosmic consciousness considers realization to be possible only within certain limits of age in an individual's life. Answer, does anyone say I must come into being before or after some age? He is here and now. Statements like this are misleading because people come to believe that they cannot realize the self in this incarnation and must needs take chances in another. It is all absurd. Talk 3. 139. With regard to Seva Visishtadvaita, in other words Seva Siddhanta, Sri Bhagavan said, Garudo, Hambavana, I am Garuda. Conception does not make a Garuda of a man. All the same the poisonous effects of snake bite are cured. Similarly with Sivohambhavena I am Seva conception also. One is not transformed into Seva, but the ruinous effects of the ego are put an end to. Where the person retains his individuality but remains pure, 
in other words, fit for constituting a part of the body of Siva. Coming so he can enjoy the supreme bliss. That is liberation, say the Seva Siddhantis. This simply betrays the love of their individuality and is in no way the true experience of liberation. Puck 3, 140. Mr. Bose began, after the return of but a consciousness. Answer, what is but a consciousness? Tell us that first. Who are you apart from consciousness? But he is found because there is but a consciousness which arises from my consciousness which again rises from consciousness. Consciousness right arrow, I consciousness right arrow but a consciousness right arrow body. There is always consciousness and nothing but that. What you are now considering to be but a consciousness is due to superimposition. There is only consciousness, and nothing but it, the meaning of the scripture at Manastu Kamiya Sarvam Priyam Bhavati, all are dear because of the love of the self becomes clear. Question arises, why there should be suicides in that case? Why does one do it? Because he is unhappy and desires to put an end to his unhappiness. He actually does it by ending the association with the body which represents all unhappiness. For there must be a killer to kill the body. He is the survivor after suicide. That is the self. Talk 3, 141. Mrs. Jennings. Three Bhagavan says that the state of realization is freedom from the tyranny of thoughts. Have not the thoughts got a place in the scheme of things? Maybe on a lower plane? Answer, the thoughts arise from the I thought which in its turn arises from the self. Therefore the self manifests as I and other thoughts. What does it matter if there are thoughts or no thoughts? Disciple, are good thoughts helpful for realization? Are they not authentic via media, a lower rung of the ladder to realization? Answer, yes this way. They keep off bad thoughts. They must themselves disappear before the state of realization. Disciple, but are not creative thoughts an aspect of realization and therefore helpful? Answer, helpful only in the way said before. They must all disappear in the self. Thoughts, good or bad, take you farther and not nearer because the self is more intimate than thoughts. You are self whereas the thoughts are alien to the self. Disciple, so the self finally absorbs its own creation which had helped its realization. Whereas civilization wrongly worships and so separates and short circuits its own creations which had helped its advance. Answer, are you not distinct from thoughts? Do you not exist without them? But can the thoughts exist without you? Disciple, is civilization generally, slowly but surely, advancing in the right direction towards the self-realization? Answer, civilization is in the order of things. It will finally resolve itself, as all others, in the realization of the self. Disciple, is a fine type of primitive man nearer to realization than a civilized man governed by intellect and thought? Answer, a realized man may look a savage, but a savage is not a realized man. Disciple, is it right to think that all that happens to us are God's ordainment and therefore only good? Answer, of course it is. Yet all others and God are not apart from the self. How can thoughts of them arise when you remain as the self? Disciple, is surrender accepting all physical annoyances such as ants, mosquitoes, snakes, etc., and in accepting, willing, or ceasing to be really hurt by them? Answer, whatever it is, is it apart from you the seer or the thinker? A Parsi lady from the audience intervened. If they are not apart, do we not feel the sting of the ants? Answer, whom does the ant sting? It is the body. You are not the body. So long as you identify yourself with the body, you see the ants, plants, etc. If you remain as the self, there are not others apart from the self. 
Disciple, the body feels the pain of the sting. Answer, if the body feels it, let it ask. The body take care of itself. How does it matter to you? The American lady again. Does complete surrender mean that all noise and disturbance in our environment, even during meditation, must be accepted? Or should we seek a cave in a mountain for solitude? Did not Bhagavan do this? Answer, there is no going or returning. The self is said to be unaffected by the elements, infinite, eternal. It cannot move. There is no place to move in for the self. Disciple, but in the process of finding the self, is this seeking external help spiritually legitimate? Answer, the error lies in the identification of the self with the body. The Bhagavan is the body you may ask that body. But understand him whom you address as Bhagavan. He is not the body. He is the self. Then she referred to an article in Harijan where it is said that everything is God and nothing belongs to the individual and so on. Answer. Everything, the individual, God and all are only the self. Then she read some lines from Shelley and asked if Shelley was not a realized soul. Within a cavern of man's trackless spirit is throned an image so intensely fair that the adventurous thoughts that wander near it worship, and as they kneel, tremble and fear the splendor of its presence, and the light penetrates their dreamlike frame till they become charged with the strength of flame. Answer, yes. The lines are excellent. He must have realized what he wrote. The lady then thanked Sri Bhagavan and retired. Hawk 3. 142. At 11 p.m. in the night, a group of Andras came from Gunter, consisting of a middle-aged woman with a sad but firm look, her mother and two men. They requested audience with Sri Bhagavan. The woman said to Sri Bhagavan, When my son was in the womb my husband died. The son was born posthumous. He grew up all right for five years. Then he was attacked by infantile paralysis. When nine he was bedridden. Nevertheless he was bright and cheerful. For two years he was in that condition and now they say that he's dead. I know that he is only sleeping and will awake soon. When they said that he had collapsed I was shocked. I saw in a vision a sadhu who appeared to pass his hands over the child's body and the child awoke refreshed. I believe that Saju is yourself. Please come and touch the boy so that he may get up, she prayed. Fri Bhagavan asked what the doctor said. He replied, they say that he is dead. But what do they know? I have brought the boy all the way from Gunter to this place. Someone asked. How? Is the corpse brought here? Gee. They said that the corpse would be taken by paying special rates at one two rupee per mile. We have paid our s. One hundred fifty for it and brought it as luggage. Answer, if your vision be correct the boy will wake up tomorrow. Gee. Please touch him. May I bring him into the compound? The others protested and persuaded them to leave. They left and the next morning the corpse was reported to have been cremated. When asked Sri Bhagavan said, It is said of some saints that they revived the dead. They too did not revive all the dead. If that could be done, there will be no world, no death, no cemetery etc. One man asked. The mother's faith was very remarkable. How could she have had such a hopeful vision and still be disappointed? Can it be a superimposition attendant on her child's love? Answer, she and her child not being real, how can the vision alone be a superimposition? Disciple, then how is it to be explained? No answer. Talk 3, 143. Disciple, even as the hand is cut off, one must remain unaware of it because Bhagavad Gita declares that the self is different from the body. Answer, does jhana consist in being unaware of the pain of injury? 
disciple, should he not remain unaware of pain? Answer. Major operations are performed under anesthetics, keeping the patient unaware of the pain. Does the patient gain jhana too at the same time? Insensibility to pain cannot be jhana. Disciple, should not a jhani a sage be insensible to pain? Answer. Physical pain only follows but a consciousness, it cannot be in the absence of but a consciousness. Mind being unaware of the body cannot be aware of its pains or pleasures. Read the story of Indra and Ahalya in Yoga Vasishta, their death itself is said to be an act of mind. Pains are dependent on the ego, they cannot be without the I, but I can remain without them. Book 344 Disciple, Vichara Sagara relates four obstacles to self-realization. Answer. Why only four? Some say they are nine. Sleep is one of them. What is sleep? It is only the obverse of waking. It cannot be independent of waking. Sleep is unalloyed self. Do not think you are awake sleep cannot be, nor the three states either. Only forgetting the self you say you dreamt. Can anything exist in the absence of the self? Why do you leave it out and hold the non-self? As the mind tends to go out turn it inwards then and there. It goes out owing to the habit of looking for happiness outside oneself, but the knowledge that the external objects are not the cause of happiness will keep it in check. This is veragia or dispassion. Only after perfect veragia the mind becomes steady. The mind is only a mixture of knowledge and ignorance or of sleep and waking. It functions in five ways. K. Shipta active. Mudha dull. Vichipta distracted. Kashiya latent and Ekagriya one-pointed. Of these Kashiya is only the latency of tendencies and not the tendencies themselves such as attachment, repulsion etc. Yourself being Ananda Bliss, why should you enjoy it saying, Ah! How blissful! This is Resasvada. During the marriage ceremonies a virgin feels happy as a bride without experiencing the embrace of man, this is Resasvada. Disciple, Jivan Mukti liberated while alive itself being Ananda. Three Bhagavan interrupted. Do not look for Sastras. What is Jivan Mukti? What is Ananda? Liberation itself is in doubt. What are all these words? Can they be independent of the self? Disciple, only we have no experience of all this. Answer, what is not, is always lost, what is, is ever present here and now. This is the eternal order of things. Example, necklace round the neck. Talk 3. 145. Free by Gavan continued after interval. Destroy the power of mind by seeking it. When the mind is examined its activities cease automatically. Looking for the source of mind is another method. The source may be said to be God or self or consciousness. Concentrating on one thought, all other thoughts disappear, finally that thought also disappears is necessary to be aware while controlling thoughts, otherwise it will lead to sleep. Disciple, how to seek the mind? Answer, breath control may do as an aid but can never lead to the goal itself. While doing it mechanically, take care to be alert in mind and remember the I thought and seek its source. Then you will find that where breath sinks, there the I thought arises. They sink and rise together. The I thought also will sink along with breath. Simultaneously another luminous and infinite I I will manifest and it will be continuous and unbroken. That is the goal. It goes by different names, God, Self, Kundalini, Sakti, Consciousness, etc., etc. When the attempt is made it will of itself take you to the goal. Talk 3, 146. Free will and destiny last as long as the body lasts. 
but wisdom transcends both, for the self is beyond knowledge and ignorance. Talk 3, 147 The mind is a bundle of thoughts. Thoughts arise because there is the thinker. The thinker is the ego. The ego, if sought, will automatically vanish. The ego and the mind are the same. The ego is the root thought from which all other thoughts arise. Talk 3, 148 Disciple, there are times when persons and things take on a vague, almost transparent form as in a dream. One ceases to observe them as from outside, but is passively conscious of their existence while not actively conscious of any kind of selfhood. There is a deep quietness in the mind. Is it at such times ready to dive into the self? Or is this condition unhealthy, the result of self-hypnotism? Should it be encouraged as a means of getting temporary peace? Answer. There is consciousness along with quietness in the mind, this is exactly the state to be aimed at. The fact that the question has been framed on this point, without realizing that it is the self, shows that the state is not steady but casual. The word diving is appropriate to the state of outgoing tendencies, when the mind is to be diverted and turned within so as to dive below the surface of externalities. But when deep quietness prevails without obstructing the consciousness, where is the need to dive? If the state be not realized as the self, the effort to do so may be called diving. The state may in that way be said to be suitable for realization or diving. Thus the last two questions in the paragraph are unnecessary. Disciple, the mind continues to feel partial towards children, possibly because of the form sometimes used to personify the ideal. How can this preference be outgrown? Answer, hold the self. Why think of children and reactions towards them? Disciple, this third visit to Turavinamalai seems to have intensified the sense of egoism in me and made meditation less easy. Is this an unimportant passing phase or a sign that I should avoid such places hereafter? Answer. It is imaginary. This place or another is within you. Such imaginations must end so that the places have nothing to do with the activities of the mind. Even your surroundings are not of your own accord, they are there as a matter of course. You must rise above them and not get yourself involved. Talk 3. 149. Free Sankara's Path to Salvation Through Discrimination. A note by Sri Maharshi. In the current issue of The Vision is published the following note, being the translation by Mr. Krishna, M.A. of Sri Ramana Maharshi's preface to his translation of Sri Sankara's Viveka Chudamani or Crown Gem of Discrimination. Every being in the world yearns to be always happy, free from the taint of sorrow, and desires to get rid of bodily ailments which are not of his true nature. Further, Everyone cherishes the greatest love for himself, and this love is not possible in the absence of happiness. In deep sleep, though devoid of everything, one has the experience of being happy. Yet, due to the ignorance of the real nature of one's own being, which is happiness itself, people flounder in the vast ocean of material existence forsaking the right path that leads to happiness and act, under the mistaken belief that the way to be happy consists in obtaining the pleasures of this and the other world. A safe guide. But alas that happiness which has not the taint of sorrow is not realized. It is precisely for the purpose of pointing out the straight path to happiness that God Siva took on the guise of Sri Sankarakuriya, wrote the commentaries on the Triune Institute's Prasthana Treya of the Vedanta, which extol the excellence of this bliss, and demonstrated it by his own example in life. These commentaries, however, are of little use to those ardent seekers who are intent upon realizing the bliss of absolution, but have not the scholarship for studying them. It is for such as these that Sri Sankar revealed the essence of the commentaries in this short treatise, 
the crown gem of discrimination, explaining in detail the points that have to be grasped by those who seek absolution and thereby directing them to the true and straight path. Learning won't do. Prisankara opens the theme by observing that it is hard indeed to attain human birth, and one should having attained it strive for the realization of the bliss of liberation, which is verily the nature of one's being. By jhana or knowledge alone is this bliss realized, and jhana is achieved only through vichara or steady inquiry. In order to know this method of inquiry, says Sri Senkara, one should seek the favor of a guru, and proceeds to describe the qualities of the guru and his sishya and how the latter should approach and serve his master. He further emphasizes that in order to realize the bliss of liberation one's own individual effort is an essential factor. Mere book learning never yields this bliss which can be realized only through inquiry or vichara, which consists of esravana, or devoted attention to the precepts of the guru, manana, or deep contemplation, and nididhyasana, or the cultivation of steady poise in the self. The three paths, the three bodies, physical, subtle, and causal, are non-self and are unreal. The self or I is quite different from them. It is due to ignorance that the sense of the self or the I notion is foisted on that which is not self, and this indeed is bondage. Since from ignorance arises bondage, from knowledge ensues liberation. To know this from the Guru is Esravana. To reject the three bodies consisting of the five sheaths physical, vital, mental, gnostic and blissful is not I and to extract through subtle inquiry of who am I, even as the central blade of grass is delicately drawn out from its whorl, that which is different from all the three bodies and is existent as one and universal in the heart as Aham or I and denoted by the words Bam in the scriptural dictum, Tat, Amasi, that thou art. This process of subtle inquiry is manana, or deep contemplation the beatitude. The world of name and form is but an adjunct of sat or brahman, and be not different from it is rejected as such, and is affirmed as nothing else but brahman. The instruction by the guru to the disciple of the Mahavakya, Tatamasi, which declares the identity of the self and the supreme, is Upaitsa. The disciple is then enjoined to remain in the beatitude of Aham Brahman, I the Absolute. Nevertheless the old tendencies of the mind sprout up thick and strong and form an obstruction to that state of beatitude. These tendencies are threefold in egoism, which is their root, flourishes in the externalized and differentiating consciousness caused by the forces of Vikshipa or dissipation due to rajas and avarana, or envelopment due to tamas. Turning the mind. To install the mind firmly in the heart until these forces are destroyed, and to awaken with unswerving, ceaseless vigilance the true and cognic tendency which is characteristic of the Atman, and is expressed by the dicta, Aham Brahmasmi I am Brahman, and Brahmavaham Brahman alone am I is termed Nididhyasana, or Atmanusandhana, in other words, constancy in the self. This is otherwise called Bhakti, Yoga and Dhyana. Atmanusandhana has been likened to churning the curd to draw forth butter, the mind being compared to the churning rod, the heart to the curd and the practice of constancy in the self to the process of churning. Just as by churning the curd butter is extracted and by friction fire is kindled, even so by unswerving vigilant constancy in the self, ceaseless like the unbroken filamentary flow of oil, is generated the natural or changeless trance or nervikalpa samadhi, which readily and spontaneously yields that direct, immediate, unobstructed and universal perception of Brahman, which is at once knowledge and experience, and which transcends time and space. Limitless Bliss This is self-realization, and thereby is cut asunder the hridaya granthai, or the knot of the heart. The false delusions of ignorance, 
the vicious and age-long tendencies of the mind which constitute this knot are destroyed. All doubts are dispelled and the bondage of karma is severed. Thus has Sri Sankara described, in this crown gem of discrimination, samadhi or trance transcendent, which is the limitless bliss of liberation, beyond doubt and duality, and has at the same time indicated the means for its attainments. To realize this state of freedom from duality is the summum bonum of life, and he alone that has won, it is a jivanmak to the liberated one while yet alive, and not he who has merely a theoretical understanding of what constitutes pure shartha or the desired end and aim of human endeavor. Final Freedom Thus defining a jivan mukta, he is declared to be free from the bonds of threefold karma sanchita agami and prarabhya. The disciple who has reached this stage then relates his personal experience. The liberated one is free indeed to act as he pleases, and when he leaves the mortal frame, attains absolution, and returns not to this birth which is death. Sri Sankara thus describes realization that connotes liberation as twofold, in other words, Jivan Mukti and Vaidha Mukti referred to above. Moreover, in this short treatise, written in the form of a dialogue between a guru and his disciple, he has considered many relevant topics. 6 February 19, 137 Talk 3, 150 while speaking to Mr. Shamagam, a very sincere lawyer devotee, Bhagavan observed. Sastras say that one must serve a guru for twelve years for getting self-realization. What does guru do? Does he hand it over to the disciple? Is not the self always realized? What does the common belief mean then? The man is always the self and yet he does not know it. He confounds it with the non-self, namely, the body, etc. Such confusion is due to ignorance. If ignorance be wiped out, the confusion will cease to exist and the true knowledge will be unfolded. By remaining in contact with realized sages, the man gradually loses the ignorance until its removal is complete. The eternal self is thus revealed. This is the meaning conveyed by the story of Ashtavakra and Inaka. The anecdotes differ in different books. We are not concerned with the names and the embellishments. The tatva, in other words, the moral, must not be lost sight of. The disciple surrenders himself to the master. That means there is no vestige of individuality retained by the disciple. If the surrender is complete, all sense of individuality is lost, and there is thus no cause for misery. The eternal being is only happiness. That is revealed. Without understanding it or right, people think that the Guru teaches the disciple something like Tatvamasi and that the disciple realizes I am Brahman. In their ignorance they conceive of Brahman as something more huge and powerful than anything else. With a limited eye the man is so stuck up and wild. What will be the case if the same eye grows up enormous? He will be enormously ignorant and foolish. This false eye must perish. Its annihilation is the fruit of Guru Seva. Realization is eternal and it is not newly brought about by the Guru. He helps in the removal of ignorance. That is all. 7th February 1937 Talk 3, 151 Dr. Subramania Ayer, retired health officer of Salem, read out a passage which contained the instructions that one should know that the world is transitory, that worldly enjoyments are useless, that one should therefore turn away in disgust from them, restrain the senses and meditate on the self to realize it. Sri Bhagavan observed. How does one know the world to be transitory? Unless something permanent is held, the transitory nature of the world cannot be understood. Because the man is already the self, and the self is the eternal reality, his attention is drawn to it, and he is instructed to rivet his attention on the eternal reality, the self. Talk 3, 152. 
the different creeds the thought rises up as the subject and object. I alone being held, all else disappears. It is enough but only to the competent few. The others argue quite so. The world that exists in my sleep has existed before my birth and will exist after my death. Do not others see it? How can the world cease to be if my ego appears not? The genesis of the world and the different schools of thought are meant to satisfy such people. Disciple, nevertheless being only products of intellect they cannot turn the mind inward. Answer, just for this reason the scriptures speak of interned look, one pointed look and so on. The self being always the self, why should only Adira be illumined? Does it mean a man of courage? No, D, he equals intellect, Ra equals watch protection. Though Dira is the one who always keeps the mind inward bent without letting it loose. 8th February 1937 Talk 3, 153 Disciple, what is Turiya? Answer, there are three states only the waking dream and sleep. Turiya is not a fourth one, it is what underlies these three. But people do not readily understand it. Therefore, it is said that this is the fourth state and the only reality. In fact, it is not apart from anything, for it forms the substratum of all happenings, it is the only truth, it is your very being. The three states appear as fleeting phenomena on it, and then sink into it alone. Therefore they are unreal. The pictures in a cinema show are only shadows passing over the screen. They make their appearance, move forward and backward, change from one to another, are therefore unreal whereas the screen all along remains unchanged. Similarly with paintings, the images are unreal and the canvas real. Though also with us, the world phenomena, within or without, are only passing phenomena, not independent of ourself. Only the habit of looking on them as being real and located outside ourselves is responsible for hiding our true being and showing forth the others. The ever-present only reality, the self, being found, all other unreal things will disappear, leaving behind the knowledge that they are no other than the self. Korea, only another name for the self. Aware of the waking, dream and sleep states, we remain unaware of our own self. Nevertheless the self is here and now, it is the only reality. There is nothing else. The long as identification with the body lasts the world seems to lie outside us. Only realize the self and they are not. Talk 3, 154 An American lady, a theosophist asked, what is the means by which my approach to my master may be made nearer? Answer. How far away are you now from him? Disciple. I am away from him. But I want to get closer to him. Answer. If you first know yourself, you may then find out how far away the other is. Who are you now? Are you the personality? Disciple. Yes. I am the personality. Answer. Is the personality independent of the self? Disciple. Sometimes. Answer. At what times? Disciple. I mean I have some flashes of the reality and at other times I do not have them. Answer. Who is aware of those flashes? Disciple. I. I mean my personality. Answer. Is this personality aware as being apart from the self? Disciple, which self? Answer, which do you consider the personality to be? Disciple, the lower self. Answer, then I mean to ask if the lower self is aware independently of the higher self. Disciple, yes at times. Answer, who feels that she is away from the master just now? Disciple, the higher self. Answer, does the higher self have a body and say that the master is away from it? 
Does it speak through your mouth? Are you apart from that? Disciple, can you kindly advise me how I can train myself to be aware of what I do even without the body as in sleep? Answer, awareness is your nature. In deep sleep or in waking, it is the same. How can it be gained afresh? Disciple, but I do not remember what and how I did in my sleep. Answer, who says I do not remember? Disciple, I say now. Answer, you were the same then, why do you not say so in sleep? Disciple, I do not remember what I say in sleep. Answer, you say I know I remember in the wakeful state. The same personality says, I did not know, I did not remember in sleep. Why does not this question arise in sleep? Disciple, I do not know what happens in sleep. That is the reason I ask now. Answer, the question affects the sleeping phase and must be raised there. It does not affect the waking phase and there is no apparent reason for this question. Fact is that you have no limitations in sleep and no question arises. Whereas now you put on limitations, identify yourself with the body and questions of this kind arise. Disciple, I understand it, but do not realize it in other words unity and variety. Answer, because you are in variety, you say you understand, unity, that you have flashes etc. Remember things etc. You consider this variety to be real. On the other hand unity is the reality and the variety is false. The variety must go before unity reveals itself, its reality. It is always real. It does not send flashes of its being in this false variety. On the contrary, this variety obstructs the truth. Then some others pursued the conversation. Answer. Removal of ignorance is the aim of practice and not acquisition of realization. Realization is ever present here and now. Were it to be acquired anew, realization must be understood to be absent at one time and present at another time. In that case it is not permanent and therefore not worth the attempt. But realization is permanent and eternal and is here and now. Disciple Grace is necessary for the removal of ignorance. Answer, certainly. But grace is all along there. Grace is the self. It is not something to be acquired. All that is necessary is to know its existence. For example, the sun is brightness only. He does not see darkness. Whereas others speak of darkness fleeing away on the sun approaching. Similarly, ignorance also is a phantom and not real. Because of its unreality, its unreal nature being found, it is said to be removed. Again, the sun is there and also bright. You are surrounded by sunlight. Still if you would know the sun you must turn your eyes in his direction and look at him. Though also grace is found by practice alone, although it is here and now. Disciple, by the desire to surrender constantly increasing grace is experienced I hope. Answer, surrender once for all and be done with the desire. The long as the sense of doership is retained, there is the desire, that is also personality. If this goes the self is found to shine forth pure. The sense of doership is the bondage and not the actions themselves. Be still and know that I am God. Here stillness is total surrender without a vestige of individuality. Stillness will prevail and there will be no agitation of mind. Agitation of mind is the cause of desire, the sense of doership and personality. That is stop there is quiet. Their knowing means being it is not the relative knowledge involving the triad's knowledge, subject and object. Disciple is the thought I am God or I am the Supreme being helpful? Answer, I am that I am. I am as God, not thinking, I am God. Realize, I am and do not think I am. No, I am God, 
it is said and not, think I am God. Later Sri Bhagavan continued. It is said, I am that I am. That means a person must abide as the I. He is always the I alone. He is nothing else. Yet he asks, who am I? A victim of illusion would ask, who am I? And not a man fully aware of himself. The wrong identity of the self with the non-self makes you ask, who am I? Later still, there are different routes to Turavana Malai, but Turavana Malai is the same by whichever route it is gained. Similarly the approach to the subject varies according to the personality. Yet the self is the same. But still being in Turavana Malai, if one asks for the route it is ridiculous. Though also being the self, if one asks how to realize the self it looks absurd. You are the self. Remain as the self. That is all. The questions arise because of the present wrong identification of the self with the body. That is ignorance. This must go. On its removal the self alone is. Talk 3, 155 Disciple, does not education make a sage more useful to the world than illiteracy? Answer, even a learned man must bow before the illiterate sage. Illiteracy is ignorance, education is learned ignorance. Both of them are ignorant of their true aim, whereas a sage is not ignorant because there is no aim for him. Talk 3, 156 Disciple, why should there be sleep in the world? Answer, owing to sin only. Disciple, can it be destroyed? Answer, yes. Disciple, it ends only after making itself felt, they say. Answer, why then devotion to God? Disciple, how can sleep be destroyed? Answer, be not aware of its activities and effects. Disciple, how can it be done? Answer, only by inquiry of the self. Reminiscences. Talk 3, 157. Sri Bhagavan was recounting some of the incidents of his stay in Turavanamalai. 1. He was one day given a small speck of some substance on a leaf to be licked off. It was said to be a good help for digestion. He licked it. Later he had his meal. After some time the assembled persons appeared to be surrounded by light tejamaya. The experience passed away after some time. 2. While he was living in Pavalakanru, he intended to have a bath in one of the rills on the hillside. Palanaswami was informed of it. The news spread that Jada Padmanabhaswami who was living on the hill had arranged with Palani Swami to take Sri Bhagavan to the hill near his cottage. Palani Swami without informing Sri Bhagavan managed to take him there. A great reception awaited him. A seat was arranged for him, milk and fruits were offered and J.P. waited on him with great kindness. 3. J.P., though represented in the book Self-Realization as having sought to injure Sri Bhagavan, was really kind to him and his pranks were misunderstood to be acts of malice. His only weakness was that he wanted to make capital out of Sri Bhagavan for raising funds, which of course, the Maharshi did not like. There was nothing wrong with J.P. for. Madhavaswami, the attendant, asked if Sri Bhagavan remained without food for months in the underground cellar in the temple. Answer, um. Um. Food was forthcoming, milk, fruits, but whoever thought of food. 5. While staying in the mango tree cave Sri Bhagavan used to string garlands for the images in the temple, with lotuses, yellow flowers, sarakani and green leaves. 6. After the completion of the Kalyan Amantapam Sri Bhagavan had stayed there one night in disguise. 7. When he was sitting under a tree in the temple compound he was covered with dirt, for he never used to bathe. In the cold nights of December he used to fold up the legs, 
place his head between his legs and remain there without moving. Early in the morning the layer of dirt on his body was soaked with dew and mist and appeared white. After drying up in the sun it appeared dark. 8. When living on the hill Sri Bhagavan used to help in the puja of J.P., ringing the bell, washing the vessels, etc., all along remaining silent. He also used to read medical works, for example, Ashtanga Hridayam in Malayalam and point out the treatment contained in the book for the patients who sought the other sad whose help. That Sadhu did not himself know how to read these works. 12th, February, 1937, Talk 3, 158. A scene in the hall. It is 8 p.m. Sri Bhagavan has returned after supper and stretched himself on the sofa. The light is dim, there are three men sitting on the floor, one is busy copying something from a journal, another is wrapped in meditation, and the third is looking around, having nothing to do. The hall is silent, but for occasional clearing of the throat by Sri Bhagavan. Madhava Swami, the attendant devotee, slips in noiselessly with a sheaf of betels in hand. He moves to the table. Three Bhagavan who is reclining on the sofa sees him and calls out, yet kindly. Tss, tss. What are you doing? The attendant softly murmurs, nothing, leaves the betel there and fumbles hesitatingly. Answer. I do not want it. The attendant softly settles down on the floor. Fribagovan. Castry pill, one after another every day. Bottle will be empty and more is ordered. I don't want it. A devotee skillfully blames the Allah Padrida of the day meal for the indifferent health of Sri Bhagavan. Answer, no, no, it was well made. It was good silence, but for expectoration and erectation. After a few minutes, the attendant slips out and returns with a bottle in hand, goes near Sri Bhagavan and stretches out a pill saying, Come and seed pill. Sri Bhagavan softly murmurs, It contains lime juice. Lime juice is not good for this. One devotee Rangaswami Iyengar has in the meantime become wide awake from his meditation and looks on. The attendant is still holding out his hand with the pill. Sri Bhagavan continues. Who is to munch it? Rangaswami Iyengar. It need not be munched. It may be kept in the mouth and sucked. The attendant hastily agrees. Yes, yes, it is only to be sucked. Answer. Give it to him pointing to Rangaswami Iyengar. Let him munch it or suck it. I do not want it. The attendant returns disappointed and squats on the floor again rises up. Answer. Hey. Hey. What do you do? I do not want. The attendant moves up to the medicine chest murmuring castory pill. It will be effective. Free Bhagavan. I shall soon be right even without it. Do not take it out. A. A. Keep it there, I wouldn't take it, do what you like. The attendant again settles down and all remain silent before retiring to bed. 13th February, 1937 Talk 3, 159 At about 7.30 a.m. Sri Bhagavan was climbing up the hill after breakfast. Padananda went and prostrated, stood up and said, All right, I have had Darsan. I shall return. Free Bhagavan smilingly, Who's Darsan? Why don't you say that you gave Darsan to me? At about 9 a.m. a devotee from Pune, Mr. Parkai saluted Sri Bhagavan and read out his Ashtaka praying to Sri Bhagavan for grace. The piece finishes with a prayer for quick liberation at Titi Mukti and the devotee emphasized it. Answer, Mukti in other words, liberation is not to be gained hereafter. It is there forever, here and now. Disciple, I agree but I do not experience it. Answer, the experience is here and now. One cannot deny one's own self. Disciple, 
That means existence and not happiness. Answer. Existence equals happiness equals being. The word mukti liberation is so provoking. Why should one seek it? He believes that there is bondage and therefore seeks liberation. But the fact is that there is no bondage but only liberation. Why call it by a name and seek it? Disciple, true, but we are ignorant. Answer, only remove ignorance. That is all there is to be done. 14th February, 1937 Talk 360 the aristocratic gentleman from Lucknow has written to Mr. Paul Brunton that his wife has since lost that peace of mind which he had gained by her visits to Sri Bhagavan, so he desires that Sri Bhagavan may be pleased to restore the same peace. When requested Sri Bhagavan said, It is due to weakness of mind that peace once gained is later lost. Talk 3. 161. You daily or Swami, son of the lady who brings Bhiksha every day to Sri Bhagavan, related the following interesting incident. During the time Sri Bhagavan was staying in Virupaksha cave, Sri Bhagavan and Mudalyar Swami were walking together behind the Skandasram on site. There was a huge rock about fifteen feet high it was a cleft, a girl, a shepherdess, was standing there crying. Sri Bhagavan asked the reason of her sorrow. She said, A sheep of mine has slipped into this cleft, so I am crying. Three Bhagavan descended into the cleft, took the sheep on his shoulders, climbed up to the surface, and delivered the sheep to her. Mudalyar Swami says that it was a very remarkable feat for any human being. Puck 3, 162 Mr. Subaray, Maya, a college professor from Nellore, asked about Mukti. Answer. All questions relating to mukti are inadmissible, because mukti means release from bondage which implies the present existence of bondage. There is no bondage and therefore no mukti either. Disciple. The sastras speak of it and its grades. Answer. The sastras are not meant for the wise because they do not need them, the ignorant do not want them. Only the mimukshas look up to the sastras. That means that the sastras are neither for wisdom nor for ignorance. Disciple, the Sish, too, is said to be a jivan to whereas Dhyanaka was a Vaidhamakta. Answer, why speak of the Sish, to or Dhyanaka? What about oneself? There were many new visitors this day. Two of them were speaking of Ganapati Muni in Sri Bhagavan's presence. Sri Bhagavan put in a few words in their talk. 1. Some say that Jhana and Upasana are the two wings with which to fly to Mukti. What is Jhana? What is Upasana? Jhana is ever present. That is the ultimate goal also. When an effort is made the effort is called Upasana, when it is effortless it is Jhana, which is the same as Mukti. 2. After some discussion among themselves, a visitor said, Some superior power must help us to shake off the externalities. Sri Bhagavan said, Who sees the externalities? Or do they say that they exist? If so let the world say that it exists. Again, if the world is a projection from the interior, it must be recognized that it is projected simultaneously with the eye thought either way the eye is the fundamental basis knowing which all else is known. 3. Another said that Ganapati Muni used to say that he could even go to Indra Loka and say what Indra was doing but he could not go within and find the eye. 3. Bhagavan added that Ganapati Muni used to say that it was easy to move forward but impossible to move backward. Then Sri Bhagavan remarked, However far one goes there he is. Where is moving backward? The same truth is contained in the mantra in Issa Upanishad. Or, in reply to a query how Ganapati Muni became an Asukavi inspired poet, Sri Bhagavan said. He said that while he was making tapasya seva appeared and gave him milk or honey to drink, after which he became a Sukhavi. 20th February 
1937 Talk 3, 163. A European civilian, Mr. Dodwell, Deputy Secretary, Finance, Madras Government, arrived with his wife before 1 p.m. and stayed in the hall, till about 3 p.m. the lady asked. Spiritual leaders in the West say that the spiritual center is in India. Is there any contact among the spiritual leaders in India? Or is contact possible between the leaders of the East and the West? Answer, what do you mean by spiritual center? Disciple, the spiritual center is the seat of spiritual leaders. Answer, what do you understand by spiritual leaders? Disciple, in the West there is a crisis. Scientific knowledge is far advanced. Such knowledge is used for generating destructive forces. There is a movement for making them constructive. When thus diverted it will be for the good of the world. The leaders of this movement are the redeemers. Answer. By spiritual leaders we understand those who are spiritual as opposed to physical spirit is unlimited and formless. Such too is the spiritual center. There is only one such center. Whether in the west or in the east the center cannot differ, nor has it any locality. Being unlimited it includes the leaders, the men, the world, the forces of destruction and of construction. There is no differentiation. You speak of contact because you are thinking of the embodied beings as spiritual leaders. The spiritual men are not bodies, they are not aware of their bodies. They are only spirit, limitless and formless. There is always unity among them and all others, nay, they comprise all. The spirit is the self. If the self is realized, these questions cannot arise at all. Miss Jinarajadasa from Adyar Self-realization sounds so easy, but yet is so difficult in practice. Answer, what can be easier? The self is more intimate than anything else. If that cannot be realized, is it easy to realize what is apart and farther away? Disciple, self-realization is so illusory. How can it be made permanent? Answer, the self can never be illusory. It is the only reality. That which appears will also disappear and is therefore impermanent. The self never appears and disappears and is therefore permanent. Disciple, yes, true. You know that in the Theosophical Society they meditate to seek the Masters to guide them. Answer, the Master is within. Meditation is meant for the removal of ignorance, of the wrong idea that he is without. If he be a stranger whose advent you away he is bound to disappear also. Where is the use of transient being like that? However as long as you think that you are an individual or that you are the body, so long the master also is necessary and he will appear with a body. When this wrong identification ceases the master will be found to be the self. There is a stanza in Kaivalya. My Lord, you had remained as myself within, protecting me in all my past incarnations. Now by your grace, you have manifested yourself as my master and revealed yourself as the self. To see what happens in sleep. There is no ego, no India, no seekers, no master, etc., and yet you are, and happy too. The ego, India, seekers, etc., appear now, but they are not apart from nor independent of you. There was a large group of visitors on account of the election holidays and some of these also joined in the discussion. One of them asked about reincarnation. Answer, reincarnation can only be so long as there is ignorance. There is no incarnation either now, nor was there before, nor will be hereafter. This is the truth. Disciple, what is the ego self? Answer, the ego self appears and disappears and is transitory, whereas the real self always abides permanent. Though you are actually the true self, 
yet you wrongly identify the real self with the ego self. Disciple, how does the mistake come about? Answer, see if it has come about. Disciple, one has to sublimate the ego self into the true self. Answer, the ego self does not exist at all. Disciple, why does it give us trouble? Answer, to whom is the trouble? The trouble also is imagined. Trouble and pleasure are only for the ego. Disciple, why is the world so wrapped up in ignorance? Answer, take care of yourself. Let the world take care of itself. To yourself. If you are the body there is the gross world also. If you are spirit all is spirit alone. Disciple, it will hold good for the individual, but what of the rest? Answer, do it first and then see if the question arises afterwards. Disciple, is there avidia? Answer, for whom is it? Disciple, for the ego self. Answer, yes for the ego. Remove the ego, avidia is gone. Look for it, the ego vanishes. The real self alone remains. The ego professing avidia is not to be seen. There is no avidia in reality. All sastras are meant to disprove the existence of avidya. Disciple, how did the ego arise? Answer, ego is not. Otherwise, do you admit of two selves? How can there be avidya in the absence of the ego? If you begin to inquire, the avidya which is already non-existent will be found not to be or you will say it has fled away. Ignorance pertains to the ego. Why do you think of the ego and also suffer? What is ignorance again? It is that which is non-existent. However the worldly life requires the hypothesis of avidya. Avidya is only our ignorance and nothing more. It is ignorance or forgetfulness of the self. Can there be darkness before the sun? Similarly, can there be ignorance before the self-evident and self-luminous self? If you know the self there will be no darkness, no ignorance and no misery. It is the mind which feels the trouble, misery, etc. Darkness never comes nor goes. See the sun and there is no darkness. Similarly, see the self and avidya will be found not to exist. Disciple, Sri Ramakrishna and others practiced concentration. Answer. Concentration in all other practices are meant for recognizing the absence, in other words, non-existence of ignorance. No one can deny his own being. Being is knowledge, in other words, awareness. That awareness implies absence of ignorance. Therefore everyone naturally admits non-existence of ignorance. And yet why should he suffer? Because he thinks he is this or that. That is wrong. I am alone is and not I am so and so, or I am such and such. When existence is absolute, it is right, when it is particularized, it is wrong. That is the whole truth. See how each one admits that he is. Does he look into a mirror to know his being? His awareness makes him admit his existence or being. But he confuses it with the body, etc. Why should he do so? Is he aware of his body in his sleep? No, yet he himself does not cease to be in sleep. He exists there though without the body. How does he know that he exists in sleep? Does he require a mirror to reveal his own being now? Only be aware, and your being is clear in your awareness. Disciple, how is one to know the self? Answer. Knowing the self means being the self. Can you say that you do not know the self? Though you cannot see your own eyes and though not provided with a mirror to look in, do you deny the existence of your eyes? Similarly, you are aware of the self even though the self is not objectified. Or do you deny yourself because it is not objectified? When you say, 
I cannot know the self it means absence in terms of relative knowledge, because you have been so accustomed to relative knowledge that you identify yourself with it. Such wrong identity has forged the difficulty of not knowing the obvious self because it cannot be objectified, and you ask, How is one to know the self? Your difficulty is centered in how. Who is to know the self? Can the body know it? Let the body answer. Who says that the body is perceived now? In order to meet this kind of ignorance, the Sastras formulate the theory of God's Leela or Krita, in other words play. God is said to emanate as the mind, the senses and the body, and to play. Who are you to say that this play is a trouble to you? Who are you to question the doings of God? Your duty is to be and not to be this or that. I am that I am sums up the whole truth. The method is summed up and be still. What does stillness mean? It means destroy yourself. Because any form or shape is the cause of trouble. Give up the notion that I am so and so. Our sastras say Ahamidis Furati, it shines as I. Disciple, what is Furana shining? Answer, I am Aham I I is the self. I am item I am this or I, and that is the ego. Shining is there always. The ego is transitory. When the I is kept up as I alone, it is the self. When it flies at a tangent and says this, it is the ego. Disciple, is God apart from the self? Answer, the self is God. I am as God. I am the self, O Gudexa. Amatma Gudiksa. This question arises because you are holding the ego self. This will not arise if you hold the true self. For the real self will not and cannot ask anything. If God be apart from the self he must be a selfless God which is absurd. Disciple, what is Namaskara prostration? Answer, prostration means subsidence of the ego. What is subsidence? To merge into the source of its origin. God cannot be deceived by outward genuflections, bowings and prostrations. He sees if the individuality is there or not. Mr. Shimana, is there a sixth sense to feel I am? Answer, do you have it in your sleep? There is only one being functioning through the five senses. Or do you mean that each sense is independent of the self, and there are five cells admitting of a six to control them? There is a power working through these five senses. How can you deny the existence of such power? Do you deny your existence? Do you not remain even in sleep where the body is not perceived? The same I continues to be now so we admit our existence whether there is the body or not. The senses work periodically. Their work begins and ends. There must be a substratum on which their activities depend. Where do they appear and merge? There must be a single substratum. Were you to say that the single unit is not perceived, it is an admission of its being single, for you say that there is no second one to know it. All these discussions are only to get rid of ignorance. When that is done everything will be clear. It is a matter of competence or rightness. Disciple, cannot grace hasten such competence in a seeker? Answer, leave it to him. To render unreservedly. One of two things must be done. Either surrender because you admit your inability and also require a high power to help you or investigate into the cause of misery, go into the source and merge into the self. Either way, you will be free from misery. God never forsakes one who has surrendered. Mamekem Saranam Vraja Disciple, what is the drift of the mind after surrender? Answer, is the surrendered mind raising the question? Laughter. Talk 3, 164. The Nello professor asked about Visvarupa Darsiana. Answer. 
Visvatma Darsana is Visvarupa Darsana, in other words, the universal self of the cosmic self is the cosmos. Sri Krishna started the discourse in chapter 2 saying, I have no form. In chapter Roman 11 he says, See my form as the universe. Is it consistent? Again he says, I transcend the three worlds, but Arjuna sees the three worlds in him. Sri Krishna says, I cannot be seen by men, gods, etc., yet Arjuna sees himself and the gods in him. No one could see and yet Arjuna was endowed with divine sight to see him. Does it not look a maze of contradictions? The answer is that the understanding is wrong. As theoladristi on the physical plane is absurd. Donadristi subtle understanding is necessary. That is why Arjuna was given Divya Chaksha divine sight. Can such sight be gross? Will such interpretation lead you to a right understanding? Sri Krishna says Kalasmi, I am time. Does time have shape? Again, if the universe be his form should it not be one and unchanging? What does he say to Arjuna, see in me whatever you desire to see? That means that his form is according to the desires of the seer. They speak of divine sight and yet paint the scene each according to his own view. There is the seer also in the scene. What is all this? Even a mesmerist can make you see strange scenes. You call this a trick, whereas the other you call divine. Why this difference? Anything seen cannot be real. That is the truth. Talk 3, 165 As Sri Bhagavan was continuing in the same strain, a visitor asked how to overcome the identity of the self with the body. Answer, what about sleep? Disciple, there is ignorance prevailing. Answer, how do you know your ignorance in sleep? Did you exist in sleep or not? Disciple, I do not know. Answer, do you deny your existence in sleep? Disciple, I must admit it by my reasoning. Answer, how do you infer your existence? Disciple, by reasoning and experience. Answer, is reasoning necessary for experience? Laughter disciple, is meditation analytical or synthetic? Answer, analysis or synthesis are in the region of intellect. The self transcends the intellect. Doc 3, 166. Before leaving at 3 p.m., Miss Dodwell raised a second question, asking what is meant by neti neti. Answer. There is now wrong identification of the self with the body, senses etc. You proceed to discard these and this is neti. This can be done only by holding to the one which cannot be discarded. That is E.D. alone. 21st February 1937 Talk 3, 167 a Marathi lady, a casual visitor then taking leave, was almost on the point of bursting into tears, she asked. I know that Mukti is impossible in one life. Still may I not have peace of mind in this life? The master looked at her very kindly and said smiling softly. Life and all else are in Brahman alone. Brahman is here and now. Investigate. Disciple, I am practicing meditation for a number of years. Yet my mind is not steady and cannot be brought to bear on meditation. Answer, again looked steadily at her and said, Do it now and all will be right. Talk 3, 168 A young girl of 9 or 10, whose mother is a research scholar in Sanskrit in the University of Madras, accompanied by Mr. Morris Fridman met Sri Bhagavan in Palakathu at about twelve noon. Sri Bhagavan, as usual with him, kindly smiled on her. He asked Sri Bhagavan, Why is there misery on earth? Answer, due to karma. Disciple, who makes karma bear fruits? Answer, God. Disciple, God makes us do karma and gives bad fruits for bad karma. Is it fair? 
Three Bhagavan almost laughed and was very pleased with her. Later he was coaxing her to read something on returning to the hall. Since then he is watching her. 22nd February 1937 Talk 369 A Marathi gentleman and wife, past middle age, are on a visit here. They are quiet and simple. Both of them tearfully took leave and the gentleman even sobbed out a prayer for Sri Bhagavan's grace. Sri Bhagavan gazed at them, with his lips parted showing the row of white teeth. His eyes also had a tear in them. Talk 3, 170. Sri Bhagavan was in the cattle shed. People were working and he watched their work for a short time. Then someone came and said that a large number of visitors were waiting in the hall. Sri Bhagavan in his calm way said, Yes, yes, you do your work. Let me go for mine. People are waiting for me. Let me go. Then he left the place. 23rd, February, 1937 Talk 3, 171 there was a group of three middle-aged Andras on a visit to Sri Bhagavan. One of them kneeled and asked, I am performing Hatha Yoga, namely Baisti, Dadi, Neti, etc. I find a blood vessel hardened in the ankle. Is it a result of yoga? Answer, the blood vessel would have hardened under any circumstances. It does not trouble you as much now as it would otherwise. Hatha Yoga is a cleaning process. It also helps peace of mind after leading you to Pranayama. Disciple, may I do Pranayama? Is it useful? Answer, Pranayama is an aid for the control of mind. Only you should not stop with Pranayama. You must proceed further to Pratyahara Dharana Dayana and Samadhi. Full results are reaped finally. Another of the group asked, How are lust, anger, acquisitiveness, confusion, pride and jealousy overcome? Answer by Diana. Disciple, what is Diana? Answer, Diana is holding on to a single thought and putting off all other thoughts. Disciple, what is to be meditated upon? Answer, anything that you prefer. Disciple, Siva, Vishnu and Gayatri are said to be equally efficacious. What should I meditate upon? Answer, anyone you like best. They are all equal in their effect. But you should stick to one. Disciple, how to meditate? Answer, concentrate on that one whom you like best. If a single thought prevails, all other thoughts are put off and finally eradicated. So long as diversity prevails there are bad thoughts. When the object of love prevails only good thoughts hold the field. Therefore hold on to one thought only. Bhayana is the chief practice. A little later Sri Bhagavan continued. Diana means fight. As soon as you begin meditation other thoughts will crowd together, gather force and try to sink the single thought to which you try to hold. The good thought must gradually gain strength by repeated practice. After it has grown strong the other thoughts will be put to flight. This is the battle royal always taking place in meditation. One wants to rid oneself of misery. It requires peace of mind which means absence of perturbation owing to all kinds of thoughts. Peace of mind is brought about by Diana alone. Disciple what is the need then for pranayama? Answer, pranayama is meant for one who cannot directly control the thoughts. It serves as a brake to a car. But one should not stop with it, as I said before, but must proceed to pratyahara, dharana and dhyana. After the fruition of dhyana, the mind will come under control even in the absence of pranayama. The asana's postures help pranayama which helps Dhyana in its turn, and peace of mind results. Here is the purpose of Hatha Yoga. Later Sri Bhagavan continued, When Dhyana is well established it cannot be given up. 
It will go on automatically even when you are engaged in work, play, or enjoyment. It will persist in sleep too. Diana must become so deep rooted that it will be natural to one. Disciple, what right or action is necessary for the development of Diana? Answer, Diana is itself the action, the right, and the effort. It is the most intense and potent of all. No other effort is necessary. Disciple, is not Japa necessary? Answer, is Diana not Vax speech? Why is Japa necessary for it? If Diana is gained, there is no need for anything else. Disciple, is not a vow of silence helpful? Answer, a vow is only a vow. It may help Diana to some extent. But what is the good of keeping the mouth closed and letting the mind run riot? If the mind be engaged in Diana, where is the need for speech? Nothing is as good as Diana. Did one take to action with a vow of silence, where is the good of the vow? Disciple, what is John Amarga? Answer, I have been saying it for so long. What is Jhana? Jhana means realization of the truth. It is done by Diana. Diana helps you to hold on to truth to the exclusion of all thoughts. Disciple, why are there so many gods mentioned? Answer, the body is only one. Still, how many functions are performed by it? The source of all the functions is only one. It is in the same way with the gods also. Disciple, why does a man suffer misery? Answer, misery is due to multifarious thoughts. If the thoughts are unified and centered on a single item, there is no misery, but happiness is the result. Then even the thought I do something is absent, nor will there be an eye on the fruit of action. Hawk 3. 172. Disciple, horripilation, sobbing voice, joyful tears, etc., are mentioned in Atma Vidya Vilasa and other works. Are these found in Samadhi or before or after? Answer, all these are the symptoms of exceedingly subtle modes of mind vrittis. Without duality they cannot remain. Tamadi is perfect peace where these cannot find place. After emerging from Samadhi, the remembrance of the state gives rise to these symptoms. In Bhakti Marga path of devotion these are the precursors to Samadhi. Disciple, are they not so in the path of Jhana? Answer, maybe. There is no definiteness about it. It depends on the nature of the individual. Individuality entirely lost, these cannot find a place. Even the slightest trace of it being present, these symptoms become manifest. Manakavachigar and other saints have spoken of these symptoms. They say tears rush forth involuntarily and irrepressibly. Though aware of tears, they are unable to repress them. I had the same experience when I was staying Virupaksha cave. Disciple, sleep state is said to be the experience of bliss, yet on recollecting it the hairs do not stand on end. Why should they do so, if the samadhi state is recollected? Answer, samadhi means sleep and waking state jagrat sashapti. Bliss is overpowering and the experience is very clear, whereas it is different in sleep. Disciple, can we put it that in sleep there is no unhappiness, nor happiness, in other words the experience is negative not positive. Answer, but the recollection is positive, I slept happily, says the man. So there must be the experience of happiness in sleep. Disciple, does bliss consist only in the absence of unhappiness, or is it anything positive? Answer, it is positive. Loss of unhappiness and rise of happiness are simultaneous. Disciple, can it be that the recollection of happiness in sleep is not clear and so there is no horripilation, etc.? Answer, the bliss of samadhi is a perfectly clear experience and its recollection also is similar. But the experience of sleep is otherwise. 
28th, February, 1937, Talk 3, 173. The Maharaja of Mysore had a private interview with Sri Bhagavan in the newly built bathroom from 9.15 to 9.30 a.m. His Highness saluted Sri Bhagavan placing his head on Sri Bhagavan's feet and said, I have read Sri Bhagavan's life and long had a desire to meet him, but my circumstances are such that intentions of this kind cannot easily be carried into effect. Nor can I stay here as other disciples can, considering all my limitations. While I remain here for about fifteen minutes, I shall now pray only for thy grace. On departure H.H. again saluted Sri Bhagavan as before and left after presenting two fine shawls and some money to the office. 13th March, 1937 Talk 3, 174 the Maharaja of Travancore had an interview from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Their Highnesses the Maharaja and the Maharani of Travancore who arrived at Taravanamalai by the 8 a.m. train visited the Asramam. At 4 p.m. the public were excluded from the hall where Bhagavan sat. Even devotees who were daily visiting the hall were by a sad mistake excluded from the interview. The royal party was introduced to Sri Bhagavan by a retired district magistrate. Two aides de camp, the private secretary to the Maharaja, some officials of the Travancore state, and an advocate of Mylapur were present. The discussion started by the district magistrate went on about manas, concentration, realization, purpose of creation, etc. Her Highness put some questions expressing her doubts, and they were all explained by Sri Bhagavan. The Maharaja also took part in the discussion. The whole conversation was in Tamil and Malayalam. During the visit of the royal family of Travancore, Her Highness appeared very cultured, vivacious and conversant with Malayalam, Tamil and English. Most of the questions were put by Her Highness. One of the questions was, Disciple, what is the purpose of creation? Answer, it is to give rise to this question, investigate the answer to this question, and finally abide in the supreme or rather the primal source of all, including the self. The investigation will resolve itself into one of quest for the self and cease only after the non-self is sifted away and the self realized in its purity and glory. Disciple, how is the investigation to start? Answer, the self is plain to all and the starting also equally plain. Disciple, what is the starting point for one in my stage of development? Answer, each one has some method of upasana or japa. If that is pursued in all sincerity with due perseverance, it will automatically lead to the investigation of the self. The writer of these notes was not present and the above was gathered from one of the attendants of Sri Maharshi. 21st March, 1937 Talk 3, 175 a middle-aged Canaris visitor asked about a karma actionless act. Answer, whatever one does after the ego has vanished is a karma. Talk 3, 176 A learned Telugu visitor who had composed a song in praise of Sri Bhagavan, read it out, placed it at his feet and saluted. After a time he asked for Upadza. Answer, the Upadza is contained in Upadza Saram. Disciple, but oral and personal instruction is valuable. Answer, if there be anything new and hitherto unknown Upadza will be appropriate. Here it happens to be stilling the mind and remaining free from thoughts. Disciple, it looks impossible. Answer, but it is precisely the pristine and eternal state of all. Disciple, it is not perceived in our everyday active life. Answer. Everyday life is not divorced from the eternal state. So long as the daily life is imagined to be different from the spiritual life these difficulties arise. If the spiritual life is rightly understood, the active life will be found to be not different from it. 
and the mind be got at by the mind on looking for it as an object. The source of the mental functions must be sought and gained. That is the reality. One does not know the self owing to the interference of thoughts. The self is realized when thoughts subside. Disciple, only one in a million pursues sadhanas to completion. Bh. Geta Romans 7 3. Answer. Whenever the turbulent mind wavers, then and there pull it and bring it under control. Bh. Hit of the I 26. Seen the mind with the mind manasa mana alokya, so proclaim the Upanishads. Disciple, is the mind in Upadhi limiting adjunct? Answer, yes. Disciple, is the Sindrasya world real satya? Answer, it is true in the same degree as the seer drashta, subject, object and perception form the triad tripiti. There is a reality beyond these three. These appear and disappear, whereas the truth is eternal. Disciple, these tripiti sambhava are only temporal. Answer, yes if one recognizes the self even in temporal matters these will be found to be non-existent, rather inseparate from the self, and they will be going on at the same time. 22nd March, 1937 Talk 3, 177 a middle-aged Andhra visitor. A man is said to be divine. Why then does he have regrets? Answer. Divinity refers to the essential nature. The regrets are of Prakriti. Disciple. How is one to overcome regrets? Answer. By realizing the divinity in him. Disciple. How? Answer. By practice. Disciple, what kind of practice? Answer, meditation. Disciple, mind is not steady while meditating. Answer, it will be all right by practice. Disciple, how is the mind to be steadied? Answer, by strengthening it. Disciple, how to strengthen it? Answer, it grows strong by satsanga the company of the wise. Disciple, shall we add prayers, etc.? Answer, yes. Disciple, what of the one who has no regrets? Answer, he is an accomplished yogi. There is no question about him. Disciple, people cite disasters for example, earthquakes, famines, etc. to disprove God. How shall we meet their contention? Answer, Wherefrom have they come, those who argue? Disciple, they say nature. Answer, some call it nature, others God. Disciple, are we to keep anything against a rainy day, or to live a precarious life for spiritual attainments? Answer, God looks after everything. 27th, March, 1937 Talk 378 in the course of a conversation with an Andhra visitor, Sri Bhagavan quoted, Asam siyam mahabaho mano durnagraham chalam abhyasna tu kantaya virajina cha dayat. B.H. Hita C.H. B.I. 35 Without doubt, O mighty armed hero, the mind is restless, hard to curb. Yet by constant effort, Partha, matched with detachment, curbed it is. To explain Varajya Sri Bhagavan again quoted, Thangopa Prabhavan Kamams Tayak Asarvan Asashata Manasai Vandriyagramam Vinyamiya Samantata. Th. The I-24 having cast out without remains all longing born of thought for self, having drawn and by mind alone his team of senses from all sides as for practice abhyasa. Tanaisanar Puramit Buddhiya Dhritagridaya Atma Samstha Mana Kartavina Kinchadapi Chintayat. Yai, 25 by slow approaches let him commit rest, with patient, rock-poised will. His mind at home and selfhood pure, let him create no thought at all. Again for Jhana. Yato Yato Nisharati Manas Chanchala Mastharam Tatastato Nimiat, at Atmaniva Vasam Nayat. 
the eye, twenty six though over and over the fickle mind, all restlessness, a wandering goes, still over and over let his regain control and poise it back in self. Thekin, April, 1937, Talk 3, 179. One termal pod of Nilimber, a Malay, Ali gentleman, asks Rebai Gavan for an explanation of Atma Vidya. Knowledge of the Self. Answer, Sri Bhagavan explained this short piece of five stanzas as follows. Chidambaram is the famous place of pilgrimage associated with Nandinar who sang that Atma Vidya is most difficult of attainment. Muruganar, a long-standing devotee of Sri Bhagavan, began however that Atma Vidya is the easiest of attainments. I, I add a sulabam is the burden of the song. In explanation of this extraordinary statement, he argued that Atma being the self is eternally obvious even to the least of men. The original statement and the subsequent reasoning are incompatible because there need be no attainment if the self is the substratum of all selves and so obvious too. Naturally he could not pursue the theme further and laid the first four lines composed by him before Sri Bhagavan for completion. Sri Bhagavan admitted the truth of the disciple's statement and pointed out why the self, though obvious, is yet hidden. It is the wrong identity of the self with the body, etc. Disciple, how did the wrong identity arise? Answer, due to thoughts. If these thoughts are put an end to, the real self should shine forth of itself. Disciple, how are these thoughts to be ended? Answer, find out their basis. All of them are strong on the single I thought. Quell it all others are quashed. Moreover, there is no use knowing all except the self. If the self is known all others become known. Hence is self-realization the primary and sole duty of man. Disciple, how to quell the I thought. Answer, if its source is sought it does not arise and thus it is quelled. Disciple, where and how to find it? Answer, it is in fact the consciousness which enables the individuals to function in different ways. Your consciousness is the self. All that is required to realize the self is to be still. Disciple, what can be easier than that? Answer, so Atma Vidya is the easiest of attainment. Talk 3, 180. A European gentleman asked, How do you answer the question, Who are you? Answer, ask yourself the question, Who am I? Disciple, please tell me how you have found it. I shall not be able to find it myself. The I is the result of biological forces. It results in silence. I want to know how the master finds it. Answer, is it found only by logic? The scientific analysis is due to intellect. Disciple, according to Bose, nature does not make any difference between a worm and a man. Answer, what is nature? Disciple, it is that which exists. Answer, how do you know the existence? Disciple, by my senses. Answer, my implies your existence. But you are speaking of another's existence. You must exist to speak of my senses. There cannot be my without I. Disciple, I am a poor creature. I come to ask you, great master, that you are what this existence is. There is no special significance in the word existence. He exists, I exist, and others exist. What of that? Answer, the existence of anyone posited shows your own existence. Existence is your nature. Disciple, there is nothing strange in anything existing. Answer, how do you know its existence rather than your own existence? Disciple, what is new in the existence of anything? I take up your book and read there that the one question one should ask oneself is who am I? I want to know who are you? I have my own answer. 
If another says the same and so too millions of others, there is the probability of the self. I want a positive answer for the question and no playing with words. Answer, in this way, you are in the region of probabilities at the best. Disciple, yes. There are no certainties. Even God cannot be proved to be absolute certainty. Answer, leave God alone for the time being. What of yourself? Disciple, I want confirmation of the self. Answer, you seek the confirmation from others. Each one though addressed as you styles himself I. Confirmation is only from I. There is no you at all. All are comprised in I. The other can be known only when the self is posited. The others do not exist without the subject. Disciple, again this is nothing new. When I was with Sir Raman, he told me that the theory of smell could be explained from his theory of light. Smell need no longer be explained in terms of chemistry. Now, there is something new, it is progress. That is what I mean when I say that there is nothing new in all the statements I hear now. Answer. I is never new. It is eternally the same. Disciple, do you mean to say that there is no progress? Answer. Progress is perceived by the outgoing mind. Everything is still when the mind is introverted and the self is sought. Disciple. The sciences, what becomes of them? Answer, they all end in the self. The self is their finality. It was 5 p.m. Sri Bhagavan left the hall, and the gentleman left for the station. Talk 3, 181. Mr. Bose, the Bengali engineer, asked the meaning of the last stanza of Atmavidya knowledge of the self. Sri Bhagavan explained on the following lines. There is the world perceived, the perception is only apparent, it requires location for existence and light. Such existence and light are simultaneous with the rise of mind. Though the physical existence and illumination are part of mental existence and illumination. The latter is not absolute, for the mind rises and sinks. The mind has its substratum in the self which is self-evident, in other words its existence and self-luminosity are obvious. That is absolute being continuous in sleep, waking and dream states also. The world consists of variety which is the function of the mind. The mind shines by reflected light, in other words light reflected from the self. Just as the pictures in a cinema show are seen only in diffused, in other words artificial light, but not in a strong glare or in thick darkness, so also the world pictures are perceptible only in diffused, in other words reflected light of the self through the darkness of avidya ignorance. The world cannot be seen either in pure ignorance as in sleep or in pure light as in self-realization. Avidya is the cause of variety. The engineer said that he understood it only intellectually. Answer. Because intellect holds you at present, in other words you are in the grip of intellect in the waking state when you discuss these matters. Later it was added that grace is needed for realization. The engineer asked how grace has to be got. Answer. Grace is the self. It is not manifest because of ignorance prevailing. Srata it will become manifest. Srata grace, light, spirit are all synonymous with the self. 5th, April, 19, 137, Talk 3, 182. A Telugu gentleman quiet in look but learned in philosophy asked Sri Bhagavan about Manalaya. Sri Bhagavan said that everything is contained in Upadsasaram, a copy of which the man was holding in his hand. Disciple, what is mind? Answer, see what it is. Disciple, it is Sankalpa Vikalpatmaka made up of thoughts and their changes. Answer, who Sankalpa thought? Disciple, Sankalpa is the nature of the mind. Answer, of what is the Sankalpa? 
disciple, of the externalities? Answer, quite so. Is that your nature? Disciple, it is of the mind. Answer, what is your nature? Disciple, Sada Chaitanya pure conscious light. Answer, then why do you worry about Sankalpa and the rest? Disciple, the mind is admitted to be changing an unsteady Chanchala and Asthira. Answer, it is also said in the same place that the mind is to be introverted and made to merge into the self, that the practice must be long because it is slow and must be continued until it is totally merged in the self. Disciple, I want prasad in other words grace for it. Answer, it is always with you. All that is required of you is not to confound yourself with the extrovert mind but to abide as the self. That is prasad. The gentleman saluted and retired. Talk 3, 183. Thwami Lok Sananda a Sanyasi as Sri Bhagavan. Is there prarabdha for a Jivan Makta? Answer, who is the questioner? From whom does the question proceed? Is it a Jivan Makta who is asking? Disciple, no, I am not a Makta as yet. Answer, then why not let the Jivan Makta ask the question for himself? Disciple, the doubt is for me. Answer, quite so. The Ajani has doubt but not Ajani. Disciple, according to the creed that there is no creation Ajatavada, the explanations of Sri Bhagavan are faultless, but are they admissible in other schools? Answer, there are three methods of approach in Advaitavada. 1. The Ajatavada is represented by no loss, no creation, no one bound, no sadhaka, no one desirous of liberation, no liberation. This is the Supreme Truth. Mandakya Karaka 2, 32 According to this, there is only one and it admits of no discussion. 2. Drishti Srishtavada is illustrated thus. Simultaneous creation. There are two friends sleeping side by side. One of them dreams that he goes to Benares with his friend and returns. He tells his friend that both of them have been in Benares. The other denies it. That statement is true from the standpoint of one and the denial from that of the other. 3. Srishti Drishtavada is plain gradual creation and knowledge of it. Karma is posited as past karma etc. Prarabdha, Agami and Sanchita. There must be kartrit, a doership and karta doer for it. Karma action cannot be for the body because it is insentient. Is only so long as the Hatma Bhuti I am the body idea lasts. After transcending the Hatma Bhuti one becomes a Jani. In the absence of that idea Bhuti there cannot be either Kartritva or Karta. Though a Jani has no karma, that is his experience. Otherwise he is not a Jani. However an Ajani identifies the Jani with his body, which the Jani does not do. Though the Ajani finds the Jani acting, because his body is active, and therefore he asks if the Jani is not affected by Parabya. The scriptures say that Jana is the fire which burns away all karma sarva karmani. Sarva all is interpreted in two ways. 1. To include Prarabdha and 2. To exclude it. In the first way, if a man with three wives dies, it is asked can two of them be called widows and the third not? All are widows. Though it is with Prarabdha, Agami and Sanchita. When there is no cart, none of them can hold out any longer. The second explanation is however given only to satisfy the inquirer. It is said that all karma is burnt away leaving Prarabdha alone. The body is said to continue in the functions for which it has taken its birth. That is Prarabdha. But from the Jani's point of view, there is only the self which manifests in such variety. There is no body or karma apart from the self, so that the actions do not affect him. Disciple, 
Is there no Dhyatma Buddhi? I am the body idea for the Jhani. If for instance, Sri Bhagavan be bitten by an insect, is there no sensation? Answer. There is the sensation and there is also the Dhyatma Buddhi. The latter is common to both Jhani and Ajani with this difference, that the Ajani thinks Diva Atma only the body is myself, whereas the Jhani knows all is of the self Atma Mayam Sarvam or Sarvam Kolvadam Brahma all this is Brahma. If there be pain let it be. It is also part of the self. Self is Purna perfect. Now with regard to the actions of the Jhani, they are only so called because they are ineffective. Generally the actions get embedded as samskaras in the individual. That can be only so long as the mind is fertile as in the case of the Ajani. With Ajani the mind is surmised, he has already transcended the mind. Because of his apparent activity the mind has to be inferred in his case, and that mind is not fertile like that of an Ajani. Hence it is said that Ajani's mind is Brahman. Brahman is certainly no other than the Jhani's mind. The Vasanas cannot bear fruit in that soil. His mind is barren, free from Vasanas, etc. However, since Prarabdha was conceited in his case, Vasanas also must be supposed to exist. They exist there only for enjoyment Bhagahetu. That is to say, actions bear twofold fruits the one for enjoyment of their fruits, and the other leaving an impress on the mind in the form of samskaras for subsequent manifestation in future births. The Jhani's mind being barren cannot entertain seeds of karma. His vasana simply exhaust themselves by activities ending in enjoyment only Baba Hituka karma. In fact, his karma is seen only from the Ajani's standpoint. He remains actionless only. He is not aware of the body as being apart from the self. How can there be liberation mukti or bondage banda for him? He is beyond both. He is not bound by karma either now or ever. There is no jivan mukta or vaita mukta according to him. Disciple, from all this it looks as if a jani who has scorched all the vasanas is the best, and that he would remain inactive like a stock or stone. Answer. No, not necessarily. The sanas do not affect him. Is it not itself of a sana that one remains like a stock or stone? The haja is the state. Talk 3, 184. Conversation turned on the sanas. Sri Bhagavan said that good tendencies and bad ones suvasana and kivasana are concomitant. The one cannot exist without the other. Maybe that the one class predominates. Good tendencies suvasana are cultivated, and they must also be finally destroyed by jhana. A young prodigy was mentioned. Sri Bhagavan remarked that latent impressions of previous births per vajama samskara were strong in him. Disciple, how does it manifest as the ability to cite well-known saints? Is it vasana, in the form of a seed only? Answer, yes. Predisposition samskara is acquired knowledge and kept in stock. It manifests under favorable circumstances. One with strong samskara understands the thing when presented to him much quicker than another with no samskara or weak samskara. Disciple, does it hold good with inventors also? Answer, there is nothing new under the sun. What we call inventions or discoveries are merely rediscoveries by competent men with strong samskara in the directions under consideration. Disciple, is it so with Newton, Einstein, etc.? Answer, yes. Certainly. But the samskaras, however strong, will not manifest unless in a calm and still mind is within the experience of everyone that his attempts to rake up his memory fail, whereas something flashes in the mind when he's calm and quiet. Mental quiet is necessary even for remembrance of forgotten things. 
The so-called genius is one who worked hard in his past births and acquired knowledge and kept it in store as samskaras. He now concentrates his mind until it merges in the subject. In that stillness the submerged ideas flash out. That requires favorable conditions also. 6th, April, 1937 Talk 3, 100, 85 Mr. Van Cotter Rao, an Andhra gentleman in the course of conversation with Sri Bhagavan, was told, Until you gain jhana you cannot understand the state of a jhani. There is no use asking about the work of Asphara and the rest. Them ask why Saiva went naked in Daruka forest and spoiled the chastity of the Rishi's wives. Puranas which record this incident have also said that Seva had previously saved the Devas and the universe by consuming the poison Halahala at the time of churning the ocean of milk. He who could save the world from the deadly poison and lead the sages to emancipation had also wandered nude amongst their women. Their actions are incomprehensible to ordinary intellects. One must be a Jani to understand a Jani or a Svera. Disciple, should we not learn the Jani's ways and imitate them? Answer, it is no use. The Sanas are of four kinds. 1. Pure Sutta 2, Impure Malina 3, Mixed Madhya and 4, Good Sat, according as the Janis are the Supreme Varishta, the best Varya, better Vara and good Vit. Their fruits are reaped in three ways. 1. Of our own will Swecha, and by others will Percha and involuntarily Anisha. There have been Janis like Gautama, Vyasa, Sukha and Yanaka. Disciple, was Vyasa also a Jani? Answer, yes. Certainly. Disciple, why then did the bathing angels don clothes when he appeared before them, but not when Sukha passed? Answer, that same Vyasa sent Sukha to Danaka for instruction. Sukha was tested by Danaka, and finally he returned convinced of Vyasa's greatness. Disciple, is Jana the same as Erada? Answer, so it is. Disciple, what is the relation between Bhakti and Jana? Answer. Eternal, unbroken natural state is jhana. Does it not imply love of self? Is it not bhakti? Disciple. Idol worship does not seem good. They worship the formless God in Islam. Answer. What is their conception of God? Disciple, as immanence etc. Answer. Is not God even then endowed with attributes? Form is only one kind of attribute. One cannot worship God without some notions. Any bhavana premises a God with attributes saguna. Moreover, where is the use of discussing the form or formlessness of God? Find out if you have a form. You can then understand God. Disciple, I admit I have no form. Answer, all right. You have no form in sleep but in the waking state you identify yourself with a form. The which is your real state. That is understood to be without form on investigation. If you know yourself to be formless by your jhana, should you not concede the same amount of jhana to God and understand him to be formless? Disciple, but there is the world for God. Answer, how does the world appear? How are we? Knowing this, you know God. You will know if he is Siva or Vishnu or any other are all put together. Disciple, is Vaikuntha and Paramapada, in other words, in the transcendent self? Answer, where is Paramapada or Vaikuntha unless in you? Disciple, Vaikuntha etc. appear involuntarily. Answer, does this world appear voluntarily? The questioner returned no answer. Answer, the self-evident I, ignoring the self, goes about seeking to know the non-self. How absurd! Disciple, this is Samkhya Yoga. Being the culmination of all kinds of other yogas, how can it be understood to start with? 
Is not Bhakti antecedent to it? Answer, has not Sri Krishna started the Gita with Sankhya? Disciple, yes. I understand it now. Talk 3, 186. Disciple, in Sri Ramakrishna's life it is said that an idol, Ramla was animate. Is it true? Answer, can you account for the animation of this body? Is the movement of the idol more mysterious than the movement of this body? Disciple, metal does not move itself. Answer, is not the body a corpse? You will probably consider it a mystery if the corpse moves. Is that so? Talk 3, 187. Three persons came on a short visit, the eldest of them asked. There's one process of creation mentioned in the Upanishads and another in Puranas. Which of them is true? Answer, they are many and meant to indicate that the creation has a cause and a creator should be posited so that one might seek the cause. The emphasis is on the purpose of the theory and not on the process of creation. Moreover, the creation is perceived by someone. There are no objects without the subject. In other words, the objects do not come and tell you that they are, but it is you who says that there are the objects. The objects are therefore what the seer makes of them. They have no existence independent of the subject. Find out what you are and then you understand what the world is. That is the object of the theory. Disciple, the soul is only a small particle whereas the creation is so huge. How can we surmise it? Answer, the particle speaks of the huge creation. Where is the contradiction? Talk 3, 188. Later Sri Bhagavan continued. There are so many theories, scriptural and scientific. Have they reached any finality? They cannot. Brahman is said to be subtler than the subtlest, wider than the widest. Anu is an atom infinitesimal. It ends in subtle perception. The subtlety is of the sukshma body, in other words, the mind. Beyond the mind there is the self. The greatest of things are also conceptions, the conceptions are of the mind, beyond the mind there is the self. For the self is subtler than the subtlest. There may be any number of theories of creation. All of them extend outwardly. There will be no limit to them because time and space are unlimited. They are however only in the mind. See the mind time and space are transcended and the self is realized. Creation is explained scientifically or logically to one's own satisfaction. But is there any finality about it? Such explanations are called Krama Srishti gradual creation. On the other hand, Drishti Srishti simultaneous or sudden creation is Yugapad Srishti. Without the seer there are no objects seen. Find the seer and the creation is comprised in him. Why look outward and go on explaining the phenomena which are endless? Talk 3. 189. With regard to presents to Sri Bhagavan he observed. Why do they bring presents? Do I want them? Even if I refuse, they thrust presents on me. What for? If I accept them, I must yield to their wishes. It is like giving a bait to catch the fish. Is the angler anxious to feed the fish? No, he is anxious to feed on the fish. Vwami Loksananda, a sannyasi. What is meant by jhana and vijana? Answer. These words may mean differently according to the context. Jhana equals samanya jhana or pure consciousness. Vijana equals vice jhana. Vaisa may be one, worldly relative knowledge and two, transcendental self-realization. Mind is necessary for vaisya, it modifies the purity of absolute consciousness. The vajana represents intellect and the sheath composing it, in other words, relative knowledge. In that case jhana is common samanya running through vajana samjana, prajana, ajana, madi deity, 
different modes of knowledge vied, Adir Upanishad, Chapter 3, or Jhana, is Paraksha, hearsay, and Vijana, is a Parakska, direct perception, as in Jhana, Vijana, Triptatma, one perfectly content with Jhana and Vijana. Disciple, what is the relation between Brahman and Isvara? Answer, Brahman is called Isvara in relation to the world. Disciple, is it possible to speak to Isvara as Sri Ramakrishna did? Answer, when we can speak to each other, why should we not speak to Isvara in the same way? Disciple, then why does it not happen with us? Answer, it requires purity and strength of mind and practice in meditation. Disciple, does God become evident if the above conditions exist? Answer, such manifestations are as real as your own reality. In other words, when you identify yourself with the body as in Jagra, you see gross objects, when in subtle body or in mental plane as in Svapna, you see objects, equally subtle in the absence of identification as in Sushapti, you see nothing. The objects seen bear a relation to the state of the seer. The same applies to visions of God. By long practice the figure of God, as meditated upon, appears in dream and may later appear in Jagrat also. Disciple, is that the state of God realization? Answer, listen to what happened once years ago. There was a saint by name Namdev. He could see, talk and play with Vathoba as we do with one another. He used to spend most of his time in the temple playing with Vathoba. On one occasion the saints had assembled together, among whom was one J. Nandav of well-established fame and eminence. J. Nandav asked Gora Kumbar, a potter saint, to use his proficiency in testing the soundness of baked pots and find out which of the assembled saints was properly baked clay. Though Gora Kumbar took his stick and gently struck each one's head in joke as if to test. When he came to Namdev the latter protested in a huff, all laughed and hooted. Namdev was enraged and he sought Vithoba in the temple. Vithoba said that the saints knew best, this unexpected reply upset Namdev all the more. He said, You are God. I converse and play with you. Can there be anything more to be gained by man? Vithoba persisted. The saints know. Namdev, tell me if there is anything more real than you. Vithoba, we have been so familiar with each other that my advice will not have the desired effect on you. Take the beggar saint in the forest and know the truth. Accordingly Namdev sought out the particular saint mentioned by Vithoba. Namdev was not impressed with the holiness of the man for he was nude, dirty, and was lying on the floor with his feet resting on a linga. Namdev wondered how this could be a saint. The saint, on the other hand, smiled on Namdev and asked, Did Vithoba send you here? This was a great surprise to Namdev who was now more inclined to believe the man to be great. Though Namdev asked him, You are said to be a saint, why do you desecrate the Langha? The saint replied, Indeed, I am too old and weak to do the right thing. Please lift my feet and place them where there is no linga. Namdev accordingly lifted the saint's feet and placed them elsewhere. But there was again a linga below them. Wherever the feet were placed then and there appeared a linga underneath. Namdev finally placed the feet on himself and he turned into a linga. Then Namdev understood that God was immanent and learnt the truth and departed. He went home and did not go to the temple for several days. Thoba now sought him out in his home and asked why Namdev would not go to the temple to see God. Namdev said, Is there a place where he is not? The moral of the story is clear. Visions of God have their place below the plane of self-realization. Talk 3, 190 Disciple when I read Sri Bhagavan's works I find that investigation is said to be the one method for realization. Answer. 
Yes, that is Vichera. Disciple, how is that to be done? Answer, the questioner must admit the existence of his self. I am is the realization. To pursue the clue till realization is Vichara. Vichara and realization are the same. Disciple, it is elusive. What shall I meditate upon? Answer, meditation requires an object to meditate upon whereas there is only the subject without the object in Vichara. Meditation differs from Vichara in this way. Disciple, is not Diana one of the efficient processes for realization? Answer. Diana is concentration on an object. It fulfills the purpose of keeping away diverse thoughts and fixing the mind on a single thought, which must also disappear before realization. But realization is nothing new to be acquired. It is already there, but obstructed by a screen of thoughts. All our attempts are directed for lifting this screen and then realization is revealed. If a true seeker is advised to meditate, many may go away satisfied with the advice. But someone among them may turn round and ask, Who am I to meditate on an object? Such a one must be told to find the self. That is the finality. That is Vichara. Disciple, will Vichara alone do in the absence of meditation? Answer, Vichara is the process and the goal also. I am is the goal and the final reality. To hold to it with effort is Vichara. When spontaneous and natural, it is realization. Talk 3, 191 The same sannyasi visitor Swami Loksananda asked about Samadhi. Answer, 1. Holding on to reality is Samadhi. 2. Holding on to reality with effort is Savakalpa Samadhi. 3. Merging in reality and remaining unaware of the world is Nirvikalpa Samadhi. 6. 4. Merging in ignorance and remaining unaware of the world is sleep. Head bends but not in Samadhi. 5. Remaining in the primal, Pure natural state without effort is Sahaja Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Disciple, it is said that one remaining in Nirvikalpa Samadhi for 21 days must necessarily give up the physical body. Answer, Samadhi means passing beyond Yatma Bhuti I am the body idea and non-identification of the body with the self is a foregone conclusion. There are said to be persons who have been immersed in Nirvikalpa, Samadhi for a thousand years or more. Talk 3. 192. Thwami Loksananda continued another series of questions. Disciple, they say that Kundalini must be roused before realization and that its awakening makes the body feel hot. Is that so? Answer, the yogis call it Kundalini Sakti. It is the same as Vridi 7 of the form of God Bhagavatakar of Vridi of the Bhaktas and Vridi of the form of Brahman Brahmakar of Vridi of the Janis. It must be preliminary to realization. Sensation produced may be said to be hot. Disciple, Kundalini is said to be of the shape of a serpent but Vridis cannot be so. It can be further subdivided thus. Thavakalpa Samadhi Nirvikalpa Samadhi External internal external internal drisyanavita the mind jumps from one object to another. Keep it steady, fixed on the reality behind them sabda nuvita, there are the external phenomena, which are said to have their origin from the single reality. Search for it and hold on to it. The mind is afflicted by kama, krata, etc. See where from they rise and how they have their being. Hold on to their source. Merging in the one reality, merging in the inmost being underlying all the phenomena which is the one reality giving and remaining unaware of the rise to all thoughts etc. and transitory manifestations, remaining unaware of anything else. Their all manner of this state is compared to the this state is compared to a thoughts which rise up from waveless ocean whose waters flame unagitated by currents the reality within, and are still and placid, 
of air, but burning quite manifest themselves. Hold on to ditto that reality. All these four kinds of Savakalpa Samadhi are attended with when these kinds of Nirvikalpa Samadhi are not attended effort with effort, and it is realized that the waveless ocean of external Samadhi and the steady flame of internal Samadhi are identical, the state is said to be Sahaja Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Answer. The Kundalini of Jhana Marga is said to be the heart which is also described in various ways as a network of nadis of the shape of a serpent, of a lotus bud, etc. Disciple, is this heart the same as the physiological heart? Answer, no Sri Ramana Gita defines it as the origin of the I thought. Disciple, but I read that it is on the right of the chest. Answer, it is all meant to help the bhavana imagery. There are books dealing with six centers Shad Chakra and many other Lakshya centers, internal and external. The description of the heart is one among so many Lakshyas. But it is not necessary. It is only the source of the I thought. That is the ultimate truth. Disciple, may we take it to be the source of the Antakaranas? Answer, the inner organs Antakaranas are classified as five. 1. Knowledge Jhana 2. Mind Manas 3. Intellect Buddhai 4. Memory Chitta and 5. The Ego Ahankara Some say only the latter 4 others say only 2 namely 1. Manas Mind and 2. Ahankara, the ego, still others say the Antakarana is only one whose different functions make it appear differently and hence its different names. Heart is thus the source of the Antakaranas. There is the body which is insentient, there is the self which is eternal and self-luminous, in between the two, there has arisen a phenomenon namely the ego which goes under these different names, mind manas, Intellect Buddhi, Memory Chitta, the Ego Ahankara, Power Sakti, Life Current Prana, etc. Take your source, the search takes you to the heart automatically. The Antakaranas are only ideas Kalpana to explain the subtle body, Sukshma Sarira. The physical body Sarira is made up of the elements earth, air, fire, water, and ether, it is insentient. The self is pure and self-luminous, and thus self-evident. The relation between the two is sought to be established by positing a subtle body, composed of the subtle aspects of the five elements on the one hand, and the reflected light of the self on the other. In this way the subtle body which is synonymous with the mind, is both sentient and insentient, in other words, abhasa. Again, by the play of the pure quality Savaguna on the elements, their brightness Sava aspect manifests as the mind Manas, and the senses Jainanandrias, by the play of Raja's active quality, the Raja active aspect manifests as life Prana and limbs Karmandrias, by the play of dullness Tamas, the Tama dark aspect manifests as the gross phenomena of the body, etc. Disciple but the mind is reputed to have these three qualities also. Answer, yes. There is purity sava in sava in the pure quality, activity in it rajas in sava, and dullness also tamas in sava, and so on, sada sava is quite pure, misramic sava is a combination of sava with other qualities. The quality sava implies only its predominance over the other two qualities. Later Sri Bhagavan continued. The intricate maze of philosophy of different schools is said to clarify matters and reveal the truth. But in fact they create confusion where no confusion need exist. To understand anything there must be the self. The self is obvious. Why not remain as the self? What need to explain the non-self? Take the Vedanta for instance. They say there are fifteen kinds of prana. The student is made to commit the names to memory and also their functions. The air goes up and is called prana, 
goes down and is called upon operates the indrias and is called something. Why all this? Why do you classify, give names and enumerate the functions and so on? Is it not enough to know that one prana does the whole work? The antakarana thinks, desires, wills, reasons, etc., and each function is attributed to one name such as mind, intellect, etc. Has anyone seen the pranas or the antakaranas? Have they any real existence? They are mere conceptions. When and where will such conceptions end? Consider the following. A man sleeps. He says on waking that he slept. The question is asked. Why does he not say in his sleep that he is sleeping? The answer is given that he is sunk in the self and cannot speak like a man who has dived in water to bring out something from the bottom. The diver cannot speak under water when he has actually recovered the articles he comes out and speaks. Well, what is the explanation? Being in water, water will flow into his mouth if he were to open the mouth for speaking. Is it not simple? But the philosopher is not content with this simple fact. He explains, saying that fire is the deity presiding over speech, that it is inimical to water and therefore cannot function. This is called philosophy, and the learners are struggling to learn all this. Is it not a sheer waste of time? Again the gods are said to preside over the limbs and senses of the individual Vyashti. They are the limbs and senses of Virat Samashti. So they go on explaining her, Anyagarbha, etc. Why should confusion be created and then explained away? Ah! Fortunate is the man who does not involve himself in this maze. I was indeed fortunate that I never took to it. Had I taken to it, I would probably be nowhere, always in confusion. My purva Vasana's former tendencies directly took me to the inquiry, Who am I? It was indeed fortunate. 11th, April, 19, 137, Talk 3, 193. Disciple, there is a short account of the spiritual experiences of St. Teresa in the March number of the Prabhuta Bharata. She was devoted to a figure of the Madonna which became animated to her sight, and she was in bliss. Is it the same as Aktapada? Answer, the animated figure indicates depth of meditation Dhyanabala. Aktapada prepares the mind for introversion. There is a process of concentration of mind on one's own shadow which in due course becomes animated and answers questions put to it. That is due to strength of mind or depth of meditation. Whatever is external is also transitory. Such phenomena may produce joy for the time being. But abiding peace, in other words, santi, does not result. This is got only by the removal of avidya ignorance. Talk 3, 194. Disciple, how is the mind to be stilled? Answer, looking at the mind with the mind, or fixing the mind in the self, brings the mind under control of the self. Disciple, is there any yoga, in other words, a process for it? Answer, vichara investigation alone will do. Talk 3, 195. Disciple, how is Purna Brahman to be attained? What is the method best suited to a grihesta? Answer, you have already said Purna, in other words, perfection. Are you apart from Purna? Apart from it will it be Purna? Not a part, how does the question arise? The knowledge that Brahman is Purna and that you are not a part from the same as the finality. See it, and you will find that you are not a Grihes, to or any limited being. Disciple, what are the Tattvas? Answer, knowledge of Purna Brahman will elucidate the other matters automatically. 12th, April, 1937, Talk 3, 196. A Dutch lady, Miss Gongrape, an ardent theosophist who had worked long in Java and is now living in Adyar, came here for a short visit. She asked, Theosophy speaks of Tana, 
meaning thirst for rebirth. What is its cause? Answer. Thirst for rebirth is the desire to be reborn so as to end successive births. A spirit is at present moribund, it must be revived so that rebirth may take place after the present apparent death. Forgetfulness of your real nature is the present death remembrance of it is the rebirth. It puts an end to successive births. Yours is eternal life. Disciple, I take tanha to mean clinging to life, the desire for eternal life. Answer, no doubt it is so. How does the desire arise? Because the present state is unbearable. Why? Because it is not your true nature. Had it been your real nature no desire would disturb you. How does the present state differ from your real nature? You are spirit in truth. However that spirit is wrongly identifying itself with the gross body. Body has been projected by the mind, the mind itself has originated from the spirit. If the wrong identification ceases, there will be peace and permanent intellable bliss. Disciple, life is of the body and rebirth is to incarnate in another body. Answer, mere change of body produces no effect. The ego associated with this body is transferred to another body. How can that satisfy anyone? Moreover, what is life? Life is existence which is yourself. That is life eternal. Otherwise can you imagine a time when you are not? That life is now conditioned by the body and you wrongly identify your being with that of the body. You are life unconditioned. These bodies attach themselves to you as mental projections and you are now afflicted by I am the body idea. If this idea ceases you are yourself. Where how were you before being born? Were you in sleep? How were you? You exist then too without the body. Then the ego arises and then the mind which projects the body. I am the body idea is the result. Because the body exists you say that it was born and that it will die and transfer the idea to the self saying that you are born and that you will die. In fact you remain without the body in sleep but now you remain with the body. The self can remain without the body but the body cannot exist apart from the self. I am the body thought is ignorance that the body is not apart from the self is knowledge. That is the difference between knowledge and ignorance. The body is a mental projection, the mind is the ego, and the ego rises from the self. So the body thought is distracting and strays away from the self. For whom is the body or the birth? It is not for the self, the spirit. It is for the non-self which imagines itself separate. So long as there is the sense of separation, there will be afflicting thoughts. The original source is regained and the sense of separation is put an end to, there is peace. Consider what happens when a stone is thrown up. It leaves its source and is projected up, tries to come down and is always in motion until it regains its source where it is at rest. So also the waters of the ocean evaporate, form clouds which are moved by winds, condense into water, fall as rain and the waters roll down the hill in streams and rivers until they reach their original source, the ocean, reaching which they are at peace. Thus you see, wherever there is a sense of separateness from the source there is agitation and movement until the sense of separateness is lost. So it is with yourself. Now that you identify yourself with the body, you think that you are separate from the spirit the true self. You must regain your source before the false identity ceases and you are happy. Gold is not an ornament but the ornament is nothing but gold. Whatever shape the ornament may assume and however different the ornaments are, there is only one reality namely gold. Though also with the bodies and the self. The single reality is the self. To identify oneself with the body and yet to seek happiness is like attempting to cross a river on the back of an alligator. 
the body identity is due to extroversion and the wandering of the mind. To continue in that state will only keep one in an endless tangle, and there will be no peace. Take your source, merge in the self, and remain all alone. Rebirth means discontent with the present state, and desire to be born where there will be no discontent. Birth's being of the body cannot affect the self. The self remains over even after the body perishes. The discontent is due to the wrong identity of the eternal self with the perishable body. The body is a necessary adjunct of the ego. If the ego is killed the eternal self is revealed in all its glory. Body is the cross. Jesus the Son of Man is the ego or I am the body idea. When he is crucified, he is resurrected as the glorious self, Jesus, the Son of God. Give up this life if thou wouldst live. Talk 3. 197. Disciple, fear is consequent on the possibility of non-existence. It pertains to the body. One is not aware of the body in sleep. One is not afraid of, but court sleep, whereas one dreads death. Why is this difference between the two outlooks? Answer. Desire of sleep or fear of death are when the mind is active and not in the respective states themselves. The mind knows that the body entity persists and reappears after sleep. Therefore sleep is not attended with fear, but the pleasure of non-bodily existence is sought. Whereas the mind is not sure of reappearance after the so-called death and dreads it. 14th, April, 1937 Talk 3, 198 Dandapani, a resident devotee now on a North Indian tour, sent an extract from the modern psychological review which stated that the dynamic center of the heart is on the right and not on the left, whereas the physical organ is on the left. Conversation followed on that subject. Answer. The Yoga Marga speaks of the six centers each of which must be reached by practice and transcended until one reaches Sahasrara where nectar is found, and thus immortality. The yogis say that one enters into the Paranadi which starts from the sacral plexus whereas the Jhanis say that the same Nadi starts from the heart. Reconciliation between the seeming why contradictory statements is effected in the secret doctrine which distinctly states the yogic Paranadi is from Miladhara and the Jhana Paranadi is from the heart. The truth is that the Paranadi should be entered. By yogic practice one goes down, then rises up, wanders all through until the goal is reached by Jhana Abhi as one settles down directly in the center. Disciple, is not para followed by Pasyanti etc.? Answer, you are speaking of Vak which is divided into one, para two, Pasyanti three, Madhyama and four, Vaikari. Vak is prana sakti whereas the mind is tejarupa or chit sakti. The sakti is the manifestation of the unmanifest origin. The yogis attach the highest importance to going up to Sahasrara, in other words, the brain center or the thousand petaled lotus. Some yo is say that there are other centers higher up with greater involutions, for example, one, hundred thousand one, hundred petaled or one, hundred million one, hundred eight petaled ones. Let us omit them for the present. They point out the scriptural statement that the life current enters the body through the fontanelle and argue that, Vyoga separation having come about that way, yoga union must also be effected in the reverse way. Therefore we must by yoga practice, gather up the pranas and enter the fontanelle for the consummation of yoga. The jhanas point out that the yogi assumes the existence of the body, its separateness from the self, and therefore advises effort for reunion by the practice of yoga. In fact, the body is in the mind which has the brain for its seat, which again functions by light borrowed from another source as admitted by the yogis themselves in their fontanelle theory. The jhani further argues, if the light is borrowed it must come from its native source. 
go to the source direct and do not depend on borrowed resources. Just as an iron ball comes into being separate from the mass of iron, gets fiery in fire, later cools down giving up the fire, but must again be made fiery to reunite with the original mass, so also the cause of separation must also form the factor of reunion. Again if there is an image reflected there must be a source and also accessories like the sun and a pot of water for reflection. To do away with the reflection either the surface is covered up corresponding to reaching the fontanelle according to the yogis where the water is drained away which is called tapas tapo brahmeti, tapas is brahman. That is to say, the thoughts or the brain activities are made to cease. This is Janamarga. All these are however on the assumption that the jiva is separate from the self or brahman. But are we separate? No, says the Jani. The ego is simply wrong identity of the self with the non-self, as in the case of a colorless crystal and its colored background. The crystal though colorless appears red because of its background. The background is removed the crystal shines in its original purity. Though it is with the self and the antakaranas. Still again the illustration is not quite appropriate. For the ego has its source from the self and is not separate like the background from the crystal. Having its source from the self, the ego must only be retraced in order that it might merge in its source. The center of the ego and its core is called the heart, the same as the self. A gentleman asked if the O is also reached the Anahata and thus realized the heart center as is done by the Janis but in a different way. Answer. Anahata is not the same as the heart center. If so, why should they wander further on to Sahasrara? Moreover, the question arises because of the sense of separateness persisting in us. We are never away from the heart center. Before reaching Anahata, or after passing it, one is only in the center. Whether one understands it or not, one is not away from the center. Practice of yoga or vichara is done, always remaining in the center only. Disciple, what is to be our sadhana? Answer, sadhana for the sadhaka is the sahaja of the seda. Sahaja is the original state, so that sadhana amounts to the removal of the obstacles to the realization of this abiding truth. Disciple, is concentration of mind one of the sadhanas? Answer. Concentration is not thinking one thing. It is, on the other hand, putting off all other thoughts which obstruct the vision of our true nature. All our efforts are only directed to lifting the veil of ignorance. Now it appears difficult to quell the thoughts. In the regenerate state, it will be found more difficult to call in thoughts. Were there things to think of? There's only the self. Thoughts can function only if there are objects. But there are no objects. How can thoughts arise at all? The habit makes us believe that it is difficult to cease thinking. If the error is found out, one would not be fool enough to exert oneself unnecessarily by way of thinking. Disciple, is not grace more effective than a biasa? Answer, Guru simply helps you in the eradication of ignorance. Does he hand over realization to you? Disciple, we are ignorant. Answer, inasmuch as you say you are ignorant, you are wise. Is he a madman who says that he is mad? Guru's grace is like a hand extended to help you out of water, or it makes your way easier for the removal of ignorance. Disciple, is it not like a medicine to cure the disease of avidya? Answer, what is medicine for? It is only to restore the patient to the original state of health. What is this talk of guru? Grace God, etc.? Does the guru hold you by the hand and whisper something in your ear? You imagine him to be like yourself. Because you are with a body you think that he is also a body in order to do something tangible to you. His work lies within. How is Guru gained? 
God, who is immanent, in his grace takes pity on the loving devotee and manifests himself as a being according to the devotee standard. The devotee thinks that he is a man and expects relationship as between bodies. But the guru, who is God or self-incarnate, works from within, helps the man to see the error of his ways, guides him in the right path until he realizes the self within. After such realization the disciple feels I was so worried before. I am after all the self, the same as before, but not affected to be anything, where is he who is miserable? He is nowhere to be seen. What should we do now? Only act up to the words of the Master, work within. Guru is both within and without. Though he creates conditions to drive you inward and prepares the interior to drag you to the center. Thus he gives a push from without and exerts a pull from within so that you may be fixed at the center. In sleep you are centered within. Simultaneously with waking your mind rushes out thinking this, that and all else. This must be checked. It is possible only for the agent who can work both within and without. Can he be identified with a body? We think that the world can be conquered by our efforts. When frustrated externally and driven internally, we feel, oh, oh, there is a power higher than man. The existence of the higher power must be admitted and recognized. The ego is a very powerful elephant and cannot be brought under control by anyone less than a lion, who is no other than the guru in this instance whose very look makes the elephant tremble and die. We will know in due course that our glory lies where we cease to exist. In order to gain that state, one should surrender oneself saying, Lord, Thou art my refuge. The master then sees, this man is in a fit state to receive guidance and so guides him. Disciple, what is self-surrender? Answer. It is the same as self-control. Control is affected by removal of samskaras which imply the functioning of the ego. The ego submits only when it recognizes the higher power. Such recognition is surrender or submission or self-control. Otherwise the ego remains stuck up like the image carved on a tower, making a pretense by its strained look and posture that it is supporting the tower on its shoulders. The ego cannot exist without the power, but thinks that it acts of its own accord. Disciple, how can the rebellious mind be brought under control? Answer, I either seek its source so that it may disappear or surrender that it may be struck down. Disciple, but the mind slips away from our control. Answer, be it so. Do not think of it. When you recollect yourself bring it back and turn it inward. That is enough. No one succeeds without effort. Mind control is not one's birthright. The successful few owe their success to their perseverance. A passenger in a train keeps his load on the head by his own folly. Let him put it down, he will find the load reaches the destination all the same. Similarly, let us not pose as the doers, but resign ourselves to the guiding power. Disciple, Swami Vivekananda, says that a spiritual guru can transfer spirituality substantially to the disciple. Answer, is there a substance to be transferred? Transfer means eradication of the sense of being the disciple. The master does it. Not that the man was something at one time and metamorphosed later into another. Disciple, is not grace the gift of the guru? Answer. God, grace and Kiru are all synonymous and also eternal and immanent. Is not the self already within? Is it for the Guru to bestow it by his look? If a Kiru thinks so, he does not deserve the name. The books say that there are so many kinds of Diksha, initiations, haste to Diksha, Sparsa Diksha, Chakshu Diksha, Manu Diksha, etc. They also say that the Guru makes some rites with fire, water, japa, 
mantras etc. and call such fantastic performances dictions, as if the disciple Sishya becomes ripe only after such processes are gone through by the Guru. If the individual is sought he is nowhere to be found. Such is the Guru. Such is Dakshinamurti. What did he do? He was silent, the disciples appeared before him. He maintained silence, the doubts of the disciples were dispelled, which means that they lost their individual identities. That is jhana and not all the verbiage usually associated with it. Silence is the most potent form of work. However vast and emphatic the sastras may be, they fail in their effect. The guru is quiet and peace prevails in all. His silence is more vast and more emphatic than all the sastras put together. These questions arise because of the feeling that having been here so long, heard so much, exerted so hard, one has not gained anything. The work proceeding within is not apparent. In fact the Guru is always within you. Hey, ye men of our says. O oh Lord! Coming with me all along the births, never abandoning me and finally rescuing me. Such is the experience of realization. From Ad Bhagavad Gita says the same in a different way, we too are not only now but have ever been so. Disciple, does not the Guru take a concrete form? Answer, what is meant by concrete? Because you identify your being with your body, you raise this question. Find out if you are the body. The Gita says Param Bhavam Ajanan to BH. He to Roman 9, Roman 2, that those who cannot understand the transcendental nature of Sri Krishna are fools, deluded by ignorance. The Master appears to dispel that ignorance. As the man of our puts it, he appears as a man to dispel the ignorance of a man, just as a deer is used as a decoy to capture the wild deer. He has to appear with a body in order to eradicate our ignorant, I am the body idea. 15th April, L9, 137 Talk 3, 199 Mr. Bose, the Bengali engineer, has since read Gaudapada Karakas and Sir S. Radhakrishnan's Indian philosophy and so asked questions as follows. Disciple, is there any genuine difference between dream experience and waking state? Answer, because you find the dream creations transitory in relation to the waking state there is said to be a difference. The difference is only apparent and not real. Disciple, is the waking state independent of existing objects? Answer, were it so the objects must exist without the seer, that is to say, the object must tell you that it exists. Does it do so? For example, does a cow moving in front of you say that she is moving? Or do you say of your own accord? There is a cow moving. The objects exist because of the seer cognizing them. Disciple, Gaudapada in Mandakya Karaka says that there is no difference between the two states from the standpoint of reality absolute. Answer, of course not. Disciple, I believe Bhagavan also says so. Professor Radha Krishnan in his Indian philosophy says that in his Brahma Sutra commentary Sri Sankara makes a distinction between the two states. Is it a fact? If so what is it? How can there be any distinction from the viewpoint of reality? So long as the mind exists in any form there will be distinction. But from the standpoint of Atman non-dual Brahman can there be any distinction? Answer. The dream is for the one who says that he is awake. In fact, wakefulness and dream are equally unreal from the standpoint of the Absolute. Disciple, in pure Advaita can evolution, creation or manifestation have any place? What about the theory of Vevar, ta, according to which Brahman appears as the world without forgetting its essential nature, like the rope appearing a snake? Answer. There are different methods of approach to prove the unreality of the universe. The example of the dream is one among them. 
Jagrat, Svapna and Sushupti are all treated elaborately in the scripture in order that the reality underlying them might be revealed. It is not meant to accentuate differences among the three states. The purpose must be kept clearly in view. Now they say that the world is unreal. Of what degree of unreality is it? Is it like that of a son of a barren mother or a flower in the sky mere words without any reference to facts? Whereas the world is a fact and not a mere word. The answer is that it is a superimposition on the one reality, like the appearance of a snake on a coiled rope seen in dim light. But here too, the wrong identity ceases as soon as the friend points out that it is a rope. Whereas in the matter of the world it persists even after it is known to be unreal. How is that? Again the appearance of water in a mirage persists even after the knowledge of the mirage is recognized. Though it is with the world. Though knowing it to be unreal it continues to manifest. But the water of the mirage is not sought to satisfy one's thirst. As soon as one knows that it is a mirage, one gives it up as useless and does not run after it for procuring water. Disciple, not so with the appearance of the world. Even after it is repeatedly declared to be false, one cannot avoid satisfying one's wants from the world. How can the world be false? Answer, it is like a man satisfying his dream wants by dream creations. There are objects, there are wants and there is satisfaction. The dream creation is as purposeful as the Jagrat world and yet it is not considered real. Thus we see that each of these illustrations serves a distinct purpose in establishing the stages of unreality. The realized sage finally declares that in the regenerate state the Jagrat world also is found to be as unreal as the dream world is found to be in the Jagrat state. Each illustration should be understood in its proper context, it should not be studied as an isolated statement. It is a link in a chain. The purpose of all these is to direct the seeker's mind towards the one reality underlying them all. Disciple is there that difference in the philosophy of Sankara and Gaudapada which the learned professor wants us to believe? Answer. The difference is only in our imagination. Disciple. Sir S. Radha Krishnan writes. The general idea pervading Gaudapada's work that bondage and liberation, the individual soul and the world are all unreal, makes a caustic critic observe that the theory which has nothing better to say than that an unreal soul is trying to escape from an unreal supreme good, may itself be an unreality. It is one thing to say that the unchangeable reality expressing itself in the changing universe without forfeiting its nature is a mystery, and another to dismiss the whole changing universe as a mere mirage. We have to play the game of life, we cannot do so with the conviction that the play is a show and all the prizes in it are mere blanks. No philosophy can consistently hold such a theory and be at rest with itself. The greatest condemnation of such a theory is that we are obliged to occupy ourselves with objects the existence and value of which we are continually denying in theory. It only shows that there is something else which includes and transcends the world but it does not imply the world is a dream. Answer, as was already said, the purpose of the whole philosophy is to indicate the underlying reality whether of the Jagrat Svatna and Sushupti states, or the individual souls, the world and God. There are three outlooks possible. 1. The Vaiva Harika the man sees the world in all its variety, surmises the creator and believes in himself as the subject. All these are thus reduced to the three fundamentals Jagat, Jiva and Isfera. He learns the existence of the creator and tries to reach him in order to gain immortality. If one is thus released from bondage, there are all other individuals existing as before who should work out their own salvation. He more or less admits the one reality underlying all these phenomena. The phenomena are due to the play of Maya. 
Maya is the Sakti of Isvara, or the activity of reality. Thus existence of different souls, objects, etc., do not clash with the Advaitic point of view. 2. The Pratipasika The Jagat, Jiva and Isvara are all cognized by the seer only. They do not have any existence independent of him. Though there is only one Jaiva, be it the individual or God. All else is simply a myth. 3. The Paramarthika, in other words, Ajatavada no creation doctrine which admits of no second. There is no reality or absence of it, no seeking or gaining, no bondage or liberation and so on. The question arises why then do all the Sastras speak of the Lord as the Creator? How can the creature that you are create the Creator and argue that the Jaga, Jiva and Isfara are mental conceptions only? The answer is as follows. You know that your father of this Jagrat state is dead and that several years have elapsed since his death. However, you see him in your dream and recognize him to be your father, of whom you were born and who has left patrimony to you. Here the creator is in the creature. Again, you dream that you are serving a king and that you are a part in the administrative wheel of the kingdom. As soon as you wake up all of them have disappeared leaving you, the single individual, behind. Where were they all? Only in yourself. The same analogy holds good in the other case also. Disciple, in the Vaya Vaharika above mentioned, how does Maya come in? Answer. Maya is only as far as Sakti or the activity of reality. Disciple, why does it become active? Answer. How can this question arise? You are yourself within its fold. Are you standing apart from that universal activity in order to ask this question? The same power is raising this doubt in order that all doubts may finally cease. Disciple, the dream world is not purposeful as the Jagrat world because we do not feel that once are satisfied. Answer, you are not right. There are thirst and hunger in dream also. You might have had your fill and kept over the remaining food for the next day. Nevertheless, you feel hungry in dream. This food does not help you. Your dream hunger can be satisfied only by eating dream food. Dream wants are satisfied by dream creations only. Disciple, we recollect our dreams in our Jagrat but not vice versa. Answer, not right again. In the dream you identify yourself with the one now speaking. Disciple, but we do not know that we are dreaming as apart from waking as we do now. Answer, the dream is the combination of Jagrat and Sashapti. It is due to the samskaras of the Jagrat state. Hence we remember dreams at present. Samskaras are not formed contrary-wise, therefore also we are not aware of the dream and Jagrat simultaneously. Still, everyone will recollect strange perplexities in dream. One wonders if he dreams or is awake. He argues and determines that he is only awake. When really awake he finds that it was all only a dream. Talk 4. 100. In the course of another conversation Sri Bhagavan said, Bodhisams add zest to meditation and nothing more. 16. April 19. 137 Talk 4. 101. Mr. Krishnamurti, an Andhra gentleman, asked as follows. When we make tapas, on what object must we fix our sight? Our mind is fixed on what we utter. Answer, what is tapas for? Disciple, for self-realization. Answer, quite so. Tapas depends on the competency of the person. One requires a form to contemplate. But it is not enough. For can anyone keep looking at an image always? Though the image must be implemented by Japa. Japa helps fixing the mind on the image, in addition to the eyesight. The result of these efforts is concentration of mind, which ends in the goal. He becomes what he thinks. Some are satisfied with the name of the image. 
Every form must have a name. That name denotes all the qualities of God. Constant japa puts off all other thoughts and fixes the mind. That is tapas. One pointedness is the tapas wanted. The question what tapas is was asked in order to know what purpose to serve. It will take the form required for the purpose. Disciple, are not physical austerities also tapas? Answer, maybe one form of it. They are due to Varajya dispassion disciple. I have seen a man with his arm lifted all his life. Answer, that is Varajya. Disciple, why should one afflict his body for the purpose? Answer, you think, it is affliction whereas it is a vow and for the other man it is an achievement and a pleasure. Pain may be external or internal or both. Dapat is more important than external form. It must be done until it becomes natural. It starts with effort and is continued until it proceeds of itself. When natural it is called realization. Japa may be done even while engaged in other work. That which is the one reality. It may be represented by a form, a japa mantra, vichara or any kind of attempt. All of them finally resolve themselves into that one single reality. Bhakti Vichara, Japa, are only different forms of our efforts to keep out the unreality. The unreality is an obsession at present. Reality is our true nature. We are wrongly persisting in unreality, that is, thoughts and worldly activities. Cessation of these will reveal the truth. Our attempts are directed towards keeping them out. It is done by thinking of the reality only. Although it is our true nature it looks as if we are thinking of the reality. What we do really amounts to the removal of obstacles for the revelation of our true being. Meditation or vichara is thus a reversion to our true nature. Disciple, are our attempts sure to succeed? Answer, realization is our nature. It is nothing new to be gained. What is new cannot be eternal. Therefore, there is no need for doubting if one would lose or gain the self. Talk 4, 102. While speaking of the brain and the heart, Sri Bhagavan recalled an incident of old days as follows. Kavikanth again, a Padimuni once argued that the brain was the most important center, and Sri Bhagavan maintained that the heart was even more so. There were others watching the discourse. A few days after Sri Bhagavan received a letter containing a short poem in English on that discourse from a young boy, Arunakulam, who had not yet matriculated. That poem is remarkable for its poetic imagination. Sri Bhagavan, Kavi Kantha, and the assemblage of other persons are represented as the heart, the brain and the body respectively, and again as the sun, the moon and the earth also. The light from the sun is reflected on the moon and the earth is illumined. Similarly the brain acts by consciousness derived from the heart and the body is thus protected. This teaching of Sri Bhagavan is found in Ramana Gita also. The heart is the most important center from which vitality and light radiate to the brain, thus enabling it to function. The Vasanas are enclosed in the heart in their subtlest form, later flowing to the brain which reflects them highly magnified corresponding to a cinema show at every stage. That is how the world is said to be nothing more than a cinema show. Sri Bhagavan also added, With the Vasanas in the brain instead of in the heart, they must be extinguished, if the head is cut off so that reincarnations will be at an end. But it is not so. The self obviously safeguards the Vasanas in its closest proximity, in other words within itself in the heart, just as a miser keeps his most valued possessions treasure with himself and never out of contact. Hence the place where the Vasanas are is the self in other words the heart and not the brain which is only the theater for the play of the Vasanas from the greenhouse of the heart. 17th, April, 19th. 137 Talk 4, 103
There was some reference to the extract from the Modern Psychological Review, wondering if any instruments could be of use in detecting the heart center and if proper subjects were available for recording the experience of the adepts in the spiritual path and so on. Others were speaking. Three Bhagavan said, In the incident mentioned in the book Self-Realization that I became unconscious and symptoms of death supervened, I was all along aware. I could feel the action of the physical heart stopped, and equally the action of the heart center unimpaired. This state lasted about a quarter of an hour. We asked if it was true that some disciples have had the privilege of feeling Sri Bhagavan's heart center to be on the right by placing their hands on Sri Bhagavan's chest. Sri Bhagavan said, Yes. Mr. Viswanatha Ayer, Narayana Reddy and others have said they felt Sri Bhagavan's heart center to be on the right by placing their hands on his chest. A devotee rightly observed that if hands could feel and locate the heart center, delicate scientific instruments should certainly do it. Disciple, the heart is said to be on the right, on the left, or in the center. With such differences of opinion how are we to meditate on Hridaya? Answer, you are and it is a fact. Diana is by you of you and in you. It must go on where you are. It cannot be outside you. Though you are the center of Diana and that is the heart. A location is however given to it with reference to the body. You know that you are. Where are you? You are in the body and not out of it. Yet not the whole body. Though you pervade the whole body still you admit of a center where from all your thoughts start and wherein they subside. Even when the limbs are amputated you are there but with defective senses. Though a center must be admitted. That is called the heart. The heart is not merely the center but the self. Heart is only another name for the self. Doubts arise only when you identify it with something tangible and physical. The scriptures no doubt describe it as the source of one, hundred one nadis, etc. In Yoga Vasish, Tichudala says that Kundalini is composed of one, hundred one nadis, thus identifying one with the other. Heart is no conception, no object for meditation. But it is the seat of meditation, the self remains all alone. You see the body in the heart, the world in it. There is nothing separate from it. Though all kinds of effort are located there only. 18th, April, 1937 Talk 4, 104 A casual visitor asked, What is Nishta? How is the look to be directed between the eyebrows? Answer, how do we see these things? There's a light by which these are seen. Your question amounts to asking how that light is seen. Disciple, what is the significance of the spot between the eyebrows? Answer, that is mentioned as if to say, Do not see with your eyes. Disciple, what is regulation of breath for? Answer, only to control the mind. Again after a few minutes, Sri Bhagavan continued. The mind functions both as light and as objects. If divested of things the light alone will remain over. Disciple, but we must know that there is such light. Answer, sight or cognition is impossible without such light. How do you cognize anything in sleep? Our cognition pertains to the present state because there is light. Light is the essential requisite for sight. It is plain in our daily life. Among the lights sunlight is the most important. Hence they speak of the glory of millions of suns. Disciple, there is light if we press the eyelids with our fingers. Another questioner. What is the use of seeing such a light? Answer, it is done lest we forget the goal. Practice helps one not to divert the attention to other pursuits. The object is seen where the light is recognized because there is the subject to do so. How does it affect the subject whether the objects are seen or not? 
the light in other words, the cognizer where the consciousness is seen, there will be no object to be seen. Pure light in other words, consciousness will alone remain over. Disciple, why then is the regulation of breath necessary? Answer, control of breath or its regulation is only for controlling the mind so that the mind may not wander away. Disciple, is it for control of mind only? Answer, it is not enough that light is seen, it is also necessary to have the mind engaged in a single activity, for example, the elephant trunk and the chain. Disciple, how long will it take for one to gain Chintamani the celestial gem granting all the wishes of its owner? Answer, the example of Chintamani is found in Yoga Vasishta. Chintamani signifies the real nature of the self. The story is as follows. A man was making tapasya for gaining Chintamani. A gem mysteriously fell into his hands. He thought that it could not be Chintamani because his efforts had been too short and too little to gain the gem. He discarded it and continued the tapas. Later a sadhu placed before him a brilliant pebble with facets cut. The man was taken in by its appearance, but found that it could not fulfill his desires as he originally supposed. Similarly, the self being inherent should not be sought for elsewhere. Again, an elephant used to be often teased by its keeper. He once had an accident and fell down. The elephant could have killed him on the spot, but did not do so. Later, however, the keeper dug a big pit in the forest and killed the elephant. Judala illustrated Sikhadvaja's error by this story. He had Varajya even while ruling his kingdom and could have realized the self, if only he had pushed his Varajya to the point of killing the ego. He did not do it, but came to the forest, had a timetable of tapas and yet did not improve even after eighteen years of tapas. He had made himself a victim of his own creation. Judala advised him to give up the ego and realize the self which he did and was liberated. It is clear from Chudala's story that Varajya accompanied by ego is of no value, whereas all possessions in the absence of ego do not matter. 19th, April, 1937, Talk 4, 105. A respectable and orthodox gentleman asked about Sri Chakra. Answer, it has a deep significance. There are 43 corners with sacred syllables in them. Its worship is a method for concentration of mind. The mind is want to move externally. It must be checked and turned within. Its habit is to dwell on names and forms, for all external objects possess names and forms. Such names and forms are made symbolic mental conceptions in order to divert the mind from external objects and make it dwell within itself. The idols, mantras, yantras, are all meant to give food to the mind in its introvert state, so that it may later become capable of being concentrated, after which the superb state is reached automatically. 20th, April, 1937, Talk 406 Mr. Cohen, a resident disciple, has been for some days past thinking about a book called Nirvana written by a prominent theosophist, wherein the author claims to reach Nirvana every night after going to sleep. He claims to see his own master and other masters of the Theosophical Society as bright lights within the ocean of light which is Nirvana. He asks Sri Bhagavan how it could be possible, considering the Advaitic teaching that the Nirvanaisk experience is the same as that of the pure consciousness of being. Answer, Nirvana is perfection. In the perfect state there is neither subject nor object, there is nothing to see, nothing to feel, nothing to know. Seeing and knowing are the functions of the mind. In Nirvana, there is nothing but the blissful pure consciousness I am. Disciple, how then can a prominent T.S. leader, who claims clairvoyance of a high order, 
praise the author for his supposed correct and vivid description of nirvana and why is the tea society so much obsessed by the idea of service answer well theosophy and other kindred movements are good in as much as they make a man unselfish and prepare him for the highest truth service like prayers japas and even business done in god's name lead to the highest goal self-realization disciple but after how long why should a man who is ready for the absolute knowledge stick to the knowledge of the relative answer everything happens in its own time one who is ready for the absolute knowledge will be made somehow to hear of it and follow it up he will realize that atmavidya is the highest of all virtues and also the end of the journey then asked about the difference between external and internal nirvikalpa samadhis referring to article 391 above the master said external samadhis holding on to the reality while witnessing the world without reacting to it from within there is the stillness of a waveless ocean the internal samadhi involves loss of but a consciousness disciple is loss of but a consciousness a prerequisite to the attainment of sahaja samadhi answer what is but a consciousness analyze it there must be a body and consciousness limited to it which together make up but a consciousness these must lie in another consciousness which is absolute and unaffected hold it that is samadhi it exists when there is no but a consciousness because it transcends the latter it also exists when there is the body consciousness so it is always there what does it matter whether but a consciousness is lost or retained when lost it is internal samadhi when retained it is external samadhi that is all a person must remain in any of the six samadhis so that sahaja samadhi may be easy for him disciple the mind does not sink into that state even for a second answer a strong conviction is necessary that i am the self transcending the mind and the phenomena disciple nevertheless the mind proves to be a cord against attempts to sink it answer what does it matter if the mind is active it is so only on the substratum of the self hold the self even during mental activities disciple i cannot go within sufficiently deep answer it is wrong to say so where are you now if not in the self where should you go all that is necessary is the stern belief that you are the self they rather that the other activities throw a veil on you disciple yes it is so answer that means that the conviction is weak disciple I understand that the I is only artificial karma my attempts at realizing the real I are unavailing because the artificial I is brought into action for realizing the other answer viveka chudamani makes it clear that the artificial I of the vijana kosa is a projection and through it one must look to the significance vakya of I the true principle talk 407 disciple Saint Teresa and others saw the image of Madonna animated. It was external. Others see the images of their devotion in their mental sight. This is internal. Is there any difference in degree in these two cases? Answer: Both indicate that the person has strongly developed meditation. Both are good and progressive. There is no difference in degree. The one has a conception of divinity and draws mental images and feels them. The other has the conception of divinity in the image and feels it in the image. The feeling is within in both instances. 21st April 1937 talk 408. With reference to the location of the heart center on the right side of the human body, Sri Bhagavan said, I've been saying all along that the heart center was on the right notwithstanding the refutation by some learned men that physiology taught them otherwise. I speak from experience. 
I knew it even in my home during my trances. Again during the incident related in the book Self-Realization, I had a very clear vision and experience. All of a sudden the light came from one side erasing the world vision and its course until it spread all round when the vision of the world was completely cut out. I felt the muscular organ on the left had stopped work, I could understand that the body was like a corpse, that the circulation of blood had stopped and the body became blue and motionless. A sort of a sastry embraced the body wept over my death, but I could not speak. All the time I was feeling that the heart center on the right was working as well as ever. This state continued 15 or 20 minutes. Then suddenly something shot out from the right to the left resembling a rocket bursting in air. The blood circulation was resumed and normal condition restored. I then asked Vasudeva Sastri to move along with me and we reached our residence. The Upanishads say that 101 nadis terminate in the heart and 72,000 originate from them and traverse the body. The heart is thus the center of the body. Him be a center because we have been accustomed to think that we remain in the body. In fact the body and all else are in that center only reminiscences. Talk 4, 109 a middle-aged man prostrated himself before Sri Bhagavan who asked him about his well-being. After a few minutes Sri Bhagavan recalled an incident saying that this was the only person whom Sri Bhagavan had slapped, it happened about thirty years earlier. Sri Bhagavan was living in Malipal Tirtha. There was a Jada Swami living in the neighborhood Mamarethu Guhai. This man who was then about eight years of age, used to play pranks with all, including Sri Bhagavan. One day he went to Maharshi and said that Jada Swami wanted a bucket. Without waiting for permission, he took away the bucket. Halani Swami the attendant was not there. Though Sri Bhagavan followed the boy to Jada Swami's place. Before Bhagavan reached the place the boy had told the other that Brahmana Swami had sent him a bucket. Jada Swami was wondering why. In a few minutes Maharshi reached the place and learnt what had passed. Though so he raised his hand to give a slap to the boy, but the mind would not yield to slapping. But he argued within himself and determined that the urchin should be slapped and so he did it. Talk 4, 110 There is a Tamil stanza by a Y. It is an address of the prana to the stomach, its meaning is. O oh stomach! How difficult it is to get on with you. You cannot starve when no food is available, nor can you take more and keep it in reserve when food is plenty. You will take only what you want, and when you want, thus you are troublesome to me allowing me no rest. Free by Gavan altered it thus. Stomach addressing the prana. O oh Prana, how troublesome you are to me. You never allow me to rest but continue loading me with food off and on. It is so difficult to get on with you. Thing that Sri Bhagavan laughed. Sri Bhagavan often says that he is made to eat more than is good for him. 21st May, 1937 Talk 4, 111 Sri Bhagavan, while speaking of the marriage ceremony among the Brahmins, said that the Kasyatra represents the bridegroom to be a Varagi Purusha. It is therefore right that he should be given a Kanya virgin for leading a householder's life. It follows that a Varagi can alone be a good householder. Tuck 4, 112 Once on a cold day Sri Bhagavan was sitting in a cave on the hill with his hands folded on the breast as a protection, against the cold. Some Andra visitor had come, he broke a coconut and poured the cold juice on Sri Bhagavan's head as a bisheka. Sri Bhagavan was surprised. Puck 4, 113. A visitor asked. While making Nama Japa and after continuing it for an hour or more I fall into a state like sleep. On waking up, I recollect that my Japa has been interrupted. So I proceed again. Answer, like sleep. That is right. It is the natural state. 
Because you are now associated with the ego you consider the natural state to be something which interrupts your work. You must repeat the experience until you realize that it is your natural state. You will then find that japa etc. is extraneous. Still, it will be going on automatically. Your present doubt is due to the false identity. Japa means clinging to one thought to the exclusion of all other thoughts. That is the purpose of japa, it leads to dhyana which ends in self-realization. Talk 4 114. Mr. Subare, Maya the devotee has written some short poems which are interesting. Some of them refer to a child. Three Bhagavan said God becomes a child and vice versa. That means that the samskaras are yet latent in the child and thus its innocence is complete. When they are eradicated even a grown-up man becomes a child once again and thus remains God. The author said, Child creates the home atmosphere. Free Bhagavan. Yes. The children are always in the home. We too are there but are dreaming and imagining that we are outside the home. Three Bhagavan added, I have rendered the word youth yuva in Dakshinamurti Stadra by child Bala. This seems more appropriate. To be reborn is to become children over again. One must be reborn before gaining jhana, in other words, recovering the natural state. Talk 4, 115. Sri Bhagavan read out some stanzas on the greatness of the Tamil language from the preface to a Tamil Tamil dictionary and explained the references in a very interesting manner. Of the three tests for establishing the superiority of Saivism over Jainism, the first related to Turajana Sambandar entering the royal presence for curing the Pandya king of his illness. The queen was anxious because of his tender age, in other words, twelve years. Turjana Sambandar set her doubts at rest by composing a stanza which said that, though tender, he was more than a match to the strong group of innumerable Jains. While reciting the stanza, Sri Bhagavan choked and could not proceed with it. The second test was the fire leaving the Cajun leaf unburnt, and the third the Cajun leaves opposing the current of the river Turavidakam. Sri Bhagavan also related the story of God as far as begging food as an old man, taking food as a youth and saving the devotee woman as a babe, all at once. He again pointed out like babe, lunatic, spirit Balamatapisakavet describing the states of Johnnies. Their babala is given precedence over others. Talk 4, 116 Sri Bhagavan said that Kamba Ramana consists of 12,000 stanzas to Valmiki's 24,000. Kambas can be understood only by the learned and not by all. Tulasidas had heard Kamba Ramayana recited to him in Hindi by a Tamil saint and later wrote his famous Ramayana. Book 4, 117. Perfect Master is a book on Meher Baba published in 19. 137. There is an incident of a ship's officer instructing the reluctant immigration officer to let Baba and his party land in New York, USA. When one of the party went to thank him, he was nowhere to be found. The incident is recorded so as to leave an impression of a miracle happening in favor of Baba. A passage was read out to Sri Bhagavan. Bhagavan said, Yes, yes, what of that? Disciple, is it a miracle? Answer, maybe. But did not the immigration officer recognize the other to be his superior officer whose orders should be obeyed? There is an end of the matter. The men of Baba's party could not find him, well it may be due to several reasons. Talk 4, 118. Asked if Sri Bhagavan had read Kamba Ramayana, Sri Bhagavan said, no. I have not read anything. All my learning is limited to what I learnt before my fourteenth year. Since then I have had no inclination to read or learn. People wonder how I speak of Bhagavad Gita, etc. It is due to hearsay. 
I have not read Gita nor waded through commentaries for its meaning. When I hear a sloka I think that its meaning is clear and I say it. That is all and nothing more. Similarly with my other quotations. They come out naturally. I realize that the truth is beyond speech and intellect. Why then should I project the mind to read, understand and repeat stanzas, etc.? Their purpose is to know the truth. The purpose having been gained, there is no use engaging in studies. Someone remarked, If Sri Bhagavan had been inclined to study there would not be a saint today. Answer, probably all my studies were finished in past births and I was surfeit. There is therefore no samskara operating now in that direction. Talk 4, 119 Week before the Mahapuja, 3rd June, 1937 has brought many visitors, including some relatives of Sri Bhagavan. There is among them an elderly lady, the widow of Sabir in whose house, Sri Bhagavan was living when he left home in August 1896. Old memories revived when Sri Bhagavan saw her. He remembered how on a festive occasion he was asked to help her in making some Madaka's delicacies, but he hesitated and finally refused because he was obliged to change his clothes and he could put on only kupina loin cloth or codpiece, which made him feel shy. He was reprimanded by his uncle and this lady. The uncle's wife said with humility and gentleness, White. No wonder that one destined for this high state could not do such humble work in those days. Then Sri Bhagavan remarked, If I refuse to wear Kupina once, I am now made to pay the penalty by wearing it always. The lady recalled to her mind how Sri Ramana was suffering from headache for several days together. Sri Bhagavan said, Yes, yes. It was the month before I left Majura. It was not headache, but an inexpressible anguish which I suppressed at the time, these were however the outward symptoms which I said, were due to headache. I remember how anxious you grew on account of my headache. You used to rub some ointment on my forehead every day. My anguish continued until I left Majura and reached this place. 4th June, 1937 Talk 4, 120 a certain lawyer from Cuddalore quoted as follows, Neither the sun shines there, nor the moon, nor the stars, nor lightning. How can fire shine there? All these luminaries shine in his light only. With his light all these shine forth. He asked, What does with his light mean here? Does all else shine on account of him, or in his light? Answer, There is only he. He and his light are the same. There is no individual to perceive other things, because the perceiver and the perceived are only he. The sun, the moon, etc. shine forth. How? Do they come and tell you that they shine forth or does another apart from them say that they shine forth? Disciple, of course I say that they shine forth. Answer, therefore they shine on account of you. Again consciousness is necessary to know that they shine forth. That consciousness is yourself or you. Though then you or your consciousness is the same as he in his light by which all else shine forth. Disciple, is that light like sunlight? Answer, no. The sunlight is jada insentient. You are aware of it. It makes objects perceptible and chases away darkness, whereas consciousness is that light which makes not only light, but also darkness perceptible. Darkness cannot exist before sunlight, but it can remain in the light of consciousness. Similarly, this consciousness is pure knowledge in which both knowledge and ignorance shine. Disciple, if God is all, why does the individual suffer for his actions? Are not the actions prompted by him for which the individual is made to suffer? Answer, he who thinks he is the doer is also the sufferer. Disciple, but the actions are prompted by God and the individual, 
is only his tool. Answer, this logic is applied only when one suffers, but not when one rejoices. The conviction prevails always, there will be no suffering either. Disciple, when will the suffering cease? Answer, not until individuality is lost. Both the good and bad actions are his, why should you think that the enjoyment and suffering are alone yours? He who does good or bad also enjoys pleasure or suffers pain. Leave it there and do not superimpose suffering on yourself. Talk 4, 121 A resident devotee, Kunju Swami, related an observation of Sri Maharshi after the robbery in the Asramam in 1923. Some disciples were asking why the robber should be allowed to molest even sadhus and why the sadhus would not protect themselves and their dependents from the robbers. Sri Bhagavan observed, There were rishis like Visvamitra who could duplicate the universe if they wished. They lived during the lifetime of Ravana, who caused agony even to Sita and Rama among others. Could not Visvamitra have destroyed Ravana by his occult powers? Though capable he kept still. Why? The occurrences are known to the sages, but pass away without leaving an impression on their minds. Even a deluge will appear a trifle to them, they do not care for anything. 7th June 1937 Talk 4, 122 Dr. Van Cotter Rao, a visitor from Gunter, asked, Guru asks his disciple to do things contrary to ethical principles. But the disciple, having accepted the person as the master, desires to please the master but his moral sense obstructs him. What should he do under the circumstances? Answer. No reply. Disciple. I shall make myself clear. The Guru asked his disciple to commit a theft and the disciple did not do it. The master then said, I wanted to test you to see if you had completely surrendered yourself or retained your individuality. It is now clear what it is. Is the Guru right in ordering the disciple that way? Answer, still no reply. Another person observed, There are persons on whom I refuse to sit in judgment. Still, I cannot help feeling if they deserve the appellation of gurus. They appear bogus men. If they be really worthy, they would not order the disciples in that way. Answer, but the person says it is for a test. The questioner continued. Should it be carried out? Answer, your original statement contains the answer to your question. Both the questioners jointly asked. The action is disagreeable. Can it be done? Answer. The question might be referred to the person himself, in other words, the Guru. He is responsible for this situation. Talk 4, 123. A young man asked. I try to cultivate willpower but do not succeed. How should I do it? Answer. No answer disciple. I came here three years ago and Sri Bhagavan said that willpower is necessary for strength of mind. Since then, I have been desiring to cultivate it, but without success. Answer, no answer disciple, during these years I have had four or five reverses. They upset me considerably. There is always the fear of failure haunting my attempts. This results in want of faith in myself which certainly foredooms my efforts to failure. Nothing in fact succeeds like success, and also nothing foils one's attempts like failure. Hence my question. Answer, no answer. Disciple, is not will power necessary for success? It should ensure success and also rule out failure. Answer, no answer disciple, I try to gain willpower. After these years, I find myself only where I began. There's no progress. Answer, no answer disciple, what are the means for gaining willpower? Answer, 
Your idea of willpower is success ensured. Willpower should be understood to be the strength of mind which makes it capable for meeting success or failure with equanimity. It is not synonymous with certain success. Why should one's attempts be always attended with success? Success develops arrogance and the man's spiritual progress is thus arrested. Failure on the other hand is beneficial inasmuch as it opens the eyes of the man to his limitations and prepares him to surrender himself. Self-surrender is synonymous with eternal happiness. Therefore one should try to gain the equipoise of mind under all circumstances. That is willpower. Again success and failure are the results of prerabdha and not of willpower. A man may be doing only good and noble actions and yet prove a failure. Another may do otherwise and yet be uniformly successful. This does not mean that the willpower is present in the one and not in the other. Disciple, is it not said in the book Truth Revealed the Ladu Narpadu that the world is a product of the mind? Answer, yes. Disciple, does it not follow that the mind grown strong brings the world under control? Answer, the mind in its external activities gives rise to the world. Such activities fritter away the strength of the mind. Its strength lies in being confined to itself with the external activities arrested. Disciple, there is an idiot who cannot count up to ten. His mind does not certainly wander as does that of a thinker. Is the former a better man than the latter? Answer, who says that he is an idiot? Your mind in its wandering says so. Disciple, is will power gained by divesting oneself of thoughts? Answer, rather by confining oneself to a single thought. Ultimately this will also disappear, leaving pure consciousness behind. Concentration helps one to it. Disciple, so then, it is gained by directing the mind and concentrating it. The personality has nothing to do with it. Answer, personality is the root cause of external activities. It must sink for gaining the highest good. Hoc 4, 124 In the course of conversation with a learned man who asked about Purusha and Prakriti, Sri Bhagavan said, Purusha and Prakriti are only the bifurcation of the One Supreme. They are surmised because the student has the sense of duality deep-rooted. The same Gita also says that Purushottama lies beyond Purusha and Prakriti. Disciple, what are Paranadi Sushamna Nadi in the heart? Answer, but Sushamna resolves into the para Sushum, not to Paralina. Heart is usually understood to be the muscular organ lying on the left of the chest. The modern psychological review speaks of the physical organ on the left and the heart center on the right. The Bible says that a fool's heart is on the left and a wise man's on the right. Yoga Vasish to says that there are two hearts the one is Sambit and the other the blood vessel. Disciple, what is Anahata? Answer. Anahata is the chakra lying behind the heart. It is not Sambit. Lalita Sasranama has it, Anahata Chakrasthai, I namo nama salutations to the core situated in Anahata and the next mantra hrit in the heart. Thus it is clear that Anahata is not the same as hrit. Talk 4, 125. Will power or any other is gained by practice abhyasa. Disciple, is success not dependent on Guru's grace? Answer, yes it is. Is not your practice itself due to such grace? The fruits are the result of the practice and follow it automatically. There is a stanza in Kaivalya which says, O Guru, you have been always with me watching me through several reincarnations and ordaining my course until I was liberated. The self manifests externally as Guru when occasion arises, otherwise he is always within, doing the needful. 12th, June, 1937 Talk 4, 126 
Mr. Das of Allahabad University. Has the food which one usually takes anything to do with increase or decrease of one's spirituality? That is, does it influence spirituality for good or bad? Answer, yes. Thatvik food in moderate quantity is helpful to spiritual development. Disciple, for a grihai, in other words, a man of the world householder, what conduct in life will help him most spiritually? Answer, dhyana or bhakti, which mean the same thing. Disciple, what is meant by taking the name of God? How to reconcile the following two ideas. The Bible says, Do not take the name of God in vain. The Hindu sastras enjoin taking the name of God all the time. Answer, one should not use the name of God artificially and superficially without feeling. To use the name of God one must call upon Him and surrender to Him unreservedly. After such surrender the name of God is constantly with the man. Disciple, what are the fundamental tests for discovering men of great spirituality, since some are reported to behave like insane people? Answer, the jani's mind is known only to the jani. One must be a jani oneself in order to understand another jani. However the peace of mind which permeates the saint's atmosphere is the only means by which the seeker understands the greatness of the saint. His words or actions or appearance are no indications of his greatness, for they are ordinarily beyond the comprehension of common people. Disciple, has man any free will or is everything in his life predestined and preordained? Answer, free will holds the field in association with individuality. As long as individuality lasts so long, there is free will. All the sastras are based on this fact, and they advise directing the free will in the right channel. Find out to whom free will or destiny matters. Abide in it. Then these two are transcended. That is the only purpose of discussing these questions. To whom do these questions arise? Find out and be at peace. Disciple, our intellect and emotion, like the physical body, growths which come with the birth of man, and do they dissolve or survive after death? Answer, before considering what happens after death, just consider what happens in your sleep. Sleep is only the interval between two waking states. Do they survive that interval? Disciple, yes they do. Answer, the same holds good for death also. They represent but a consciousness and nothing more. If you are the body, they always hold on to you. If you are not the body, they do not affect you. The one who was in sleep is now in waking state just speaking. You are not the body in sleep. Are you the body now? Find it out. Then the whole problem is solved. Similarly, that which is born must die. Whose is the birth? Were you born? If you say you were of whose birth are you speaking? It is the body which was born and it is that which will die. How do birth and death affect the eternal self? Think and say to whom the questions arise. Then you will know. Talk 4, 127 Disciple, it is said that the universe consists of light and sound. Are these two constituents like the light and sound in the physical world? Can they be seen and heard with the physical organs, eye and ear? Or are they to be experienced only subjectively? Answer, light and sound correspond to Bindu and Nada in tantric terminology and to the mind and life current in the Vedantic. Their gross subtle and transcendental. The organs can perceive the gross aspect, the other aspects are not so perceptible. The subtle can be inferred, and the transcendental is only transcendental. Disciple, Hinduism lays down reincarnation of the jiva. What happens to the jiva during the interval between the death of one body and the birth of the next one? Answer, solve this question by referring to the state of sleep. What happens to you in sleep? 
Disciple, I do not know. Answer, yet you exist. Therefore existence beyond knowledge and ignorance is indicated. Although ignorance was prevailing according to your present idea, yet you did not say so in sleep. You continue to exist all the same. Mere ignorance does not rule out the fact of your existence. Disciple, in the practice of meditation, are there any signs of the nature of subjective experience or otherwise which will indicate the aspirant's progress towards self-realization? Answer, the degree of freedom from unwanted thoughts and the degree of concentration on a single thought are the measure to gauge the progress. Disciple, is it necessary to take to sannyasa for self-realization? Answer, sannyasa is to renounce one's individuality. This is not the same as tanjur and ochre robes. A man may be a grihai, yet if he does not think he is a grihai, he is a sannyasi. On the contrary, a man may wear ochre robes and wander about, yet if he thinks he is a sannyasi, he is not that. To think of sannyasa defeats its own purpose. Tri Bhagavan remarked. People see the world. The perception implies the existence of a seer and the seen. The objects are alien to the seer. The seer is intimate being the self. They do not however turn their attention to finding out the obvious seer, but run about analyzing the seen. The more the mind expands, the farther it goes and renders self-realization more difficult and complicated. The man must directly see the seer and realize the self. Disciple, so then it amounts to synthesizing phenomena and finding the one reality behind. Answer, why do you still consider the phenomena? The who the seer is. Synthesis means engaging the mind in other pursuits. That is not the way to realization. Disciple, I want to eliminate the non-self so that the self may be realized. How shall I do it? What are the characteristics of the non-self? Answer, there is one who says that the non-self must be eliminated. Who is he? Disciple, I mean this man. When I travel from Calcutta to Madras, I must know Madras, so that I may not alight at an intermediate station out of ignorance. There are the sign boards and the timetable to guide me in my travel. But what is the guide in my search for the self? Answer, it is all right for the journey. You know how far away you are from Madras. Can you tell me how far away you are from the self in order that you should seek it? Disciple, I do not know. Answer, are you ever divorced from the self? Is it possible to be divorced? Are not all these alien to you and the self the most intimate? Where should you go to gain the self? Disciple, I am now away from the self. I must retrace my steps in order to regain it. Answer, how far away? Who says that he is apart? Can there be two selves? Disciple, it is said that individuals are modifications of the self, just as ornaments are of gold. Answer, when a man speaks in terms of ornaments ignoring their substance gold, he is told that they are gold. But here the man is consciousness and speaks of himself as its modification. Do you remain apart from self that you speak of yourself as its modification? Disciple, cannot gold be imagined to say that it has become an ornament? Answer, being insentient it does not say so. But the individual is sentient and cannot function apart from consciousness. The self is pure consciousness. Yet the man identifies himself with the body which is itself insentient, and does not say I am the body of its own accord. Someone else says so. The unlimited self does not. Who else is he that says so? Spurious eye arises between the pure consciousness and the insentient body and imagines itself limited to the body. Take this and it will vanish as a phantom. That phantom is the ego, or the mind, or the individuality. All the sastras are based on the rise of this phantom, whose elimination is their purpose. 
The present state is mere illusion. Disillusionment is the goal and nothing more. Disciple, the mind is said to be a bundle of thoughts. Answer, because it functions on account of a single root the I thought manasan to kim margain kartyaneva manasam marga arjavat. It has no real existence as a separate entity. Disciple, are not thoughts projections from the mind? Answer, in that case the mind is taken to be synonymous with the I thought or the ego. 15th, December, 1937 Talk 4, 128 Sri Bhagavan has selected ten stanzas from the famous work of Sri Sankara, Sivanand de Lahari, describing devotion bhakti. 1. What is bhakti? Just as the ankola fruit falling from the tree rejoins it where a piece of iron is drawn to magnet, so also thoughts, after rising up, lose themselves in their original source. This is bhakti. The original source of thoughts is the feet of the Lord, is Pharaoh. Love of his feet forms bhakti. 2. Fruit of bhakti. The thick cloud of bhakti, formed in the transcendental sky of the Lord's feet, pours down a rain of bliss ananda and fills the lake of mind to overflowing. Only then, the jiva, always transmigrating to no useful end, has his real purpose fulfilled. 3. Where to place bhakti? Devotion to gods, who have themselves their origin and end, can result in fruits similarly with origin and end. In order to be in bliss everlasting our devotion must be directed to its source, namely the feet of the ever-blissful Lord. 4. Bhakti is a matter only for experience and not for words. How can logic or other polemics be of real use? Can the Gatapada's favorite examples of the logicians, meaning the pot and the cloth save you in a crisis? Why then waste yourself thinking of them and on discussion? Stop exercising the vocal organs and giving them pain. Think of the feet of the Lord and drink the nectar. 6. 5. Immortality is the fruit of devotion. At the sight of him who in his heart has fixed the Lord's feet, death is reminded of his bygone disastrous encounter with Markandeya and flees away. All other gods worship only Saiva, placing their crowned heads at his feet. Such involuntary worship is only natural to Siva. Goddess liberation, his consort, always remains part of him. 6. If only devotion be there, the conditions of the jiva cannot affect him. However different the bodies, the mind alone is lost in the Lord's feet. Bliss overflows. 7. Devotion always unimpaired. Wherever or however it be, only let the mind lose itself in the Supreme. It is yoga. It is bliss. Or the yogi or the bliss incarnate. Eat karma yoga, also is bhakti. To worship God with flowers and other external objects is troublesome. Only lay this single flower, the heart at the feet of Siva and remain at peace. Not to know this simple thing and to wonder about. How foolish! What misery! 9-9 nine, nine, This karma yoga puts an end to one samsara. Whatever the order of life asrama of the devotee, only once thought of, Siva relieves the devotee of his load of samsara and takes it on himself. 10 Devotion is jhana. The mind losing itself in Siva's feet is devotion. Ignorance lost. Knowledge. Liberation. 16th December, 1937 Talk 4, 129 A few ladies had come from Bangalore. One among them asked, The world is composed of differences, from our point of view. How shall we able to get over these differences and comprehend the one essence of all things? Answer, The differences are the result of the sense of doership kartritva. The fruits will be destroyed if the root is destroyed. To relinquish the sense of doership, the differences will vanish and the essential reality will reveal itself. 
In order to give up the sense of doership, one must seek to find out who the doer is. Inquire within the sense of doership will vanish. The Chera Inquiry is the method. 22nd December 1937 Talk 430 A Marathi gentleman asked, I have read much about self-realization. I do japa, puja, etc. Nothing seems to satisfy me. Can Sri Bhagavan kindly guide me? Answer, what is that you seek to gain? Everyone seeks happiness. Happiness is one's lot in everyday sleep. Bring about that state of happiness even in the waking state. That is all. Disciple, I do not follow. How is it to be done? Answer, Atmavichara is the way. Disciple, it seems too difficult to adopt being so intangible. What shall I do if I feel unfit for this method of inquiry? Answer, guidance is there. It is for individuals to avail themselves of it. 25th, December, 1937 Talk 4, 131 a Telugu gentleman stood up and asked, The mind is said to be pure when all its vasanas are wiped out. It is also the finality. When there is something to be gained is it not duality? Answer, let the mind be first made pure. If the same question arises thereafter the answer may then be sought. 26th December 1937 Talk 432 an Andhra visitor asked, What is sleep? Answer, Why you experience it every day. Disciple, I want to know exactly what it is, so that it may be distinguished from samadhi. Answer, How can you know sleep when you are awake? The answer is to go to sleep and find out what it is. Disciple, But I cannot know it in this way. Answer, This question must be raised in sleep. Disciple, but I cannot raise the question then. Answer, so that is sleep. Sri Bhagavan went out for a few minutes. On his return the same man asked. Thalf realized Johnnies are seen to take food and do actions like others. Do they similarly experience the states of dream and of sleep? Answer, why do you seek to know the state of others may be Johnnies? What do you gain by knowing about others? You must seek to know your own real nature. Who do you think that you are? Evidently the body. Disciple, yes. Answer. Similarly, you take the jhani to be the visible body whereon the actions are superimposed by you. That makes you put these questions. The jhani himself does not ask if he has the dream or sleep state. He has no doubts himself. The doubts are in you. This must convince you of your wrong premises. Johnny is not the body. He is the self of all. The sleep, dreams, samadhi, etc. are all states of the Ajanis. The self is free from all these. Here is the answer for the former question also. Disciple, I sought to know the state of theta prajnata, unshaken knowledge. Answer, the sastras are not for the Johnny. He has no doubts to be cleared. The riddles are for Ajani's only. The sastras are for them alone. Disciple, sleep is the state of nescience and so, it is said of Samadhi also. Answer, Jhana is beyond knowledge and nescience. There can be no question about that state. It is the self. Talk 4, 133. Mr. Thomas, professor of Sanskrit, University of Oxford, had presided over the Oriental Conference in Trivandrum, and on his way to Calcutta he visited Sri Bhagavan. He is an elderly gentleman with a broad forehead and a quiet manner. He speaks softly and slowly. He evinces great interest in Oriental literature, especially Sanskrit. He had heard of the richness of Tamil. He desired to know which of the English translations of Srimad Bhagavad Gita was the best. The hall was crowded, and a few of them mentioned, 
with each his own opinion, Thibaut's, Mahadvasastri's, Telling's, etc. Fribagavan made mention of F. P. Brooks. Mr. Thomas desires one in metrical form, because it is the proper vehicle for rasa the essence contained in it. Rasa is also peace, he said. Answer, yes Brahman is only rasa. Disciple, rasa is also bliss. Answer, rasa, ananda, peace are all names for the same bliss. The professor was shown Mr. Grant Duff's speech in the philosophical conference held at Paris. Later the book Dharma by Dr. Mies was placed in his hands, on seeing which he asked what Sri Bhagavan thought of castes. Answer, the castes relate to bodies and not to self. The self is bliss. To realize bliss one realizes the self. No need to worry oneself about caste, etc. Disciple, the ahamkar is also called the self. Answer, ahamkar is limited, whereas the self is beyond it. Disciple, there is much literature in English relating to Eastern philosophy and religion. There are different exponents. The system of Ramanuja is well presented. Professor Radhakrishnan expounds the Advaitic system. He lays more stress on experience than on evidence. Tenkara shows a highly developed mind. Discussion followed on direct perception. The professor spoke of mental perception also as different from sense perception. Answer, to infer one's existence no other evidence is necessary. The Indriya senses and the mind arising from the ego cannot serve as evidence relating to the self. The self is their basis. They do not exist independently of the self. One's own existence is self-evident. Bliss is the self. All become dear only owing to the love of self. Disciple, love postulates duality. How can the self be the object of love? Answer, love is not different from the self. Love of an object is of an inferior order and cannot endure. Whereas the self is love, in other words, God is love. Disciple, it is also the Christian idea. He also asked Sri Bhagavan which of the methods was the best for the attainment of the goal. Is not Patanjali's the best? Answer, Yoga's Chitavriti Nirada, Yoga, is to check the mind from changing which is acceptable to all. That is also the goal of all. The method is chosen according to one's own fitness. The goal for all is the same. Yet different names are given to the goal only to suit the process preliminary to reaching the goal. Bhakti, Yoga, Jhana are all the same. Vasarupanus, and Hanambakteridi Abhid, he itself contemplation is called Bhakti. Disciple, does Sri Bhagavan advocate Advaita? Answer, Devaita and Advaita are relative terms. They are based on the sense of duality. The self is as it is. There is neither Devaita nor Advaita. I am that I am. Simple being is the self. Disciple, this is not Mayavada. Answer, the mind is Maya. Reality lies beyond the mind. So long as the mind functions there is duality maya etc. Once it is transcended the reality shines forth. Although it is said to shine forth self-effulgence is the self. Disciple, it is sat chit ananda. Answer, sat chit ananda is said to indicate that the supreme is not a sat different from unreal, not a chit different from insentient, and not an ananenda different from unhappiness. Because we are in the phenomenal world we speak of the self as sakit ananda. Disciple, ahamai applies to the individual and also to Brahman. It is rather unfortunate. Answer, it is upadhi better owing to different limiting adjuncts. The bodily limitations pertain to the aham, eye of the jiva whereas the universal limitations pertain to the Ahamai of Brahman. 
Take off the pad he limiting adjunct, the ayaham is pure and single. Disciple, does Bhagavan give diksha initiation? Answer, Mona silence is the best and the most potent diksha. That was practiced by Sri Dakshinamurti. Touch look etc. are all of a lower order. Silence Mona diksha changes the hearts of all. There is no guru and no disciple. The Ajani confounds his body with the self, and so he takes the other's body for the guru. But does the guru think his body to be the self? He has transcended the body. There are no differences for him. So the Ajani cannot appreciate the standpoint of guru and of sishya. Disciple, is there then no difference between the one and the other? Answer. There are differences from the standpoint of the phenomenal world but not from that of reality. The professor was thankful. He hoped to appreciate Sri Bhagavan's writings better after having seen him and conversed with him. In the course of conversation, Sri Bhagavan said that Upasana and Dhyana are possible so long as there is the mind and they must cease with the cessation of the mind. They are mere preliminaries to final eradication of thoughts and the stillness of mind. Disciple, Seva Siddhanta postulates three fundamentals as being eternal. Is it opposed to Vedanta? Answer, the three entities are Jiva, God and bondage. Such trinities are common in all religions. They are true so long as the mind is operative. They are mere creations of the mind. One can postulate God only after the mind arises. God is not different from the self. The self is objectified as God. Though also with Guru. The professor returned in the evening and asked something about good actions. He further wondered why Brahman is said to be Sakadananda, but not God. Answer, Sat denotes being beyond Sat and a Sat. Chit beyond Chit and a Chit and end up beyond bliss and non-bliss. What is it then? Even if not sat nor a sat, it must be admitted to be sat only. Compare the term jhana. Is the state beyond knowledge and ignorance? Yet jhana is not ignorance but knowledge. Though also with sat chit and anda. Disciple, it favors the one aspect. After a word about Atmavichara, he took leave saying that he would not trouble Sri Mahar, she any further, although he had several doubts yet to be cleared, and that he wanted to make Nididhya Siana of what he had heard so far. A judge from Mysore asked, Yubhasana and Diana were said to be due to mental activities. Cessation of activities was also said to be realization. Now how to realize without Yubhasana or Diana? Answer, they are preliminaries. Such action will lead to the desired inaction. Disciple, the heart is said to be experienced on the right. As he logically, it is on the left. Answer, spiritual experience is spoken of. Disciple, is it the psychic heart? Answer, yes. Disciple, how to know that it is on the right? Answer, by experience. Disciple, is there any indication to that effect? Answer, point out to yourself and see. 28th, December, 1937 Talk 434 Being Christmas holidays, there is a great rush of visitors from far and near. A group of them sat down and two among them asked as follows. Disciple, do you know English? Prompted to ask questions, he continued. Disciple, have you realized yourself? Three Bhagavan smiled and said, Go on, continue. Disciple, have you experienced Nirvikalpa Samadhi? He was asked to finish his questions. Disciple, can you enter into Nirvikalpa Samadhi at will? Is it not necessary that sages should influence their surroundings? Another man asked, Can Sri Bhagavan help us to realize the truth? Answer, help is always there. Disciple, 
then there is no need to ask questions. I do not feel the ever-present help. Answer, surrender and you will find it. Disciple, I am always at your feet. Will Bhagavan give us some Upadisha to follow? Otherwise how can I get the help living six hundred miles away? Answer, that Sadguru is within. Disciple, Sadguru is necessary to guide me to understand it. Answer, the Sadguru is within. Disciple, I want a visible Guru. Answer, that visible Guru says that he is within. Disciple, can I throw myself at the mercy of the Sadguru? Answer, yes. Instructions are necessary only so long as one has not surrendered oneself. Disciple, is no particular time necessary for meditation? Answer, meditation depends on strength of mind. It must be unceasing even when one is engaged in work. Particular time is meant for novices. Disciple, will Sadguru place his hand on my head to assure me of his help? I will have the consolation that his promise will be fulfilled. Answer, a bond will be the next requisition and a suit will be filed, if you imagine no help forthcoming. Laughter Disciple, may I come near sir? For blessing. Answer, such doubts should not arise in you. They contradict your statement of surrender. Thadguru is always on your head. Disciple, surrender comes after effort. Answer, yes, it becomes complete in due course. Disciple, is a teacher necessary for instructions? Answer, yes, if you want to learn anything new. But here you have to unlearn. Disciple, yet a teacher is necessary. Answer, you have already got what you seek elsewhere. Though no teacher is necessary. Disciple, is there any use of the man of realization for the seeker? Answer, yes. He helps you to get rid of your delusion that you are not realized. Disciple, so tell me how. Answer, the paths are meant only to dehypnotize the individual. Disciple, dehypnotize me. Tell me what method to follow. Answer, where are you now? Where should you go? Disciple, I know I am but I do not know what I am. Answer, are there two eyes then? Disciple, it is begging the question. Answer, who says this? Is it the one who is, or is it the other who does not know what he is? Disciple, I am, but do not know what or how. Answer, I is always there. Disciple, does the I undergo any transformation, say in death? Answer, who witnesses the transformation? Disciple, you seem to speak jhana yoga. This is jhana yoga. Answer, yes it is. Disciple, but surrender is bhakti yoga. Answer, both are the same after some time the man continued. Then I have to conclude that I am consciousness and that nothing occurs except by my presence. Answer, it is one thing to conclude it by reasoning and another thing to be convinced. The other man continued. I shall wait three months and see if help is forthcoming. Now may I have the assurance? Answer, is this what is asked by one who has surrendered? Four visitors retired. The same man continued to say, Fulfill your promise. Laughter. He also said, God has given me enough for bread and butter and I am happy. In addition I want peace of mind. Hence this request. 29th December 1937 Talk 435 Two ladies and two gentlemen from Ceylon. Disciple, have you realized God? If so, in what shape? Answer, who remains there to see God? Question might well be if one has known oneself. Disciple, I have known myself. Answer, is the I different from the self that you say you have known the self? 
disciple, I know the self is identical with the body. If the self be different from the body, let Bhagavan tell me how to see the self separate from the body. He has realized God. He can teach me. Answer, why should the self be separated from the body? Let the body remain as it is. Disciple, the soul when disembodied can see through all bodies. Answer, are there others then? Or is there even your own body? Consider your sleep, you do not know your body then. Here you are there all the same. Did you then perceive the world through this or other bodies? Nevertheless, you cannot deny your existence then. There must be a subject to see the world and the subject must also be limited. If unlimited how can there be others beside the unlimited self? Disciple, does God have any limits? Answer, leave God alone. What limits were there for yourself in your sleep? Disciple, death must then be the highest state. Answer, yes. We are now living in death. Those who have limited the unlimited self have committed suicide by putting on such limitations. Disciple, concentrate on the self you say. How to do it? Answer, if that is solved, everything else is solved. Disciple, know thyself you say. How to know the self? Answer, you now know that you are the body. Disciple, Raja Yoga realizes through the body, senses etc. and Sri Bhagavan advises realization by thinking. This is Jhana Yoga. Answer, how can you think without the body? Disciple, God does not think. Answer, why then did you start asking, in what shape did you see God? Disciple, God must be felt through the senses. Answer, are you not feeling God? Disciple, is everybody feeling God always? Answer, yes. Disciple, then what is realization? Answer, realization is to get rid of the delusion that you have not realized. Disciple, I don't catch the point. They left having taken a snapshot. Talk 4, 136. Disciple, what is Visvarupa? Answer, it is to see the world as the self of God. In the Bhagavad Gita God is said to be various things and beings, and also the whole universe. How to realize it or see it so? Can one see oneself? Though not seen, can the self be denied? What is the truth? Disciple, is it then wrong to say that some have seen it? Answer, it is true in the same degree as you are. The Gita begins saying that no one was born, in the fourth chapter it says, the numerous incarnations, yours and mine, have taken place. I know them but you do not. Of these two statements, which is the truth? The instruction is according to the listener's understanding. If the second chapter contains the whole truth, why should so many more chapters follow it? In the Bible God says, I am before Abraham. He does not say, I was but I am. Talk 4, 137. Maharshi, people have read of Vivekananda having asked Sri Ramakrishna, Have you seen God? And imitate him now. They also ask, Have you realized God? I ask what is realization. Realization implies perfection. When you are limited, your perception also is limited. Your knowledge is thus imperfect. Of what value is that imperfect knowledge? In Visvarupa Darsan, Arjuna is told to see whatever he desired and not what was presented before him. How can that Darsan be real? 30th December 1937 Talk 438 A visitor asked, for beginners like me which is most suited, either worship of qualified God or contemplation of I am Brahman? Answer, the answer is contained in the question. The question itself shows it to be worship of qualified God. 
disciple, I is felt in the waking and dream states but not in deep sleep. Why so? Answer, if so does it not exist in deep sleep? Disciple, because there are mental modes in these two states and no such mode in the other. Talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi Volume 3 3rd, January 19, 138 Talk 4, 139 Disciple, Rama asks. Raman being pure, how can Maya arise from him and veil him also? The Sishta replies. In pure mind associated with strong dispassion this question will not arise. Of course in Advaita non-dualistic philosophy there can be no place for Deva, Isfara and Maya. One self sinking into the self, the Vasana's tendencies will entirely disappear, leaving no room for such a question. Answer. The answers will be according to the capacity of the seeker. It is said in the second chapter of Gita that no one is born or dies, but in the fourth chapter Sri Krishna says that numerous incarnations of his and of Arjuna had taken place, all known to him, but not to Arjuna. Which of these statements is true? Both statements are true, but from different standpoints. Now a question is raised. How can Jiva rise up from the self? I must answer. Only know your real being, then you will not raise this question. Why should a man consider himself separate? How was he before being born or how will he be after death? Why waste time in such discussions? What was your form in deep sleep? Why do you consider yourself as an individual? Disciple, my form remains subtle in deep sleep. Answer. As is the effect, so is the cause. As is the tree, so is its seed. The whole tree is contained in the seed which later manifests as the tree. The expanded tree must have a substratum which we call Maya. As a matter of truth there is neither seed nor tree. There is only being. Disciple, Vasanakshya, total end of all predispositions, Manonas, annihilation of mind, Atmasakshat Kura, realization of the self. They seem to be interdependent. Answer, the different expressions have only one meaning. They differ according to the individual stage of progress. Dispassion, realization, all mean the same thing, also they say practice and dispassion. Why practice? Because the modes of mind once subside and then rise up, again subside and rise up, and so on. Disciple, beginningless predisposition makes one do wrong. Without jhana this predisposition cannot vanish. But jhana looks almost impossible. Expiation alone cannot undo all the karma, for how much expiation will be needed? Look where we will. Everything looks difficult, even impossible. Association with the wise seems to be the only cure of all ills. Answer, what is to be done? Reality is one only. How can it be realized? Realization is thus an illusion. Practice seems to be necessary. Who is to practice? Looking for the doer, the act, and the accessories disappear. Moreover, if realization is not present here and now, how can it, newly got, be of any use? What is permanent must be eternally present. Can it be newly got and be permanent also? Realize what is present here and now. The sages did so before and still do that only. Hence they say that it looks as if newly got. Once veiled by ignorance and later revealed, reality looks as if newly realized. But it is not new. Disciple, karma, bhakti, yoga and jhana, and their subdivisions only confuse the mind. Follow the elders' words seems to be the only right thing to do. What should I hold? Please tell me. I cannot sift these rudis and assem ritis, they are too vast. Though please advise me. No answer. Talk 4, 140. Disciple, without logic, without learned terminology, 
please instruct me the way to the bliss of self. Let it be of Guru's grace only. Answer, have a clear idea of your requirement. Who seeks to gain what? Then ask the method. Disciple, bliss manifests occasionally but I am unable to describe it. At times there is illumination, but is it the reality? Is so how to make it permanent? The method must be simple. Please make it clear without logic, learn discussions or mystifying words. No answer. Another visitor asked. Please tell me which is the most efficacious of all the methods, for example, prayer to God, Guru Anagraha, in other words Master's grace, concentration of mind, etc. Answer, the one is the consequence of the other. Each of them leads to the next stage. They form a continuous whole. God, Guru and the Self are not different. They are one and the same. Therefore the methods offer no choice. Talk 4, 141. Mr. Panalal S., a high government official from Allahabad with his wife, a highly cultured lady, and Mr. Brainerayan, a retired judge, were on a visit for a week. The night previous to their departure, they wanted to have their doubt cleared. Their doubt was, We had a great sage for our guru. He advised us to take the name of Hari, saying that it is all in all, no effort is necessary for concentrating the mind. Concentration will come of itself if Harnam is persisted in. So we are doing it. The Guru passed away. We felt like a rudderless ship in mid-ocean. In our anxiety to find a safe guide we read and heard of you and so desired to come here. Our desire has been fulfilled after two years longing. On coming here and hearing Sri Bhagavan, we understand that the Master teaches Atmavachara self-quest. This is the method of knowledge Jana Marga, whereas the other Master taught us Bhakti Marga method of devotion. What shall we do now? Are we to give up the other method and take to this new method? If once we change shall we not change many times more according to the Masters we meet? What progress can be made by such frequent changes? Pray remove this doubt and bless us. The Master referred the gentleman to an article in the September Number of Vision, a monthly journal issued by the Anandasram Kanhangad. Philosophy of the Divine Name according to Saint Namd of the Name permeates the entire universe densely, who can tell to what depths in the nether regions and to what height in the heaven it extends. The ignorant fools undergo the 84 lakhs of species of births, not knowing the essence of things. The name is immortal. Forms are innumerable but name is all that. The name itself is form and form itself is name. There is no distinction between name and form. God became manifest and assumed name and form. Hence the name the Ved, as have established. Beware there is no mantram beyond the name. Those who say otherwise are ignorant fools. Name is Kashava himself. This is known only to the loving devotees of the Lord. The all-pervading nature of the name can only be understood when one recognizes his own eye. When one's own name is not recognized, it is impossible to get all-pervading name. When one knows oneself, then one finds the name everywhere. None can realize the name by the practice of knowledge, meditation or austerity. Surrender yourself at first at the feet of the Guru and learn to know who the I in you is. After finding the source of that I, merge your individuality in that oneness which is self-existent and devoid of all duality. It is that name that permeates the three worlds. The name is Paramatman itself where there is no action arising out of divided duality. 8th, January, 1938 Talk 4, 142 While explaining a stanza of his own Sri Bhagavan observed, The sun illumines the universe, 
whereas the son of Arunachala is so dazzling that the universe is obscured and an unbroken brilliance remains. But it is not realized in the present state and can be realized only if the lotus of the heart blossoms. The ordinary lotus blossoms in the light of the visible sun, whereas the subtle heart blossoms only before the sun of suns. May Arunachala make my heart blossom so that his unbroken brilliance may shine all alone. Further on, Sri Bhagavan continued. The mirror reflects objects, yet they are not real because they cannot remain apart from the mirror. Similarly, the world is said to be a reflection in the mind as it does not remain in the absence of mind. Question arises, if the universe is a reflection, there must be a real object known as the universe in order that it might be reflected in the mind. This amounts to an admission of the existence of an objective universe. Truly speaking, it is not so. Therefore, the dream illustration is set forth. The dream world has no objective existence. How then is it created? The mental impressions should be admitted. They are called vasanas. How were the vasanas in the mind? The answer is they were subtle. Just as a whole tree is contained potentially in a seed, so the world is in the mind. Then it is asked. A seed is the product of the tree which must have existed once in order that it may be reproduced. So the world also must have been there some time. The answer is no. There must have been several incarnations to gather the impressions which are manifested in the present form. I must have existed before as I do now. The right way to find an answer will be to see if the world is there. Admitting the existence of the world, I must admit a seer who is no other than myself. Let me find myself so that I may know the relation between the world and the seer. When I seek the self and abide as the self, there is no world to be seen. What is the reality then? The seer only and certainly not the world. Such being the truth, the man continues to argue on the basis of the reality of the world. Whoever asked him to accept a brief for the world? Yoga Vasish, too clearly defines liberation as the abandonment of the false and remaining as being. Talk 4 143. A visitor asked. The illustration of the mirror relates to the sense of sight.